Hello, hello, and we're live. Yep, audio's going through. I forgot to check my microphone before I went live here. But uh, hello and welcome. Well, we, um, it's been a couple of weeks now, I think. Uh, about a, has it been two weeks, one week? I don't know, it's been a little bit since I streamed. But uh, today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to hop on to ACX, so the Amazon... I actually don't remember what ACX stands for, <laughs> but we're hopping on to ACX, which is a marketplace for audiobooks where authors and narrators can get together um, and the author can post their book and the narrators can audition and they can get together and hire somebody to do their audiobook or get hired to do an audiobook. So um, I've been doing a lot of narrating. I've been doing an audiobook um, on YouTube. You can find it if you really want to. But today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be hopping on ACX and we're just going to be auditioning for whatever audiobooks um, you guys want. Um, I'm hoping to audition for probably like eight books today. Uh, these auditions, I'll, I'll show you what they sort of look like, but generally they end up being maybe two, sometimes three pages is all um, per book. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to find books that we think look either good or just kind of funny to work, do. And we're going to audition for them. So this is, I'm going to throw the link to the site that we're using here um, to ACX into the chat. So if you guys want, you can go to this website and find books that you think would be fun to audition for. So one second, I'm going to throw these in the chat. All right. There it is in Twitch, and there it is in YouTube. Um, there we go. All right. So you do have to have an account to, like, see the um, – um, what do you call it? Like, the, the two or three copy that you would be doing for the audition. But it's okay. You don't need to see that. You can jug the, judge these books by their covers. You can hop on here. You can see their covers. You can see whatever description they've written. So just hop on there, judge a book by its cover, and uh, just send the title. The only requirement. So once we get onto this, so this is the website. This is ACX. This is what you'll see. The only requirements, okay? Uh, there, are, there are three of them, all right? Um, if you come here on the left, you can see filters, all right? Language, it needs to be English because um, I can't really do the other languages super well. Uh, I can kind of do Spanish, but not well enough for an audiobook. Uh, the gender, do male or gender neutral, okay? I can't do a female voice for the entire audiobook. Um, and then in genre, make sure that it's not erotica, okay? We're not gonna do any <laughs> erotica here. All right, so those are the requirements. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get started now. Uh, we're just gonna go through here and find some, find a book. As people start to filter in, they can start suggesting some, but I'll probably just go ahead and we'll, we'll pick one right now. Uh, so we might actually choose one that's kind of interesting. Um, while I was firing this up, I saw this one. I kind of liked its cover, so I clicked on it. So let's, uh, let's just read its description. Oh, and if you're thinking about getting into audiobooks, this is a great experience to uh, see how the auditions go. This is how it works. So this is uh, Promise Made. I'm actually going to throw on my glasses. I don't need them, uh, like at this distance and stuff or whatever. Um, I forget the sighted, if it's nearsighted or farsighted. But uh, I prefer to have the glasses on because it just makes things a little bit sharper when I'm going to be reading, you know, thousands of words, trying not to mess up. So I'm going to, we're just cleaning our glasses. Nice. Throw these on. Oh, yes. Now, now I feel fancy and formal. <laughs> All right. So Promise Made, the Promise Book Trilogy Book One. Uh, eight and a half hours, all right. So barely escaping the black flames that took her mother. Ayana is forced to keep secrets that, if learned, will cause her to share her mother's fate. In the face of grief, in the face of grief, a curse is cast that ignites a king's rage and Ayana's father's war on magic begins. All right, all right. So one thing you might notice um, going through these books, by the way, as you're going through and judging these books by their cover, uh, <laughs> is a lot of them are not good. They're not very good. <laughs> But that's okay, because <laughs> that, that's sort of the goal of today is just audition for funny books, just bad or funny or whatever. I mean, the Guardians of Excalibur, I mean, look at the cover. I mean, I know they sort of, like, there's a, the, the classic saying is don't judge a book by its cover. But come on, how could I not judge that by its cover? I mean, they just found like a stock image that it wasn't even that good and just threw some text on there from Photoshop. It, I don't know. Anyway. A lot of these are going to be bad. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I went to <laughs> type a response to you, Reese Cheese. Uh, how's it going? I've got glasses on. Um, I am, I, I forget the sighteds, 
but it's hard for me to see like far away details. I think that's far sighted, or maybe it's near sighted. I can never get them right. Anyway, um, when I'm narrating, when I'm reading thousands of words at a time, it's helpful to have these on just to make it a little bit more crisp. Especially, I mean, like, look how tiny this text is here. This is tiny, itty bitty text. Anyway, so yeah, I know. The index is so freaking awesome. Hey, you got your index. That's great. I'm glad you're enjoying it. We're auditioning for audiobooks, Reeks of Cheese. <laughs> so we're going through. We're trying to find audiobooks. I'm hoping to audition for eight of them tonight. All right, so we were just reading the description of this one. All right, so blah, 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 magic war. Hoping to break the curse by spilling magical blood. That's so, like I said, these are so dumb. Ayana's father leaves the kingdom to find his next target. After years of coming back empty-handed, Ayana thought her father's war was finally coming to an end. So when he returns from his latest hunt, which his new victim is now, Ayana doesn't... Oh, with his new victim as toe, Ayana doesn't have enough time to save them. Knowing there is no talking her father out of his fate or all things magic, Ayana offers the captured woman one last request before she is sent to the pyre. Needing to keep her promise, Ayana heads to the into the woods in search of... Plague? Is that a name? In search of plague, the one to have said to curse the world. What is... It, these books are terrible! Anyway. <laughs> uh, to tell him the news of this woman's death. To keep the peace, Ayana continues to go to plague to nurse him back to health. As well as pacify his hate before he is strong enough to exert his revenge. Ayana struggles to keep her two worlds apart when her father announces his engagement meant to spread his war across the rest of the nation. And Ayana is forced to make a choice. Remain by her father's side and join him in his eradication of magic or join plague in the woods and help him to bring an end to this war once and for all. Promise Made is a 79,000 word young adult fantasy. All right. <clears throat> <laughs> Whatever. We got it. I've got an apple, by the way. I was hungry. <laughs> All right. We can start with this book. So how this works is once you've like gone on, um, on this website, again, you won't be able to see it in this audition page. You'll have to have an account. Uh, you'll notice I have a little sensor bar because this is a bunch of personal information at the top of the website. <laughs> I got an apple. I thought you were an Android boy, fake gamer. I am a fake gamer for having an apple. No. <laughs> Welcome to the chat, Gremlin. We're auditioning for audiobooks. Um, I sent the leak to the chat. You should be able to scroll back up and see it. But you can choose whatever book you want. And we'll uh, go through and narrate it. I'm hoping to do eight books today. Only requirements. The gender needs to be male or gender neutral because I can't do a female voice for like 100,000 words. Uh, the language needs to be English. And um, up here in the genre, you can click it. Just make sure that it's not erotica, all right? Other than that, you can choose a book and we'll narrate it. We'll have fun. Uh, but we're just starting out with one that I just chose. I just chose the second one on the... I chose the second one on the list here. We're looking at Promise Made, the Promise Trilogy, book one. Um, and we're, we're going to do this one. So right here, when you click on the auditions page, this is the stuff that you won't be able to see, but I can. We'll look at it together. Uh, but you're just judging books on, by their cover. <laughs> No erotica, p p <laughs> dude. There are some. There are some books. If you get on this website, I mean, there's like three of them, I think, by the same guy. That it's just pictures of feet. <laughs> it is. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> um. But yeah, so we're not. We're not doing those. We got to stay Twitch slash YouTube friendly. Uh, you know. So we've got to keep it PG thirteen here, guys. All right, so right here we can see some information from like the uh, from the author, right? So audition script notes from the rights holder. It is not said in this in this part of the book, but the main character is female. Just wanted to have that info shared. All right, so if I do this, if I accept this book, if you know I do an audition and I actually get an offer back from the guy to do it, then I'm gonna have to do a female voice a lot. So I don't know. We'll have to see how good my female voice is, and then. Um, have fun with it and don't go too strong on the different character voices. Okay, so this tells us that we don't have anything specific that we need to do for any of the like characters other than, you know, the correct gender, I guess, female main character. <clears throat> I've got something in my lungs. I've had it for weeks. I don't know what it is. I'm like, I'm not sick. I don't feel sick, but I start talking a lot and I just cough every now and again, which is really annoying for audio narration. Anyway, what about Beans? Yeah, I, I don't know. Is there a book called Beans? I'll do Beans. <laughs> All right, so now we can go ahead and we'll just download this script. Pull that up. Uh, so this is just going to be one page. Uh, text is dumb, so really quick, we're just going to pull this up. Um, 
I have a, uh, we're going to pull it into Google Docs. Um, hold on, I'm going to rename this because I never name them the right thing. Promise with an E made. All right. I, uh, I have a Google Doc. I'm going to throw these into Google Docs because they, they just give you a text document or like a dot .docs document. I don't have Word. Uh, and so I just end up with like this. And this is, this is hard to look at. This is bad. So I throw it into Google Docs to make it easier to read. Is it the frog in your throat? Yeah, I've got to. <laughs> that's got to be what it is. <laughs> I really don't know what it is, but it's been driving me crazy. All right. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, promise made. Hold on. It's, it's opening. Um, this one. This was a book I was looking at earlier. I, uh, we could do that one later. Okay, so here we go. We can change the font to something easier to read. Um, maybe we'll just do like, I swear they rearrange this every time I look at it. I just want Arial. Why is this not Arial? The... There we go, okay. Uh, we're gonna do Arial. We're gonna make it, nah, not bold. We don't need bold. All right, and make it a little bit. We'll zoom in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's easy enough to read. <clears throat> All right, your favorite gremlin chose a book. I'm going to pull it up really quick. Uh, tat it up. Yeah, look at that. This dude's got a uh, big old motor. Oh, this is a tiny book cover. Look at that motorcycle. <laughs> you know the story, bad boy meets good girl and yada, yada, yada. But what if the bad boy isn't so bad and the good girl isn't so good? <laughs> this sounds terrible. This is a good pick. All right, yeah, we'll definitely we'll definitely do this one. But we're going to go ahead and finish this one. Um, it's uh, less than, it's like a page. So we're going to go ahead and do this one, and then we'll go do that one. Uh, let's see. What about The Legend of Trogamir? Oh, I remember I liked your your uh, your post of that. That would be a good one. Is, is that an actual book? No, 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 no. Uh, you, you have found the feet books. I'm so sorry, Gremlin. Double-spaced? Uh, I don't want double-spaced. Uh, you, for one, feel your narration. Feel my narration would benefit by taking inspiration from The Legend of Torgamir. I think you're correct. All right, so uh, we got this special guest here today, my uh, actual narrating microphone. I'm, I'm still using this one for you guys, but we're going to record on this one. Normally, this is in my recording booth, but I couldn't think of a good way to get this stream set up in the recording booth. So I just brought the microphone out here. We're going to have slightly worse acoustics than I normally have for audiobooks for these auditions. <clears throat> All right, so uh, the way I like to do this is I like to just read it through out loud one time um, to sort of get a feel of the scene, and then we're going to go through and we're going to do voices. You guys can have, uh, if you guys have input on what you want me to do for a voice, I'll do it. I'm, I'm, not, particular, I'm not particularly concerned about actually getting these uh, uh, offers on these books, so if you guys want me to do specific voices, I will. Uh, but we are gonna, we're going to put in a serious effort, and we're hoping to get at least one offer back from these books today. All right. <clears throat> All right, so <clears throat> I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do the recording in Audacity here because that'll be easy. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and read through this once. I'm not going to record yet or anything like that. Uh, Tubit casually pulls out the Electro Voice Tar 20. It's a great microphone. I have done over 63 hours of the Prey and a Lamb audiobook on this bad boy. It has been great. All right. Seeing the gath tooth smile spread across my brother's face and his freckles gathering at the peak of his cheekbones, I become unfathomably aware of just how ridiculous I must look. I want to explain, but my reasoning doesn't feel as well thought out as it did when I was alone. Draped with vines and flowers to look like part of our mother's garden and frozen in a stride from... Frozen in... That's bad grammar. Frozen in a stride? Why not frozen in stride? It's dumb. Uh, frozen... Oh, shoot, now I lost it. Frozen in a stride from chasing the bird trapped in the greenhouse. I thought maybe... I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I thought maybe, just maybe, if I could get close enough to catch it, I could set it free. But the stupid bird won't stop flying away. I put my feet together, feeling the thick vines sway with every slight movement. There's a bird. Now, what, what, what voice? So just sort of higher, because this is probably the main character that's talking, right? There's a bird, I explain. He slaps one hand over his stomach as he throws a point. Throws a point my way with the other? That is... Again, these books are not fantastic. <clears throat> uh, da, 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 da. Bursting with laughter. The glove on his pointed hand seems no longer than it was yesterday. Now stretching past his elbow. Oh, it seems longer than it was yesterday. I don't know how he expects to hide his whitening skin if it continues to spread up his neck and face. Maybe our father will lock him away out of fear of anyone seeing his imperfect son. Embarrassment burns my cheeks as I rip the foliage from my body, throwing it to my feet. It's not funny, Caleb. There's a bird in here. What if it dies? I huff. His... He laughs louder. 
gasping with each inhale. I'm gonna make this bold. That might, that might, ah, uh, that makes it worse. I hate that. Hmm. I want a different font, maybe. Trebuchet. Hmm. Nice. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. It's not funny, Caleb. There's a bird in here. What if it dies? I huff. He laughs louder, gasping with each inhale. He waves his hand as if begging me to stop. His brown umkept. Thank you for following my favorite gremlin. My, your favorite gremlin? He is my favorite gremlin, though. He really is. How did you just follow? Have you not already been following me? That's crazy. <laughs> All right. Um, sorry, I got sidetracked. I might not have sound. Make sure this is... Oh, yeah. Alert, but I didn't. Okay, now I should hear him. <laughs> What are you even doing here? You know this is my safe place. The quick fade of his laughter and the way he won't look me in the eye makes my stomach twist. I much prefer his ridicule over his thick silence. Cheeks still red and brown eyes glossed over with tears of laughter, he clears his throat. Dad's back. Shock cuts through me like lightning. I reach for my desk and hand slides over loose papers. I fall hard onto my hip. I can hear the deep hum of his voice buried within my swirling thoughts, but the meaning behind his words can't reach me within my panic. Father's not supposed to be back until tomorrow. He never comes back from a hunt after only a few hours. The only reason he'd be back so soon is if he found something. Someone. I flinch when he hands me touch. I flinch when hands touch mine. Calm down. My brother's harsh voice breaks through my racing thoughts, leaving behind a residual ringing in my ears. I lift my eyes to his. There's no laughter left on his face. And I desperately miss the embarrassment I was feeling only a few seconds ago. He squeezes my hands and offers a soft nod but it does nothing to soothe the sick feeling growing inside me. I avert my gaze to the ground. How many? I ask. Just one. Just one, he says. As if killing them isn't a big deal. It's being done one at a time. Father's been coming back empty-handed for so long I was beginning to think there was no one left in the woods. I thought, maybe, this nightmare was over. But now there's new innocent. There's a new innocent that's been dragged into my father's war to satisfy his bloodlust. All to help him feel like he's doing something for his people by murdering the strangers he blames for cursing the world with infertility. A curse that affects even those who live in the woods, desperate to escape the curse as well as my father's unjustifiable wrath. Alive? I ask, clearing my throat. Yes. All right, so that's it. Thanks for the pineapple and the pizza, Gremlin. That is, hmm. Oh, you followed me on your other Twitch account. <laughs> You've got to have multiple to be able to properly uh, <coughs> spend the chats. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, speaking of narration, in the Barge, you posted a file called Super Mario.mp3, which contained an unedited 30 minute long reading of the first book of Homer's Odyssey, Flaws and <laughs> What the heck? Also, Homer's Odyssey is more than 30 minutes, isn't it? Is it only like a 30 minute book? We should read that one of these days. That'd be good. All right. We got a feel for this book. Uh, there's only two characters, so we're just going to we're gonna talk a little bit higher for her. We're going to sort of do this voice, I think. He has nothing major, and if we actually get an offer, he could, you know, uh, have me do a different voice. And then for the brother, I, I don't know, I'll, I'll have him be a little bit scratchier. Uh, there's a bird. Yeah, so that's what we'll do. Homer's Odyssey is like 20 books or something. That's what I thought. Okay, so it's like 30-minute excerpt from Homer's Odyssey that you did then. <laughs> yeah, I thought the Odyssey was huge. Okay. All right, let's do a real reading of this. So we're going to hit record. Um, I have this beautiful little clicker. This is a magical device. I love this thing. I'm going to adjust the audio here a little bit. How about... If I get too loud, is it peaking? Sorry if this is peaking for you guys. I'm just adjusting my levels here. All right. We'll, we'll go with this. All right. This is not my regular audiobook setup, so I've got to make sure my knobs and everything are okay. All right. It's fine? Okay, good. All right, so I have this clicker. So this is what I use in my booth. Whenever I make a mistake, I just click this because this makes a, a um, if I zoom in here. Oh, I, what the, 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 how did I, huh? What, 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 what? Oh, there we go, okay. I've never done that in Audacity. I didn't know that was the thing I could do by accident. Anyway, when I use that clicker, you see it makes this big old obvious click right here. So I know where to go and find a auto trader ad neat. Um, but I, I use that so that when we have this, when I use the clicker, we get that mark so that I know where to go and delete mistakes afterwards. It saves a lot of time, a lot of hassle. 
Odyssey is like 380 pages, and the Iliad is 700 pages. That's not terrible. All right. So here we go. Recording for real now. Make sure my spacing is not bad. Seeing the gap-toothed smile spread across my brother's face, and his freckles gathering at the peak of his cheekbones, I become uncomfortably aware of how ridiculous I must look. I want to explain, but my reasoning doesn't feel as well thought out as it did when I was alone. Draped with vines and flowers to look like part of our mother's garden and frozen in stride from chasing the bird trapped in the greenhouse. I thought maybe, just maybe, if I could get close enough to catch it, I could set it free. But the stupid bird won't stop flying away. I put my feet together, feeling the thick vines sway with every slight movement. There's the bird, I explain. He slaps one hand over his stomach as he throws a point my way with the other, bursting with laughter. The glove on his pointed hand seems longer than it was yesterday, now stretching past his elbow. I didn't know how he expect... So I messed up there, so I'm using the clicker. I don't know how he expects to hide his whitening skin if it continues to spread up his neck. I don't know how he expects to hide his whitening skin if it continues to spread up his neck and face. Maybe our father will lock him away out of fear of anyone seeing his imperfect son. Embarrassment burns my cheeks as I rip the foliage from my body, throwing it to my feet. It's not funny, Caleb. There's a bird in here. What if it dies? I huff. Mm, I don't like that attitude. I want to do a different attitude. It's not funny, Caleb. There's a bird in here. What if it dies? I huff. He laughs louder, gasping with each inhale. He waves his hand as if begging me to stop. His brown, unkempt curls bounce with each shake of his head. Nothing I say will be enough to justify how I look, or what I was doing. Biting my tongue, I look away. All I can do is wait for him to exhaust himself, though I doubt he'll ever hear... All I can do is wait for him to exhaust himself, though I doubt I'll ever hear the end of this. He's going to be reminding me that... He's going to be reminding me of this for years... Reminding me of this day for years to come. He's going to be reminding me of this day for years to come. His laughter softens, and I turn to him only... For his, his laughter softens, and I turn to him only for his amusement to return in full force. He lifts his point. You, you, still. He stops trying to speak and lets his laugh take over once again. He shakes his head as he waves. What are you even doing here? Oh, I did the wrong person there. What are you even doing here? I snap. You know this is my safe place. Safe space. You know this is my safe place. You know this is my safe place. You know this is my safe space. The quick fade of his laughter and the way he won't look me in the eye makes my stomach twist. I much prefer his ridicule over this thick silence. Cheeks still red and brown eyes glossed over with tears of laughter, he clears his throat. Dad's back. Shock cuts through me like lightning. I reach for my desk and hands slide over loose papers. I fall hard onto my hip. I can hear the deep hum of his voice buried within my swirling thoughts, but the meaning behind his words can't reach me within my panic. Father's not supposed to be back until tomorrow. He never comes back from a hunt after only a few hours. The only reason he'd be back so soon is if he found something. Someone. I flinch when hands touch mine. Calm down. My brother's harsh voice breaks through my racing thoughts, leaving behind a residual ringing in my ears. I lift my eyes to his. There's no laughter left on his face and I desperately miss the embarrassment I was feeling only a few seconds ago. He squeezes my hands and offers a soft nod, but it does nothing to soothe the sick feeling growing inside me. I avert my gaze to the ground. How many? I ask. Just one. Just one, he says. As if killing them isn't a big deal because it's being done one at a time. Father's been coming back empty-handed for so long I was beginning to think there was no one left in the woods. I thought, maybe, this nightmare was over. But now there's a new innocent that's been dragged into my father's war to satisfy his bloodlust. All to help him feel like he's doing something for his people by murdering the strangers he blames for cursing the world with infertility. A curse that affects even those who live in the woods, desperate to escape the curse as well as my father's unjustifiable wrath. Alive? I ask, clearing my throat. Yes. All right, I just a little bit of silence on the end there. All right, that's one down. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and read this. Not terrible when I'm currently narrating one of the longest books ever written. True, very true. 
Um, so really quick, what we're going to do is we're just going to be quiet for 30 seconds. Leaving a little bit of space here at the end will let me remove any noise that I might have had from like this audio setup in the room. So we're just going to have 30 seconds of quiet. I'm going to push this over here so I'm not breathing into it. And we're just going to... Okay, that's 30 seconds. We're done. All right. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and save this off. Uh, so we'll export it as a WAV. Um, we'll just throw it on my desktop here. Um, we're going to call this one, what was this book called? Uh, Promise Made. Promise Made Audition. WAV. And there we go. That's one down, just like that. If you remain quiet, the bot won't notice you. <laughs> That's the hope. We're gonna we're gonna smite smite. Maybe maybe we won't. I can't figure out the right button. Uh, I can't figure out how to moderate. So that's awkward. Hmm. Oh, well, whatever. Oh, well, whatever. All right, so next one. Well, that's, that's one down. We'll go through and we'll edit these all later. Um, but for now, we're just going to get through them all, do all the auditions. Um, it looks like my audio levels were probably fine. So I'm not going to worry a ton about them. Um, yeah, those are probably fine. Um... I just want to check them in here really quick. I don't want to do like eight books and then realize that my audio levels were terrible. So we're just going to check them out really quick. Um, okay. Uh, oh yeah, these levels are more than fine. Hard to explain, but my reasoning doesn't feel as well thought out as it did when I was alone. Draped with vines and flowers to look like part of our mother's garden. All right, awesome. Let's go. All right. My favorite gremlin, your favorite gremlin, I don't know, my favorite gremlin for sure. Uh, you suggested a book, so we're going to go with that one next. Ba -ba -ba. I lost it. No, it was, uh, it was this. Here, it was tatted up. We're going to take tatted up, and we're going to throw it into this browser. All right, tatted up by Phoenix Rain. <laughs> you know the story, bad boy meets good girl, and yada, yada, yada. But what if bad boy isn't so bad and the girl, good girl isn't so good? <laughs> a romance novel. novel, Dude, I don't think I can do a female voice well enough for a romance novel. <laughs> uh, so this one, no notes from the rights holder, so we get to do whatever we want. All bets are off. <clears throat> oh, look at that. This one opened up nicely. They gave us a PDF. This is actually legible as is. That's so nice of them. All right, here we go. I hope you're excited. Oh no, hold on, I'm reading this. Uh, uh, this is a little, uh, a little seedier than uh, is perhaps what we're gonna go for on Twitch here. Uh, <laughs> oh no, yeah, okay, uh, that's a... Uh... <laughs> I don't know if you read any of that, Gremlin, but that was extremely erotic. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid I can't go with that one on Twitch. <laughs> if I want to stay on Twitch. <laughs> um, woo! Wow. You weren't sure how to read it? Unfortunately, you can't unless you have an account like I do. So it's not your fault. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, norm that should have been probably marked as erotica. I don't know. That was a uh, that was a bit much. Do, 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 do. I just got a text from a uh, real estate agent. That's that's weird. 
you saw the title and cover and had to submit. I was excited too, but that was, um, that was, uh, it, it was a lot. <laughs> uh, in fact, here, let me, um, I'll just send you it. That was, uh, it was quite something here. I, I, I don't want to open it back up. It was, it was very saucy. <laughs> all right you can read that at your leisure your dad texting you too no it was uh uh i won't say but it wasn't your dad did he send you a video of the gamer room dude a gamer room i want a gamer room <coughs> i don't know what's in my lungs it's been driving me crazy all right one book mostly done we just got to edit and submit it but we'll do that later we're gonna we're gonna narrate another book so, um, again, we're judging books by their covers. This one looks like it might be something. Um, no True Justice, Witness Protection 2. <laughs> it sounds so bad. <laughs> um, Manhood 101, Principles for Begun. Let, let's check out this one. Dude's got the last name of Watterson. Watterson's a good last name. Oh, this is the gamer room? Hold on, I'll I'll download this. I'll show everybody. All right, guys, we're looking at a gamer room. Yeah, they got an Ender Three. They got the gamer stuff. They got an Oscar. All right, this is a uh, Oscar winner's apartment. Well, hold on, go back. This is terrible. Look at this. This is a crime. He he has the sideways monitor right here, which is fine. I have a sideways monitor, but he put the bezel. Like, he put the bezel there. Why not, like, flip it the other way? Like, you know, do a 180 on this so that the bezel's, you know, on the outside where it's not going to be annoying you at all. Why would he put the bezel like that? That's stupid. <laughs> all right. He just sent it to you with no context, no comments, just the video. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, you know, thanks. Thanks, Gremlin's dad. Very nice of you. All right, <clears throat> Manhood 101, 101 principles for becoming a better man. Do you understand the principles of great men? Becoming a great man for your wife, children, and society is not hard if you understand the standards and principles that every man needs to become successful in his personal manhood journey. In Manhood 101, 101 principles for becoming a better man, you'll discover 101 key ideas, principles, and standards that every man needs to understand if he wants to live a lifestyle of a strong and positive man. Manhood is not automatic. It is. It must be learned because every male is not a metro man. What? Must be learned because every male is not a man. True manhood doesn't come automatically. That was a really hard to read sentence. There are key principles of honor, respect, kindness, and love. Just to name a few. The every man that every man needs to live by if we are to see true and quality manhood or sport in our society. <laughs> um, Andrew J. Audiobook. You do the bulk biceps voice very well. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to do that one, though. Oh, we got an audio file uh, from, uh, from Dwarven in the chat. Let's listen to this. Just one, he says. As if killing them isn't a big deal because it's being <laughs> done one at a time. Father's been coming back empty-handed for so long that I was beginning to think there was no one left in the woods. I thought maybe this nightmare was over. But now there's a new innocent that's been dragged into my father's war. To satisfy his bloodlust. I like yours more. This All is good. to help him feel like he's doing something for his people. By murdering the strangers he blames for cursing the world with infertility. A curse that affects even those who live in the woods. Desperate to escape this curse. As well as my father's unjustifiable wrath. That was really good, actually. That was better than mine. I might have to go back and redo mine. Yours was better. <laughs> I liked yours way more than mine. To escape the curse as well as my father's un yeah, here, here's mine. Mine's kind of quiet here because of uh, recording settings. A curse that affects even those who live in the woods. Desperate to escape the curse as well as my father's unjustifiable wrath. Alive? I ask, clearing my throat. Yes. <laughs> All right. All right. We might go back. Yours was really good, Dwarf, and I liked yours a lot. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna do manhood 101. I'm still open to suggestions. Right, that's one down. Whoops. Um. Let's see. 
Oh, wow. This guy's got a lot of notes. Uh, my book includes sections that may not be clearly understood in an audiobook format without extra expl explanatory statements. For example, my book features quotes, scriptures, and definitions through it. So it would be good to announce these sections to the listeners so that they know the difference. I'm honestly not sure how that should be done, so I'm looking for advice from the voiceover talent on what they think would be best here. I've created the script from sections of the actual book so you can see a little of the formatting. All right, well, let's see what this guy's got. Let's see how, uh, how messy this is. Oh, oh no, this is, this is huge. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, okay, okay, this is huge. Amazon description. I don't care about your description. We're not gonna, we're not gonna read all this for this guy. This is stupid. Blah, 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 I don't care. The red underlined text below is additional wording added to help the narration make more sense to the hearer, but it's not part of the original book. This extra wording or something similar will be asked by the narrator to help clarify different sections and text not written by the author. Is this too much work? I thought we were just going to do silly little books, not format a book for a guy. Section 2, Standards. The Standards of Manhood. Standard, noun, standard. Standard. Noun. Something considered by an authority or by general consent as a basis of comparison. Standards are the qualities or principles that, have, that we govern our lives by. A man's quality standards will lead him towards actions that are selfless, helpful in construction. While another man's inferior... I'm bored already! This is a boring book. We might come back, but this is boring. I, unless I, you know, standards are the qualities or principles that have governed our lives by. A man's quality standards will lead him towards actions that are selfless. But I don't, I don't think I'm actually going to get the uh, audition if I do it like that. Um, what do you think of the meme of posting an entire movie in Discord post? I think it's hilarious. I love it. I like when people post the entirety of Shrek in like eight megabytes. I think that's hilarious. I'm never going to actually watch all of Shrek in eight megabytes, you know, posted to Discord. But I think it's very funny. <laughs> Reese cheese, but I'm not a man. What do I do? You have to lower your voice. You have to imagine that your muscles are twice as big as they really are. <sighs> yeah, it makes sense if you read it in that voice. <laughs> it's way more fun to do it in that voice, but I, I genuinely don't think I'll get the audition if I do it with the <laughs> man voice. Let me save this off. Nah, 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 nah. Blah, blah, blah. Promise. Kept or whatever it was. I don't remember. All right. Um, ba -ba -bum. File new. Oh, hmm. I I use Audition more than I use Audacity, so I'm uh I'm having fun with the UI here, figuring out how that works. <laughs> uh, you sent me all of Top Gun. Thank you. We'll watch all of that right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's huge. Well, not huge. It's it's super long. <laughs> Why does it say .jpg if it's a, it it's it's a movie? <laughs> I think that's very funny. I don't want to pull it up. I don't know if that counts as like piracy for the terms of uh, YouTube or whatever. But I I love that. All right, we're gonna we're gonna the House of Slumbers. Is this a horror book? I want to do a horror book. Let's find a horror book. Uh, I gotta step it up too. I mean, I was expecting this strain to be like four hours, and I wanted to do eight books. And we've been live for uh, forty one minutes, and we've done one. So we gotta we gotta speed things up a little bit here. Like half an hour should be it should be like less than half an hour to do one audition. I keep getting sidetracked. Oh, it is a horror novel. Okay, part two of an exciting horror novel. Oh, I'll do the spookier. Part two of an exciting horror novel full of haunted houses, graveyards, and unspeakable creatures below the earth in search of human flesh and remains of the dead. Characters from the first book return 50 years later from both sides of the grave in this epic battle between good and evil. Amos Bergenfield returns with his coven of 13 to reclaim the mansion in which they died over 50 years ago. A young boy killed by the evil in the house returns as a powerful spirit. He holds the balance and is guided by a former slave in the spirit world. Two young doctors buy this long-forgotten property and is com and converted into the Quincy Memorial Sanatorium, but find the spirits of the Ghost Hollow Cemetery have taken possession of the mansion once again. Simon is the beast in disguise and has awoken his psychic rooster from a long slumber to commit evil. <laughs> rooster? His sidekick's name is Rooster. <laughs> To commit evil acts with Rooster. <laughs> the doctors have built another mansion next to the old one in an identical fashion, and they won't see the wrecking ball till the early 70s. The time is now 1935, and Elm Street is unsettled with old spirits and new monsters lurking about. 
All right, this is great. We're doing this one for sure. I'm in royalty share. So by the way, when you look at these and it's like project budget or payment or compensation or whatever it says here, but project budget, uh, what that means is like how they pay you, how they pay me, the narrator, right? And so royalty share means that when they sell the audiobook, I get a cut of the profits if I'm, you know, the narrator. Uh, and so with, and, and so if they're only giving me like a royalty split and then I take the time to like narrate a hundred hours of a crappy book that nobody listens to, I make no money. So I don't necessarily want <coughs> to accept every book that I don't think will sell, but you can also see like the Amazon rating here. See, it's got seven ratings, 4.8 stars. I mean, that's not much of anything. It's not a huge indication at, the, at, at least that's like an indication that he got his seven friends to go rate the book, you know, <laughs> um, let's see. I really am descending into madness. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, saw one of all of Puss in Boots yesterday. Kind of surprising how prevalent it is as a meme. I think it's a hilarious meme. I love it. <laughs> uh, you're sending me another, but it's only eight seconds long this time. Okay, I'll listen to it. I'll listen to it while I pull up the script. I have the perfect voice to tell you about the standards of manhood. Don't you agree? To be honest, I have to put my voice through a filter for this one. That's not your natural voice? You had to use a filter for that? I'm baffled, Dwarven. <laughs> hey, Tonic, we're narrating books today. Oh my gosh, <clears throat> this is the notes from the right, this is the notes, this is huge, oh my god, okay. Hold on, before we even get started, I want to make sure that he's not sending me like an essay. Okay, no, so this is, this is the audition, that's one page, that's fine. I hate it, I've, I've been given like an entire chapter before doing these things, and it's just like, you expect me to do a whole chapter? And so you choose like two minutes out of it, and you just do like two minutes, but, <clears throat> alright. Notes from the right holder, that night I decided to give Scotch and Movies a break. Wait. Oh, this isn't actually notes. This is just the actual audition. Okay, nice. Main character is Jacket. Sidekick is Rooster. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I actually thought about that when I was thinking of uh, Rooster doing horrible deeds. Horrible, evil deeds. I, I actually thought of Hotline Miami. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, this is good. This is a good one. We're going to do this one. I like this one. House of Slumbers. The, ho the House of Slumbers. All right, we're just going to we're gonna save that at the end. The House of Slumbers. <laughs> All right, pull in the microphone here. The nice recording microphone. I guess, I guess there's no point in doing this. You can't hear it. <laughs> I, I can do this. <clears throat> here it is. Zoom in a little bit. Man, this is this is tight. All right, testing, testing. <coughs> All right. Let me just cough into the microphone. <coughs> <coughs> I hate this. I don't know why I've got it. Um, did I read the Night Lord's books? I did not. I'm not sure what those are. Tell me about the Night Lord books. All right. That night, I decided to give the Scotch and movies a break. I was on duty as that overnight attending... You know, I'm going to read through this once before we actually record it. Um, forgot. I normally like to do that. That night, I decided to give the Scotch and movies a break. I was on duty as the overnight attending on 401 Elm and took a and took and drank a glass of milk to get some rest on the cot upstairs. Okay. The nurse downstairs could easily wake me if needed, and I felt the tendrils of sleep pulling me down into a pleasant doze, at least until the dreams came. I found myself in my pajamas and walking down an old road somewhere in the town I had never been. It was dark, but I could see by a full moon overhead found a path off the road that had been overgrown and led to an old gate. The fence was unlocked and the gate opened into a small and over <coughs> <coughs> cemetery. The gravestones were aged and unreadable in the dark of the night. A wrought iron fence surrounded the entire graveyard, but I wasn't concerned or scared. I pulled open the gate and walked inside for a closer look and noticed something stirring on the ground. I observed my a hand crawling from the dirt of the first grave. Oh, it's getting spooky now. Oh, I shouldn't have looked away. I can't. <clears throat> I observed a hand crawling into the first grave. Then another hand came out as corpses slowly pulled itself from its ancient grave. It took the dirt off and lurched over in comfort, over to confront me in this dark place of death. Its head wobbled loosely on its neck and a light glowed from the dead sockets in its skull. Dear Eddie, dear Eddie, it whispered in my ear. I could smell the rotting, decomposed flesh as its tongue dropped to the ground. Wake up! It hissed loudly. I turned to run, and the figure of a large, hulking man stood over me with one eye hanging from its socket. Wake up! It screamed. I woke up to the chargener shaking me in the bed with tears streaming down my face. Man of science or not, something in this house was invading my dreams. 
I decided on a chat with David later in the day. What? That was... <laughs> this guy's terrible! What, what, that is horribly formatted. Okay, screw this. We're going to skip through this a bit, and we're just going to record it. Blah, blah, blah. You talked to David in a weirdly formatted sentence. I rubbed my eyes, tried to focus on the chair. We're no longer there. Chair and rope? The chair and rope? Was he going to kill him? What? What? I had a noose that was now suspended from the ceiling. He said, what a job. He's saying things. He's crazy. He's going insane. Sitting in the bottle down. I a full container of pills opening and inviting. I turned my head to look at the 13 steps in the cupola. Cupola? Cupola? What is, what is this word? C-U-P-O-L-A? Cupola? In the cupola? Cupola? What is that? What, what is that word? I don't know that word. I, I don't know this word! <laughs> Um, I looked back in disbelief and the bottle of pills had vanished from the side table. This is terrible. The projector turned on, clicked by itself, and Phil began to slowly roll to life on its own. I watched as 13 people ascended the attic stairs and marched up to the attic with their hoods pulled over the top of their heads. The cameraman was jerking back and forth from person to person as they each put their books... As yes, they each pulled their hoods back to reveal grotesquely burned faces with light strands of hair hanging from their skulls. All right, screw it. We're just going to go with this. This is very silly. I don't want to read through this. <coughs> um, all right, we're just going to start. <coughs> that night, I decided to give the scotch and movies a break. I was on duty as the overnight attending at 401 Elm and took a drink and... I was on duty as the overnight attending at 401 Elm and took and drank a glass of milk to get some rest on the cot upstairs. The nurse downstairs could easily wake me if I needed and I felt the tendrils of sleep. The nurse downstairs could easily wake me if I needed and I felt the tendrils of sleep pulling me down into a pleasant doze, at least until the dreams came. I found myself in my pajamas and walking down an old road somewhere in the town that I had never been. In... I found myself in my pajamas and walking down an old road somewhere in a town that I had never been. It was dark, but I could see by a full moon overhead. I found a path off the road that had been overgrown and led to an old gate. The fence was unlocked and the gate opened into a small and overgrown cemetery. The gravestones were aged and unreadable in the dark of the night. A wrought iron fence surrounded the entire graveyard, but I wasn't concerned or scared. I opened up the gate and walked inside for a closer look and noticed something stirring in the ground. I observed a hand crawling from the dirt of the first grave. Then another hand came out as Then another hand came out as a corpse slowly pulled itself from its ancient grave. It shook the dirt off and lurched over to confront me in this dark place of death. Its head wobbled loosely on its neck and a light glowed from the dead sockets in its skull. Dear Eddie, it whispered in my ear. I could smell the rotting, decomposed flesh as its tongue dropped to the ground. Wake up! It hissed loudly. It loudly hissed. I turned to run, and the figure of a large, hulking man stood over me with one eye hanging from its socket. Wake up! It screamed. I woke up to the charge nurse shaking me in bed with tears streaming down my face. Man of science or not, something in this house was invading my dreams. I decided on a chat with David later in the day. At the moment, the bottle of scotch in the attic was looking far more attractive. I climbed the stairs up the attic and found my chair so inviting. The first light of morning was peeking through the copula window above. I don't know how to say that word. The first light of morning was peeking through the copula window above in the... The first light of morning was peeking through the copula window in the... It's shaking me up. Hey, PBN. <coughs> I don't know how to say that word. The first light of morning was peeking through the cupola window above in the window's walk, and the crystal in my dreams was no longer there. A thick rope tied in a noose now was suspended from the ceiling, and a single wooden chair stood atop the spiral staircase. I rubbed my eyes and tried to focus, but the chair and rope were no longer there. I sat down in my overstuffed chair and... I sat down in my overstuffed chair and drank two long gulps from the bottle and felt the burn in my throat and the booze... I sat down in my overstuffed chair and drank two long gulps from the bottle and felt the burn in my throat and the booze worked its way down to my stomach. Sitting the bottle down, I saw a full container of pills opened and inviting. I turned my head to look up the 13... 
I turned my head to look up at the thirteen steps in the cupola entrance, and the rope had not come back. I looked back in disbelief, and the bottle of pills had vanished from the side table. The projector turned on and... The projector turned on, clicked on by... It. He said that twice. Like, do I have to correct this? Copula? Like, copula? <coughs> Screw it, PBM, we're far enough, and this is a terrible, terrible written book. Okay. Uh, uh, now I'm lost. Okay, we'll go back a little bit. I turned my head to look up at the 13 steps in the copula entrance, and the rope had not come back. I looked back in disbelief, and the bottle of pills had vanished from the side table. The projector turned on by itself, and film began to slowly roll to life on its own. I watched as thirteen people ascended the attic stairs and marched up to the attic with hoods pulled over the tops of their heads. The camera was jerking back and forth from person to person as they each pulled their hoods back to reveal grotesquely... Running out of breath. <clears throat> I watched as thirteen people ascended the attic stairs and marched up to the attic with hoods pulled over the tops of their heads. The camera was jerking back and forth from person to person as they each pulled their hooks back. This is, this is hard to read. The camera was jerking back and forth from person to person as they each pulled their hoods back to reveal grotesquely burnt faces with light strands of hair hanging from their skulls. They formed a circle in the middle of the room and the man in the middle pulled his hood back. He stood much taller than the rest and I immediately recognized him as a large man... He stood much taller than the rest, and I immediately recognized him as the large man from my graveyard nightmare. I shut the projector off and left the attic with the scotch bottle in tow. I headed downstairs to the dispensary and found some sleeping powder. I spent the rest of the morning on the leather couch in David's office where he would find me in a disheveled state. All right, uh, I'll go back and do the, la the other copula line. Um, okay, uh, this is me redoing that one line. Uh, right here. The first light of morning was peeking through the copula windows above in the windows walk and the crystal in my dreams was no longer there. All right, we got all the lines. <coughs> I'm gonna get jobs, thanks buddy. I appreciate it. Did you choose a book? Uh, we had one suggestion, but it turned out to be sort of an erotic novel. Uh, it didn't say it was an erotic novel. It said it was a romance. Uh, but then uh, I went to read it, and it was all uh, it was all erotic. <laughs> I couldn't read that on stream. <laughs> um, all right, we're gonna give this a few seconds of silence <coughs> for <coughs> denoising. All right, that's enough silence. All right, we'll save this one and export it as a web. And we're just gonna go through uh, PBM. We're just gonna edit all these later. Right now, we're just going through and recording them all. <coughs> you want the one with the sword on the cover? All right, let's go grab that one. I know the one you're talking about. It's this one, The Guardians of Excalibur. Series book two? Did they not look, they like, did, why didn't they go back to the <coughs> narrator for book one? <coughs> Mild-mannered Salt Lake City bookstore owner Adam Hansen is called upon once again to enter into an epic adventure alongside his longtime friend Bryce. This time, Adam must enter into a world of magic where he will face magicians, dragons, angels, fairies, and even a 4,000-year-old evil sorceress bent on opening the gates of hell and releasing the evils inside. Will Adam be strong enough to stop her nefarious plans to free Lucifer and unleash the fury of hell on Earth? If that pressure wasn't enough, he also has to save the very future of magic itself, all without humankind ever knowing. <laughs> Running two mics is smart. Yeah, this one runs kind of quiet, and I want to be able to keep it sort of low so that if I do get loud with the auditions, I'm not peeking and stuff. And then I don't have to have this in my face either. Um, so it's nice. Hi, right, Donovan. Welcome back to the chat. <clears throat> Dwarven redeem squats. Okay, I missed that. I'll, I'll squat for you, Dwarven. And then we're going to be reading a book. <coughs> you want to be out of breath and then read a book. Very rude. Uh, what is it? Was it 10 squats? I think it's 10 squats, right? Three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, there you go, Dwarven. Thank you for doing me squats, making sure I stay fit. <laughs> squats, I do say. <clears throat> okay. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, <laughs> this description is terrible. It's a royalty swears. It's a royalty share. So how this works, again, I'll explain this again because we have different people in chat. But the way that this works is the project budget, they'll say either they'll pay you per finished hour or they'll give you like a royalty split or royalty share. And how that works, if it's just royalty share, that means they don't pay me a dime to actually make the book. But um, every time the audiobook sells, I get a percentage of the profits. And uh, if it's a terrible book, and it never sells, that means I make nothing. But we're gonna audition anyway. <laughs> um, it even has my name as protagonist, does it? <clears throat> my name is not Adam Henson or Bryce. What are you talking about? <clears throat> Literally a story about you. <laughs> okay, you got me, my name's actually Bryce. Uh, <laughs> it's not Bryce. Uh, zero reviews on Amazon. Skip it. I'm not going to skip it. I'm going to record this one for you, PB, and you showed up to the screen for, stream for this one in particular. We're going to audition. <laughs> yeah, you can actually scroll down. There's actually a lot of information. It's nice. And you can see, like, the sales rank uh, right here and, like, the Amazon rating and stuff like that to see if it's even worth your time. But for the for this purpose of this screen st stream, it is, worth, it is worth the time, so we'll do it. Unless it's, like, 10 pages. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the audition. Notes. This book is historical fiction and has a lot of biblical references within. Well, yeah, I mean, he said Salt Lake City. Of course it's going to be religious. Uh, <clears throat> this is the second book in the Guardian Trilogy. The first book is the Guardian of the Templar Treasure. Uh, you know what's actually fun is when it's like the second book in a series or whatever, you can often look it up and like we could go find the first book. Like if we go to Audible. Um, we might be able to find his first book and see what the uh, other guy that he hired did. <clears throat> which can sort of give you like an idea of what you oh shut up audible just let me browse let me browse okay um what do you call the guardian series book one what did he say it was called uh the templar of treasure the guardians of the okay here we go we can listen to the sample by the end of the day, the box that she had carried up and placed on the chair was the last thing that Heather needed to deal with for the day before going home. It had been a long day already, and she was more than ready to go home to prepare for her dinner with Adam that night. She thought to herself, should I just... That's my competition, basically. If he hired that guy, the bar is that guy, or slightly better, you know? Feels like AI, it kind of does. Leave it for tomorrow. Deciding against it, she grabbed the box off the chair and placed it on her desk. The box wasn't at all like any of the other desk. standard banker's bar, 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 boxes bar, bar, bar. at the warehouse. <laughs> all right, that's terrible. Uh, well, <clears throat> eight ratings. So at least eight people have bought this book, you know? And I'd get like a 20% cut, basically. So like 20%, let's say 20 bucks is uh, like $4. And so I'd, I would have made like 24 bucks off of this or, or 32 bucks off of this. So that, that, woof. Got to do this whole book for 32 bucks. <clears throat> Sounds like he's sitting next to a fire in his smoking room. Yeah, he doesn't sound good. Dwarven, are you better than that guy? Yes. Yes, yes, you are definitely better than that guy. Your royalty share was $5, but I saw the live stream. It took $5. It's copyright damages. <laughs> Understandable. <clears throat> we assume 10x the buys of the reviews. Yeah. Yeah, pe nobody actually leaves reviews. That's crazy. Um... Oh man, this is all right. We're just gonna copy this, uh, and we're gonna we'll just paste it in with this one. Boop, 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 boop. Nice. All right, let's go ahead and record this one really quick. Uh, I already forgot the name of the book, <laughs> The Guardians of Excalibur. No, no, no. Yeah, no. Save. Uh, black bar on the search bar, but not the recommendations is a smart bar. I have it there because, um, when I'm in this page, I have like personal information about my account up here and I didn't want to have that on stream. So that's why I've got it. <clears throat> All right. Um, oh, I lost it. Okay. This one's for you, PBN. 
We're only going to read through it once. We're not even going to do like the 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 other the two read throughs. The fluorescent bulbs overhead begrudgingly no begrudgingly. The fluorescent bulbs overhead begrudgingly flickered on in the small bookshop as 40-year-old Adam Henson flipped the switch on the wall. Just as he had done almost every day for the last 15 years, Adam entered into his downtown bookstore. He was followed into the shop by his canine companion, Samantha. The welcoming smell of old books, leather and dust, filled Adam's nostrils as he entered the store. Samantha was a five-year-old German shepherd that Adam had acquired from his longtime friend and college professor, Nicholas J. Parker. After Nick's untimely and gruesome death at the hands of a psychopath named... That was a really... That was quite the change of pace there. Really wacky change. That's like whiplash and change of tone. It's like, oh, he's got his little doggy, right? It's all, oh, he's got that little dog, Samantha. He got it from his friend who was killed by a gruesome sociopath. Whoa, why? <laughs> okay. Samantha was a five-year-old German shepherd that Adam had acquired from his longtime friend and college professor, Nicholas J. Parker. After Nick's untimely and gruesome death at the hands of a sociopath named Mark Powell just a year earlier. Ever since he had acquired her, Samantha had <coughs> Ever since he had acquired her, Samantha had accompanied Adam every day to the bookshop. Pretty much inseparable. <coughs> to the bookshop. Okay. Ever since he had acquired her, Samantha had accompanied Adam every day to the bookshop. What? He, he starts the sentence the same way twice. It is killing me. I hate this. Ever since he had acquired her, Samantha had accompanied Adam every day to the bookshop. Every day since Adam's return to the States last year. In fact, the two of them were pretty much inseparable. It almost seemed that Samantha didn't want to be let out of Adam. It almost seemed that Samantha didn't want to let Adam out of her sight for fear of losing yet another master. She was his constant companion and protector. In truth... Adam felt a strange sense of security with Samantha by his side as well. Adam walked around the sales counter of the bookstore and flipped on the computer as Samantha made herself comfortable in the large overstuffed dog bed that was tucked away out of sight under the counter. And just like that, the rare bookshop that Adam had owned and operated in the heart of downtown Salt Lake City, Utah, oh, you shouldn't notate it like that in a book. And just like that, the rare bookshop that Adam had owned and operated in the heart of downtown Salt Lake City, Utah for the last 15 years was opened and ready for business. Adam placed his favorite coffee mug under the coffee maker, popped in one of those little plastic coffee pods, and dressed the little blue glowing... Adam placed his favorite coffee mug under the coffee maker, popped in one of those little plastic coffee pods, and depressed the little blue glowing button. In less than a minute, he would have a hot, steaming cup of coffee in his hands. That wasn't nearly fast enough for Adam, but he would just have to do... At least it wouldn't take half an hour to make the old... At least it wouldn't take half an hour to make, like, the old-fashioned French press that he had used in... Why? Why is this the... I want to curse. Why is this the audition? This is such a lame, stupid, boring scene. He's supposed to have, like, a, an adventure book here, right? I am falling asleep. He's like, oh, he pressed the blue button. This is horrible. Why is this the audition? Doesn't he want to know that, like, oh, and the, the adventure, and he pulled out his sword, and he fought the killer of his best friend. Wouldn't you want that to be the part that, like, you hear in the audition? But no, he's like, oh, and he's, he's pressing the button to make his coffee. This is terrible. Okay. In less than a minute, he would have a hot, steaming cup of coffee in his hands. That wasn't nearly fast enough for Adam, but it would just have to do. At least it wouldn't take half an hour to make like the old-fashioned fresh press that he'd used in the store last year. Thank God for modern tech... I don't know what voice to do for this guy. Thank God for modern technology, thought Adam to himself. Thank God for modern technology, thought Adam to himself. All right, that was crap. I hated that. I didn't enjoy that. <laughs> PBN, thank you for your suggestion. Had a good time making it. <clears throat> All right. We'll export that one. That one's done. Uh, if the story takes place in both a real world and non-real world location, you think it's kind of cringe to include a specific place that temporarily takes place in the real world. I agree. It, it does feel kind of cringy. It almost makes it just feel like a self-insert, you know? It's not good. 
Anyway, PBN, do you have a different suggestion? Um, I thought that would be better. I honestly did. <laughs> that was uh, that was so dumb. The, 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 I mean, look at the description. It, it... Mild-mannered Salt Lake City bookstore owner Nanner has been called upon once again to enter into an epic adventure alongside his longtime friend Bryce. Uh, you know, it's like an evil sorcerer is bent on opening the gates of hell. You know, it's dramatic. He's like, he's got the gates of hell, the free Lucifer and unleash the fury, right? You've got all of that going on. But instead, he's just like, oh, yeah, and I opened the store and I've got my dog, Samantha. And I got Samantha and we're going to go ahead and we're going to make some coffee. And I'm so glad it's not the fresh bread. And that was dumb. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on. Let's do another one. <laughs> ah! Oh, right, the House of Slumbers, the horror one. Let's do the horror one. No, I did that one. We did the horror one. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one was terrible, too. Manhood was boring. Okay, just making sure I got all the ones that we've done up so I can find them still. <clears throat> all right, all right, all right. So we got 50 movies made, lessons learned. <coughs> this one's this one's got some effort put into the cover. Maybe it would be better because there's a little bit of effort being put into it. Let's take a look. Oh, and this one's actually paying. This one's paying real actual money. Okay, so that's good. So if I got this one, I'm actually making money. <laughs> Which is good because its sales rank is 1,082,378. Even Excalibur here was only 635,000. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Making coffee is adventure, I say, grabbing my tub of 100% Colombian. If you say so, Dwarven, I don't think so. <coughs> All right, let's uh, let's let let's take a look at this one. This one's actually paying money, so that's kind of cool. Master Jaquil, a soul in the middle astral realm, is ready for another journey into the physical realm. After many lifetimes of evolution, is eager. He is eager for one last lesson-filled human incarnation on Earth. Why is this his last incarnation? If he can incarnate, why is this his last one? If he can successfully complete all his lessons and repay his karmic debt, <laughs> okay, it will allow him to advance into higher planes of existence. For this reason, he chooses to incarnate as Jonah Michaels, a Concordian guardian. In the physical realm, we initially encounter Jonah Michaels as a young adult on Earth. However, one morning, he is shocked and disoriented after he awakens and finds himself in a new dimension known as Concordia. Here, Jonah unravels his true identity and purpose, that he is a Concordian guardian tasked with protecting all dimensions from invasion by evil entities known as infringers. All right, <clears throat> good enough. Let's do this one. No notes from the right holder. I kind of like it when they sort of have like notes on what they want from a character's voice. Unfortunately, this guy doesn't have that, but that's okay. We'll forgive him this once, so long as his book isn't bad. If his book's bad, we won't forgive him. Concordian Chronicles. I'm just opening it over. <coughs> okay, okay, here's the copy. Uh, wow, that is hard to read. Okay, here we go. Trebuchet, sure, why not? Bold, yeah, love bold. All right. Ba, 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 ba. Let's just skim through this. Concordian Chronicles excerpt. Jonah, get up. You're going to be late again, Aurora yelled to her son from the kitchen for the second time. All right, so, like, what's a good mother voice? So Aurora's his mother, right? Jonah, get up. You're going to be late again. All right. Jonah, get up. You're going to be late again, Aurora yelled to her son from the kitchen for the second time. Aurora was preparing breakfast, dressed in jeans and her favorite red T-shirt. Why? Why does that matter? Why, <laughs> why does that matter at all? It, plus, he's not down there, right? So how does he know that she's dressed in her favorite red t-shirt? <laughs> These books are... Okay. As a special treat, Aurora had been an appointment for a facial. It wasn't often she did that, but she had a busy week. I don't care about your facial, Aurora. Luke, did you want more toast? Luke, did you want more toast? Aurora asked her father-in-law. Her father-in-law. Wait, so as a yelled to her son. So her, Aurora, her father-in-law lives with them, I guess. 
Aurora became aggravated with Jonah's lack of response and a sense of urgency to get to, get to the university on time. In recent months, Jonah had made a bit of a habit of waking up late, resulting in him not getting his morning classes on time. Then there were days when he didn't go to university at all. <coughs> Man. Aurora raised her eyebrows and shook her head when she took one look at Jonah walking towards the kitchen table. I gather you haven't shaved, Aurora asked. Jonah rolled his eyes as he was chewing on the bacon. I, okay, when did he start eating? It was quite a tall young man with well-toned body and normal, quite pleasing to the eye. Jonah was quite a tall young man with a well-toned body and normal, quite pleasing to the eye. Oh, and normally quite pleasing to the eye. I don't like this book. <laughs> I hope if I take one of these jobs, they don't watch this stream. <laughs> um... <coughs> Jonah's father, Mason, who was at the kitchen table eating breakfast alongside his father, Luke, wrinkled his nose at Jonah and walked by. Have you run out of body wash? Have you run out of body wash? Have you run out of body wash? Mason asked Jonah. Jonah sat at the kitchen table and ignored his father. A moment later, Aurora paced Jonah's breakfast in front of him. Scrambled at- He's already eating! What are you talking about? Put his breakfast in- Okay. Crispy bacon looked just the way he liked. He's already eating bacon. Why don't you give him more? I'm not- I'm not hungry. Just give me a cup of coffee. Jonas said as he pushed the plate away. What did your slave die off? What did your last slave die off? Aurora retorted as she went to make him coffee. Not doing what I asked. Not doing what I asked. What is it? This dialogue is terrible! Ah! Okay. <laughs> And oh, then she has a facial wash. She feels that as it is indicative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If she doesn't often go get like a facial, why is that listed as something indicative of her character? I agree. Why would that be listed as something indicative of her character? That's dumb. If she never does it. Okay. Why? Well, this shouldn't be a book critique. This should just be me trying to get some auditions done. But why? Why are these so dumb? <laughs> <clears throat> a fiendish stare with her dark brown eyes, and she wasn't looking. Hey, hey, hey. Mason slapped his hand under the kitchen table. Okay. These are painful books, guys, but you know what? I'm, uh... <coughs> We're doing this together. We'll, we'll make it through. We're all in this together. <laughs> what is this called again? The, the Concordian Chronicles. All right, let's do this. What the here? Yeah. Got the streamer scream down? Thank you. I try. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> yes, I'm quite pleased with myself. I think I'm hilarious. All right. All right. All right. Jonah, get up. You're going to be late again. Aurora yelled to her son from the kitchen for the second time. Aurora was preparing breakfast, dressed in jeans and her favorite red t-shirt. Her hair was tied up in a ponytail so it wouldn't annoy her even while she cooked. Her hair was tied up in a ponytail so it wouldn't annoy her while she cooked. She wasn't working that day. Aurora was eager to get everyone out of the house so she could have the day to herself. She had an appointment at the hairdresser's to trim her curly, mussy brown hair, which cascaded over her shoulders and was getting way too long for her liking. As a special treat, Aurora also had an appointment for a facial. It wasn't often she did that, but she'd had a busy last few weeks and she felt she deserved a gift to herself for her hard work. Now, the only thing standing in the way of her pampering time was her lazy son, Jonah. Luke, did you want more toast? Aurora asked her father-in-law, who was sitting at the kitchen table. No, thanks. Who's... F I keep almost cursing. Who's Luke? <clears throat> asked her father-in-law. Okay, so... No, thanks. No, no thanks. How's that for... That's good enough for Luke. No thanks, Luke said. As she continued preparing breakfast, Aurora became more aggravated... As she continued preparing breakfast, Aurora became more aggravated with Jonah's lack of response and sense of urgency to get to university on time. In recent months, Jonah had made a habit of waking up late, resulting in him not getting to his morning classes on time. Then, there were days when he didn't go to university at all. Then there were days when he didn't go to university at all. I'm up. Jonah staggered into the kitchen and walked past Aurora, picking up a piece of cooked bacon from a plate that his mother was preparing for him. Aurora raised her eyebrows and shook her head when she took one look at Jonah walking toward the kitchen table. 
I gather you haven't shaved, Aurora asked. Jonah rolled his eyes as he was chewing on the bacon. Jonah was quite a tall young man with a well-toned body and normally quite pleasing to the eye. Jonah was quite a tall young man with a well-toned body and normally quite pleasing to the eye. However, that particular morning, Aurora could see he was unkempt. His dark, straight hair, about three inches long, was disheveled and his brown eyes were noticeably bloodshot. Jonah's shirt, which was from the day before, Jonah's shirt, which was from the day before, displayed a couple of food stains. Jonah's father, Mason, who was at the kitchen table eating breakfast alongside his father, Luke, wrinkled his nose at Jonah, wrinkled his nose as Jonah walked by. Have you run out of body wash? No, 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 that's not a good voice. That's not a good voice for him. Have you run out of body wash? Mason asked Jonah. Jonah sat at the kitchen table and ignored his father. A moment later, Aurora placed Jonah's breakfast in front of him. Scrambled eggs, crispy bacon cooked just the way he liked, sausages, and a small stack of golden brown toast. I'm not hungry. Just give me a cup of coffee, Jonah said as he pushed the plate away. What, did your last slave die off? Aurora wrote. What, did your last slave die off? Aurora retorted as she went to make him coffee. Not doing what I asked. What kind of non sequitur answer is that? What, did your last slave die off? Not doing what I asked. What, what is that? Not doing what I asked, Jonah snapped back. Not doing what I asked, Jonah snapped back. Aurora didn't respond. She pursed her lips and gave Jonah a fiendish stare with her dark brown eyes when she thought he wasn't looking. Hey! Hey! Mason slapped his hand onto the kitchen table. Alright, so that's where it ends. Why does it end there? I don't know. Did I not say what did you last? Did I, did I get that line? All right, I'll, I'll redo that line from there. What did your last slave die off? Aurora retorted as she went to make him coffee. Not doing what I asked. Jonah snapped back. Aurora didn't respond. She pursed her lips and gave Jonah a fiendish stare with her dark brown eyes when she thought he wasn't looking. Hey, Mason slapped his, hey, Mason slapped his hand onto the kitchen table. Oh! Oh, I see what you're saying, Dwarven. She's not saying off. She's saying of. Okay. That's me. That was my dumb brain. That's why I'm so confused. What did your last... What did your last slave die of? 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 That's a stupid line. What did your last slave die of? Aurora retorted as she went to make him coffee. Not doing what I asked. Jonah snapped back. Aurora didn't respond. She pursed her lips and gave Jonah a fiendish stare with her dark brown eyes when she thought he wasn't looking. Hey! Mason slapped his hand onto the kitchen table. Alright, you were correct, Dwarven. Thank you for catching that because I didn't catch that. All right, let's save that. Export, WAV. Nifty, and the new file. And delete that one. And we're ready to find our next book, baby. <laughs> I didn't like that one very much. But thank you for catching that. You're right. What did your last slave die of? I, I don't know how to say that line. What did your last slave die of? That's sort of how I want to say it. What did your last slave die of? Whatever. We're, we're far enough along. Let's do the next one. Next book. Let's try page two. We've been doing all these off page one. Cosmic Croissants. The Witch's Boodle. Mammoth. Hold on, you can't call it Mammoth and then have a picture of like a, a raven or a crow. I'm not sure which is that's supposed to be. All right, all right, let's see. Oh, look at that. This one actually sells. Wow, crazy, a real book. Hardy Boys meets Indiana Jones in this thrilling new adventure novel. After the death of his father, misfit and aspiring paleontologist Jimmy, no, Tommy Rhodes, seeks refuge in the ramshackle lighthouse that stands guard over the city of Mammoth, Washington. Left in disarray by years of bad weather, it's the perfect place for Tommy to hide from everything that's gone wrong in his life. 
and to party with a band of friends, the Jailbirds, the only family he has left. After a storm uncovers a secret hidden in the walls of the... After a storm uncovers a secret hidden in the walls of the old lighthouse, Tommy unravels a mystery behind his wildest dreams and the deadly conspiracy that surrounds it. And Tommy's entire life seems tangled at the heart of it all. Tommy and the Jailbirds, Jude, Maya, Mars, and the newcomer Lydia, are thrust into the middle of a deadly hunt for the truth that will challenge their bond. Uncover the secrets that lurk beneath the surface of Mammoth, and test how far they'll go to set things right. Alright, that sounds... Whatever, it sounds like a book. Alright. The audition scripts include segments of both monologue and dialogue for the six points of view Ugh. that will be portrayed in this book. That's too many points of view. Six points of view in a book? Ugh. Okay. Have fun with it. Oh, I'll I'll have all kinds of fun with it, guy. Oh, I'm gonna... I'm gonna love this book! Oh boy! All right. Oh my gosh, this is four pages. Tommy stood and rounded the desk. He sat on the edge to his best friend. I know what your dad does to you. Jude said nothing. I know that he beats on you, and that you spent the better part of our lives taking the heat so Henry wouldn't have to. I've known for a long time. Why? What? what? You sent me a four-second file? All right, all right, Dwarven. All right, all right. Let's see. You want me to moderate your chat for you? What did your last slave die of? Not moderating the chat well enough, Dwarven! Stop complaining! They died of complaining about moderating the chat for no pay! <laughs> <clears throat> I need a... I need to... We're gonna take a quick breath here. You love seeing how tiny old phones were. Holding an iPhone 4 and thinking about how this used to be considered a fairly large screen. Oh, I know. Uh, those, they're so tiny. I mean, you know, I've got, a, I've got this, and it's huge, right? And every time, uh, I don't, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you, Glimmon. That is, uh. How did we live with screens so tiny? How did we do it? <laughs> uh. I don't know. They're kind of convenient, though. You know, like they fit wherever, whatever pockets. It's nice. Better eyes. Better eyes. What do you mean better eyes? What do you mean better eyes, PB? And I don't understand. Oh, better eyes. Like, right, 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 right. Little screens, better eyes. Okay. Sorry, I forgot what I was talking about. I'm a little scatterbrained. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open my window. It's uh, I'm gonna get some fresh air really quick. I gotta close it again before we start recording though, because we don't want no like, you know, birds chirping or whatever in the recordings. But we just need a I just need a quick breather here, just to breathe for a second. How long is this stream gonna run? Uh I was planning on doing at least eight books. So however long at least eight books takes. Um if we're all having fun, I was planning like four hours maybe, but we'll see. We've been going about an hour and a half. I wanna go at least three hours. Um yeah. Yeah, but uh, I was planning around four hours. At least eight books completely done and submitted. You've got some Alyssa VA you can review. All right, all right. Heck yeah. I wanna, I wanna review some VA. Take a quick breather from uh, reading horribly, horribly written books. Got my clicker. <laughs> I lost it. Come back. You want to do it? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it now. We can do it now. I just need a second to get some air so that now's a good time. Whoa. That's a bunch of them. Okay. Sorry, I was just switching screens to make sure that I didn't have anything on screen. 
Uh, bu -bu I don't have to worry about, like, them saying their names, right? Like, they're not going to say their names. I don't have to worry about that. Do I need to worry about that, PBM, before I hit play? Or I'll, I'll mute desktop audio for a second. Nope. Okay. If you don't want it. All right. All right. You can hear it, right? All right. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. That, it is cold outside. I got to close the window right now. I needed the air, but, man, that is too cold. I hate the cold so much. Okay. All right, guys. So this is uh, um, for Isle 99, which is the original cartoon that PBN in the – what's he in? The YouTube chat? In the YouTube chat uh, is, is working on. He released episode one. I can uh, – you should share a link to that. PBN, can you share links? I'm sure you can share links. Anyway, Isle 99 is an original cartoon that he's been making. Uh, he released episode one. It's super good. And these are lines for episode two. So we're going to look at some of the lines for episode two. Silver Fafé. Too bit aged a decade since the last week in VR. Yeah, well, I grew up my hair, and I'm a little scruffier than when I was doing the week in VR. So I, I probably do look old. It's the glasses, really. If I took those off, I don't look, I don't look quite so old. But I, I, I like to have those when I'm narrating. Um, it's a really, really low prescription. So I don't normally wear them. But All right, so this is the first one. <clears throat> Cinematic animation. It's super good. Uh, let's let's actually throw a link. I'm gonna throw a link in it really a link into the chat really quick for aisle 99. So if you haven't seen this, I highly recommend going and watching it. Uh, but these are lines for one of the characters named Alyssa in episode two. So we're gonna go ahead and review some of these. If you don't want it, then why do you keep ordering it? Yes, you are. You, you. Hold on, I'm gonna pull up the lines so you guys can see what the lines are because we gotta know we gotta know the context. Uh. Oh yeah, thanks, Dwarven. Ion99.com as well. Lots of information there. I'm trying to think of how best to show the script here without like showing off any names. Don't wanna. Don't wanna. Oh, I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I got this. I'll show the posting for the, uh, not that. Yes, perfect. Thank you, PBN. That's a, that's what I was looking for. Okay. Uh, ba -ba Make sure I don't have anything on screen with names. Okay, so this is that didn't work. All right, we'll just zoom in. Good enough. All right. Uh, sorry, this is a bunch of screens I wasn't planning on. All right, so this is the this is the script. This is for Alyssa right here. This is the AI girlfriend of Tibbets. <clears throat> um, I forgot. Okay. So these are the lines. Uh, Alyssa, who has been ordering a bunch of things that Tibbet hasn't been, or, uh, hasn't been ordering. Uh, so she says, if you don't want it, then why do you keep ordering it? And Tibbet, yeah, you know, you can read, we'll read it. Alyssa, I'm not. Yes, yes, you are you. And then she crashes. She restarts. Uh, Alyssa, sorry, I had a causality error. Me? There it is again. Er, Oh, you had a causality error. My bad. This is why I needed to take a break. I kept messing up lines. Um, me? There that is again. What does that mean? It means you're being difficult. I asked for one thing. One thing. You've ordered an entire shipment's worth of product, but for no discernible reason. Now listen here, ma'am. I... Oh. You plan to pour acid on the meat cube. That makes sense now. I'm sorry. All right. So those are the lines we're listening to. That's the context. Just really quickly, I'm going to go to the screen again. While I'm pulling up. Okay. Ba -ba -ba. You see, this is why you can't be a writer. If you were writing this, you would make a listen acronym. Artificial. 
Joker's the day that, that you like the lowercase l. All right. Uh, ba -ba -ba. All right. So this is the first one. I can go back to this screen now so we can see the script. And let's listen to it. If you don't want it, then why do you keep ordering it? Yes, you are. You, 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 you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you had a causality error. It means you're being difficult. You've ordered an entire shipment's worth of product, but for no discernible reason. Oh, you plan to pour the acid on the meat cube. That makes sense now. I'm sorry. If you don't want it, then why do you keep ordering it? Okay, so she did it yes, a couple of ways. You are! You... I was wondering why this was three minutes long if it was like 30 seconds of lines. <laughs> sorry, you had a causality error. It means you're being difficult. You've ordered an entire shipment's worth of product, but for no discernible reason. Oh, you plan to pour the acid on the meat cube. That makes sense now. I'm sorry. All right, I'm going to come back to this. I want to sort of jump between them so I can hear the different versions. Uh, I like it. I like her voice for it. But I feel like she's sort of jumping between um, accents, which I don't necessarily dislike, but it just... It almost feels unintentionally inconsistent. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. Let's, let's listen to the next one. I want to, I want to listen to him. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to go back to this screen again, just in case I accidentally pull up a name. Okay. If you don't want it, then why do you keep ordering it? Yes, you are. You, sorry, you had a causality error. It means you're being difficult. You've ordered an entire shipment's worth of product, but for no discernible reason. Oh, you plan to pour the acid on the meat cube. That makes sense now. I'm sorry. Hmm. I think I like the other one more. But mostly because, like, the range that I felt. Um, I'd kind of like to hear it a different way from this, from this person. Uh, because I felt like it was sort of played on one note. You know what I mean? Like, if we listen to this again... If you don't want I'm assuming this is the kind of critique that you want at PBN. Uh, just sort of my, my thoughts on it all. Let me know if you have anything specific you want me to, to uh, listen, listen for. But um, If you don't want it, then why do you keep ordering, ordering it? it? Right? So she's like frustrated. It almost sounds a little bit scared. Yes, you are. You... Sorry. She crashes. You had a causality error. And then she reboots. And again, this is sort of just maybe how I would play it. But I feel like that should be a little bit different. But it feels like it's playing on the same note. You know, she just had a whole crash because she's this AI and the yes, guy is acting you are. weird. You... Sorry. And then she sounds you like she didn't really reset. Error. Right? She sort of sounds the same right there. It means you're being difficult. You've ordered an entire shipment's worth of product, but for no discernible reason. Oh, I feel like her voice is pretty good for the, uh, for the character, though. Like, I feel like the voice fits the face well. I like that one. I'd like to hear it again from her. That's what I feel. Um, if you want it, then you'll have to take it. <laughs> uh, dang, guess I gotta record my take so that 2 can critique me live. Yeah, Silver, get a take in here. I'll, I'll totally critique it live. All right. I liked that one, PBN. That was the second one. Uh, but I, I'd kind of like to hear it a second time from them, you know, a little bit differently because I feel like they kind of played on one note, but I feel like the voice was pretty fitting. All right. Uh, next one. Let me pull it up. If you don't want it, then why do you keep ordering it? Yes, you are, you... Sorry, you had a causality error. It means you're being difficult. <laughs> You've ordered an That's entire good. shipment's worth of product, but for no discernible reason. Oh, you plan to pour the acid on the meat cube. That makes sense now. I'm sorry. Oh, I like that one a lot. That one was really good. That, that was really good. I actually really like that one. I feel like she really hit the emotions. I'm going to listen to it again here. If you don't want it, then why do you keep ordering it? It. That, that felt a little weird on the end, but that's just nitpicky. Um, if they did this again, I'm sure that they could change that. I, I kind of like yes, that. Yes, you are, you. Yes, you are. Yeah, okay, that's Sorry, good. Sorry, you had a causality error. And see, that that's what I was talking about the last one. You feel all of that. Yes, you are, and then she yes, crashes. Yes, you are, you. Sorry, then, you had a causality error. Completely e different, because she just rebooted. She's a computer. I like that. That was great. I, that's exactly how... Error. It means you're being difficult. 
I like that sass. There's a good level of sass there. Just a bit angry, but like I'm doing my job so I can't be too angry. You've ordered an entire shipment's worth of product, but for no discernible reason. I like that too. She's like, again, she's like almost getting fed up. She's like, almost no discernible reason. I'm trying to be pleasant, but I want to rip your head off. <laughs> oh, you plan to pour the acid on the meat cube. That makes sense now. I'm sorry. And then she's sort of a computer there. Yeah, I like that one the most so far. I'm really liking that one. Um, yeah, uh, overall, I really like the, the range that she had on it. I think that she got that level of sort of uh, snarkiness that I, we were talking earlier that I'm pretty sure you were sort of looking for there. Um, it's sort of that level of uh, she's human. She's human. You know, she's working retail for all intents and purposes. <laughs> and she's getting frustrated because you're ordering this thing. I'm doing my job properly, but you're not working right. I'm not malfunctioning. You are. <laughs> yeah. All right. I like that one. Let's hear the next one. <clears throat> and then we'll go back to uh, audiobooks. Don't worry. But uh, this is fun. And that is why I keep switching screens before pulling them up. If you All right. Is this, is this the right one? Yes, it is. Okay. If you don't want it, then why do you keep ordering it? Yes, you are. You. Sorry, you had a causality error. It means you're being difficult. You've ordered an entire shipment's worth of product, but for no discernible reason. Oh, you plan to pour the acid on the meat cube. That makes sense now. I'm sorry. I want to listen to that one again. I want to listen to that again. If you don't want it, then why do you keep ordering it? Yes, you are. You. Sorry, you had a causality error. It means you're being difficult. You've ordered an entire shipment's worth of product, but for no discernible reason. Oh, you plan to pour the acid on the meat cube. That makes sense now. I'm sorry. I also really like this one. I'm assuming that you sent me your top picks, PBN, because these are all actually very good. Like, as far as the voices go for the character and all that, in my opinion. Um... I like this one. I like a lot of the acting choices that they made. Um, I'm trying not to base it like entirely on that because, of course, you know, if they get the job, you could direct them to do it differently. Um, sort of my thoughts on this one. Let me switch cameras. Uh, sort of my thoughts on this one is that it almost felt too much like she was reading the script. You know, there, you sort of talk differently when you're reading versus just talking from the top of your head. Um, and I felt more like she was reading. Um, I, I liked a lot of it. It wasn't bad in any way, but I did feel a lot more like I'm reading this from the script instead of just saying it off the top of my head. Um, but I liked her voice. I feel like her voice is really fitting. I'm also just a fan of that sort of scratchier female voice. I enjoy that. All right, let's do the next one. I don't have a lot of feedback for that one. I just, um, overall, it's not my top pick, but I still liked it. Script. If you don't want it, then why do you keep ordering it? What? Yes, yes you are. You... Sorry. You had a causality error. It means you're being difficult. You've ordered an entire shipment's worth of products, but for no discernible reason. Oh, you plan to pour the acid on the meat cube. That makes sense now. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I wouldn't go with this one. Weakest take so far. Are you talking about me or, or this one that we just listened to? I don't like this one so much. Um, not like forgetting the voice acting and all that. Her microphone sounds a lot lower quality than the ones that you've used already for like your other characters in the show. And one of my biggest pet peeves in, in like animated shows is when one person sounds distinctly different for no good reason, simply because they had a different microphone. You know, it was like one character I did on this microphone and then the other character I did on this microphone. It's going to sound weird and different. And so I wouldn't go with her just straight up because her microphone will st stick out like a sore thumb. And maybe if you were like going to put, yeah, the mic is very poor. Yeah. And like, maybe if you were going to put like a filter on it or whatever for the AI, then it wouldn't be so bad. 
But personally, I wouldn't go with that one, just straight up microphone quality. But I'm going to listen to it one more time to give sort of feedback on what I felt about the acting. If you don't want it, then why do you keep ordering it? What? Yes. So I liked that, but then you like hear somebody in the background. Ordering it. What? Yes. You hear that? Somebody goes like, what in the background? That, like, that's just, why, why would you leave that in the take for your audition? <laughs> if you don't want it, then why do you keep ordering it? What? Yes. Yes, you are. You... So I like at the beginning here, I feel like she did a good job with the beginning. She sounded very frustrated and she, she sounded almost like, again, she, things are happening in a way that the AI is just like, this shouldn't be happening. You know, his causality is broken. She can't order things for him correctly. So I like that she almost has frustration. If you don't a little want bit it, then fear. why do you keep ordering it? Like frustration. I really like how she delivered that line. Yes. Yes, you are. You. And it crashes. Sorry. You had a causality error. It means you're being difficult. I don't like that one. It, that one That one should be like, you're being difficult. You never say you're being difficult in a nice way, you know? That is distinctly a mean sort of like, I'm frustrated with you thing to say. So you're being difficult. No, it should be like, you're being difficult. Or passive aggressive, you know, you're being difficult. But it shouldn't be, you're being difficult. It means you're being difficult. Yeah. You've ordered an entire shipment's worth of products, but for no discernible reason. Oh, you plan to pour the acid on the meat cube. That makes sense now. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think she started out pretty strong, but she got weaker after the, the reset. I think she just got a little bit too subdued, a little bit too quiet. Um, I think that she has the potential to do a lot better, like if you were to guide her on how you wanted it to be. Um but no, I wouldn't go with this one for the microphone alone. And then also it's just sort of a weaker take. All right. <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm going to quickly go through them all one more time here. Um, let's see. Can't tell if it's a small dark barking or a housemate thinking they are being talked to. No, it's like somebody saying what? It's not a dog. It definitely, like, at least, you know, with me listening to it here, it distinctly sounded like somebody saying what? All right. All right. We're going to listen to these one more time. Um... This is the first one. They gave it to you. It's three minutes long. I don't know if, if I want to listen to all three minutes it, of it. Then why do you keep ordering it? Yes, you are. You, 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 you. I do enjoy the sound effects added. It. It's a <laughs> the Sorry, Windows XP. You had a causality error. It means you're being difficult. You've ordered an entire shipment's worth of product, but for no discernible reason. Oh, you plan to pour the acid on the meat cube. That makes sense now. It feels like I'm it's like sorry. two different characters, you if know, you when she's it, between lines. Then why do you keep Because right here, it? she's talking sort yes, of formal. Yes, you are. You... And then, yes, you are. Sorry. Right? It sounds you like. Had a causality. It, it sounds like she's trying to do an accent and then forgetting about the accent every other line, which is weird. And I think it'll be kind of jarring as a character. Error. It means you're being difficult. You've ordered and. That's not to say it's unworkable. I mean, you know, you could just do the line a couple of times and make sure that you're getting the accent consistent, I suppose, but it's kind of weird. Entire shipment's worth of product, but for no discernible reason. Oh, you plan to pour the acid on the meat cube. That makes sense. PBN, I could hop in a chat. You could talk to me. We could talk about this right now if you wanted. Uh, so I'm not just talking one-sided here. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you don't want it, then why do you keep ordering it? Yes, you are. You... Sorry. You had a causality it's error. Okay. okay. It means you're being difficult. You've ordered an entire shipment's worth of product, but for no discernible reason. Oh, you plan to pour the acid on the meat cube. That makes mm -hmm. sense now. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. If you don't want it, then why do you keep ordering it? If you don't want it, then why do you keep ordering it? All right. So I can appreciate, you know, sending a bunch of different takes. Um, overall, I think if you went with her, it wouldn't be bad. Like, this is the first one, by the way, PBN. It's a three-minute long one. If you went with her, I don't think she'd do bad. Um, I kind of like it. I, I mean, she's got a good voice for it and all that. Um, but I think it'll be a lot of work. I think there'll be a lot of directing. You'll have a lot more lines to go through uh, because I think, I, I don't know if this is any indication, this audition, um, it's probably going to be a lot of takes. Um, yeah, not, not my first choice currently. And to pour the acid on the... All right, so this is number two. If you two. don't want it, two. then why do you keep ordering it? 
Yes, you are! You... Sorry, you had a causality error. It means you're being difficult. You've ordered an entire shipment's worth of product, but for no discernible reason. Oh! You plan to pour the acid on the meat cube. That makes sense now. I'm sorry. I think I like the first per- I do like the voice. You think she's just showing variety and showing range? Yeah. I mean, she is. I, um, I just think it's weird to send a full three minutes for- On the meat cube. That makes sense now. I'm sorry. The product, but for no discernible reason. It. If you don't want it, then why do you keep ordering it? Yes, you are! You- Yes, you are! You- Yes, you are! You- Yeah. Yeah. You think it would have been proper to add a vocal filter in the audition? Personally, no. I would think that uh, you'd never want to add a vocal filter in the audition. Uh, because if there's going to be any vocal filtering or anything like that, you know, it's going to be done by whoever's doing the audio work later. And so you're not really getting a good idea of what your actual voice capability is or like what your actual voice is if you're putting it through a filter for the audition. So, yeah, PBN says absolutely not. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, I like the first person a lot. I like the first person a lot. Um, I I just personally feel more concerned that they would send three minutes for 30 seconds of dialogue. Um, if you don't want it, then why do you keep ordering it? Yes, you are, you... Sorry, you had a causality error. It means you're being difficult. You've ordered an entire shipment's worth of product, but for no discernible reason. Oh, you plan to pour the acid on the meat cube. That makes sense now. I'm sorry. If you don't want it, then why do you keep ordering it? Yes, you are! You. Sorry, you had a causality error. It means you're being difficult. You've ordered an entire shipment's worth of product, but for no discernible reason. Oh! You plan to pour the acid on the meat cube. That makes sense now. I'm sorry. All right. So I think my pick, I, I like, uh, I mean, can't say names, but I like the, uh, what is that, third one? I like the third one the most. I think she did a really good job. Um, I also like number one, um, and you're not concerned like I am. So I, I would probably, my picks are probably number three. I like number three the most, um, followed by one. Followed by, what is that? Four. That's your pick as well? Yeah. Three, one, four. That's sort of, that's my order of picks. But uh, yeah, three is my favorite. I think one would do a great job. Um, let's see. The voice sounds like a... <laughs> yeah, I really like the, uh, I really like the third pick. All right. Uh, cool. Silver, if Silver's still here. Silver, did you get one done? I'll review it right now before we head back to audiobooks. I'm going to switch cameras, get closed out of all of these so I don't actually show names on stream or anything. Okay. That's your pick as well. I, I already read that, but um, cool. I'm glad that we sort of came to the same conclusion there. <laughs> um, yeah, I like three. It was good. All right, uh, audiobooks. Getting back to it. I actually really have to use the bathroom, so I'm going to run pee. Uh, I'll be back, like, give me one minute, two minutes, and uh, I'll be right back, and we're going to do... What was the audiobook we had? We had uh, Mammoth. We were looking at Mammoth. Uh, we might do Mammoth. Uh, did we already do this one? We did Chrono. Anyway, we'll look at audiobooks. I'll be right back.
And we're back. All right. Book time. Here we go. All right. So we could do this one. Um, it's got a ton of voices. Uh, I, I had it up. Where'd it go? Maybe I don't. No, I do. It's right here. Damn it. All right, so this one, he said it'd be like six perspectives, right? So we've got May Maya, Jude, Lydia, Mars. It's just a lot of voices. <laughs> um, hmm. Th this, is, this is the struggle. Uh, for a second, I thought I wasn't talking to the right mic. This is the struggle, really, with like trying to do the audiobooks, especially when you're trying to audition for them. Because um, like the audiobook I'm doing right now, I, I'm doing well more than six voices, right? But it's a little bit, it's more like fantasy, so I can be a little bit more out there with the voices and like it fits because it's sort of fantasy. But when it's something like this, which I assume he's trying to play it more straight, you know, he's trying to be young adults that are living on the edge in real life. You, you gotta, I, I don't know, I, I try not to be sort of out there with the voices. <laughs> And that makes it harder to do six distinct voices, especially when it's an audition and you're trying to think of six distinct voices for these characters to do just right for the audition. Needs intermission music. You're right. We should find intermission. I'll, I'll have to find intermission music. Let me, let me write myself a note so I don't forget. I've been meaning to do that. Need less pens. Get mission music for all right. I've made a note. If you want some god, some god intermission music, good intermission music, I can send you links to the music I have commissioned with commercial rights to. Yeah, do that. Do that. I want some good intermission music. Or I might just steal like the portal uh radio music. Do 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 Oh Silver Fluff. You sent yours. Alright, alright. We're gonna we're gonna listen to Silver's uh take of those lines that we were just listening to really quick. I know we're, we're super off track here, but we're gonna listen to Silver's. You don't want it, then why do you keep ordering it? Yes, you are, you... Sorry, you want hey, to cause the audio error? Effect. It means you're being difficult. It means you're being difficult. You've ordered an entire shipment's worth of product, but for no discernible reason. Oh, you plan to pour the acid on the meat cube. That makes sense now. Sorry. All right, so Silver, like I was talking about before, I'm assuming you're here for it. The biggest reason I wouldn't pick this is because your microphone, okay? Um, if if you're going to have, like, again, like, it's a big pet peeve of not only mine, but plenty of people, I'm sure. It, when you're, like, watching a show and somebody clearly had a worse microphone than everybody else, it's very distracting. And so um, in here, like, that, that, that's my biggest critique is if you want to do voice acting, get a nicer microphone. That's my, that's my biggest thing. But we'll listen to this one more time really quick here. If you don't want it, then why do you keep ordering it? So um, one of the big things is, is you'll see here, I've been doing this between uh, audiobooks that we've been doing, right? So I'll, I'll pull up this screen. Uh, there we go. So like between audiobooks, right? You know, here's like the actual script or whatever that we read. Uh, or here's the script, like we re read this. So if I went to read the script, I'd go, Tommy stood and rounded the desk. He sat on the edge next to his best friend. I know what your dad does to you. Jude said nothing. I know that he beats on you and that you spent the better part of your lives making or taking the heat so Henry wouldn't have to. I've known for a long time. See, so it's like, I'm trying to talk real and trying to talk subdued, but one of the things that's easy to fall into is talking too quiet or too subdued or especially if you're like living somewhere with other people, you might be like where you're like, oh, what if they like hear me through the walls? And so what it sounds like to me in your audition here is you're being yes, subdued. You are, you're being, you... you're sort of holding back. You're being a little bit quiet, right? 
And so what I'll often do to sort of get out of that is, you may have noticed in between books, when I'm reading the descriptions here, I'm making it comically big because that helps me make sure that I'm staying big. I'm not getting too small and subdued when we're actually reading stuff, right? So here I went, Hardy Boy meets Indiana Jones and in this thrilling new adventure novel after the death of his father, misfit and aspiring paleontologist Tommy Rhodes, right? But then if I go and actually narrate that, that just helps me sort of get out of my shell, right? Open up, not be too subdued or quiet or anything. And then I go to actually read that. I go, Hardy Boyd meets Indiana Jones in this thrilling new adventure novel. After the death of his father, misfit and aspiring paleontologist Jimmy Tommy Rhodes seeks refuge in the ramshackle lighthouse that stands guard over the city of Mammoth, Washington. Right? So I'm still big here. I'm putting all my energy into it. But by going big before actually doing your actual take, it helps you not be too small, too in, right? You want to be big. Sorry, you had a causality error? It means you're being difficult. Yeah. So that's the big thing I would say, Silver. You're being difficult. You've ordered an entire shipment's worth of product, but for no discernible reason. Oh, you plan to pour the acid on the meat cube. Yeah, so those are going to be my big, uh, my big critiques there. Uh, if you want to send this again to me later, I'm happy to critique it again, but that's going to be my big thing, is sort of try to get big so that it doesn't sound like you're trying not to alert the person in the next room, right? They don't exist. The only people that exist when you're recording is whoever is on the paper, right? So in this case, it's you talking to Tibbetts, um, and in this, it's, I don't know, it's Tommy, Lydia, Jones, or wherever I put the script again. So yeah, but it wasn't bad, Silver. Uh, the big thing is, um, if you if you really want to do this, I'd pick up a better microphone. Yeah, it doesn't even have to be like the top of the line microphone or anything like that. Just something that'll at least stack up next to somebody else who's submitting so that it doesn't sound out of place. And then just open up, be big. Be willing to put energy behind this stuff. Don't care about what the person in the next room thinks. Don't care if it's good. Like, that doesn't matter. When you're talking to people normally, I'm not sitting here thinking, oh, is my voice good enough? Oh, am I saying this correctly, right? Don't worry about any of that. Get that out of your head and just be the character. That's my advice. Oh, sweet. Puppy just sent, or uh, Gremlin just sent me a whole bunch of, a uh, whole bunch of music I can use for hold music later. All right, let's see. Oh, I, I, I might have messed up. I, I might have missed a bunch of this. Laughs in New York City apartment. Again, like people are going to hear you. You just got to not care. Cool. All right. Let's, uh, you're welcome, Silver. Happy to help. Uh, anytime. So let's go ahead and do an audiobook. Let's uh, earn my keep here as the guy critiquing other people's audio work. <laughs> All right. So um, this one's super long. Do we want to do a super long one? Did anybody in the chat have one specifically that they wanted me to do off of ACX here? Or are we going to go with Mammoth by Brian McBride? He didn't say like their accents or anything, right? Yeah, no, just American Washington. Washington's like my accent, so that's good. I don't have to worry about that. Dwarven sent something? Let's hear Dwarven's take. Am I critiquing? If you don't want it, then why do you keep ordering it? We were talking about not using v or, uh, audio effects in your auditions, Dwarven, but I'll, I'll let it slide this once. Sorry, you had a causality error. It means you're being difficult. You've <laughs> ordered an entire shipment's worth of product for no discernible reason. Oh, you plan to pour the acid on the meat cube. That makes sense now. I'm sorry. That was actually pretty good, Dwarven. I mean, if you, uh, <laughs> you know, didn't have to use a <laughs> vocalizer to get your voice if up you there. If you don't want it, then why do you keep ordering it? <coughs> sorry, you had a cousin. I think, I think, uh, if you actually want critique, Dwarven, that, that's actually very good. I really like a lot of the emotion that you do there. Um, one of the big things for you as well, though, is also, it sounds like you're trying to be quiet a lot of the time. So, you know, same thing. Just try to open up. Don't care about the person next to you. That's my one critique with it, but it's fun. It was fun. Uh, that reading made you smile. You made, you made Silver smile. Well done. All right. Ooh, The Great Influencer by Brett Wellman. <laughs> uh, oh, my gosh. Sales rank 2,534,000. That is, nobody has ever bought this book once. 
How far will you go to become a YouTube superstar? Forced with the ultimatum of getting a real job or his parents kicking him out of the house. Aspiring YouTuber Nick decides to move to California to chase his dreams. With his best friend Teddy joining the trip, it soon becomes apparent that their success is going to depend a lot more on dreams than hard work. Depend on a lot more than dreams and hard work. It's about who you know, and Nick knows he's going to have to humble himself before his YouTube famous cousin and her husband. Aw, oh, this sounds like a cringy book, guys. <laughs> this sounds really bad. Um, the only question is, because he juggled their drama and infidelity long enough to see some YouTube fame of his own, and will his conscience allow it? <laughs> ah! <clears throat> You can't use your full power um, when you're doing the girly voice. You have to do the girly voice even when you use the filter. That's fair enough. I heard you do Trogamir. Trog, Trog, Trog. The Legend of Trog, Trogam, Trogamir? Frick, I can't remember how to say the name. <laughs> but I heard you do that one. That was good. Um, ugh. Ugh. I don't know that I want to do the great influencer, guys. I don't know about that one. 65,400, no, 65,740 words about becoming a YouTuber. Torgamir, thank you. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Let's, let's, uh, let's, let's try another. Let's see. Go find daddy. That is, hmm, hmm, hmm. Bridge at Mission Springs. The trope the th thesaurus. Killing it with. What? Okay. Wait, wait, what? What? Killing it with what? Killing it with tropes. Oh, okay. Even a quick glass of popular books, movies, and streaming services says it all. A skillful application of tropes sells stories. Okay, so this is like a help book. That's not fun to listen to. I won't, I won't do that one for the stream. It's amazing how Twitch thinks unskippable 45 second ads before the stream, which is live and can't be rewinded, is a good idea. Yeah, that's crazy to me. I, I wish there was something I could do to, like, I if I run a mid-roll ad on Twitch, it'll, like, disable pre-roll ads for a little bit. Uh, but, like, that's all that I can really do to control it. Um, and, like, I can't turn off ads. If I'm, a, if I'm an affiliate on Twitch, which I am, there's no way for me to turn off ads, which I would, because I'm not making any money off of ads. So I would turn them off if I could, but... I'm sorry. Just to force you to subscribe. Yeah. Yeah, you know, subscribe on Twitch if you want to get rid of the ads. <coughs> or watch on YouTube. <coughs> hmm? What? Hmm? <laughs> All right. Um, the Order 25. The Order 25 fiction book. The Brook. This one's got a skull and crossbones. I think pirates are cool. Let's check it out. Uh, also, wait, how is its sales rank? 2,320,000. But it has 43 raising, ratings. That makes me think that it's actually selling. <gasps> it's because it released... How long ago is that now? Seven years ago. Uh, wow. They named the character Harry Boner. Really? 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 You're going to name your main character Harry Boner as the new mayor of campus... Uh, Compton's Pond. A small suburban town where he goes about his days officiating weddings and attempting to solve post-election issues. But one evening, after curiosity leads him to an, to open a locked file cabinet in his office. Why would he not have opened a locked file cabinet in his own office at, like, when getting the... Okay, whatever. Harry has no idea what he finds inside will forever change the lives of the people of his community. That's bad. I know it's Bonner. I know it's Bonner. I know, I know, I know it's Bonner. I'm not dumb, but come on. That guy went to school. Harry Bonner went to school and everybody went Harry Boner on the playground. They all made fun of him for being called Harry Boner. I, nobody once ever called him Harry Bonner all growing up their school. I guarantee it. So why should I call him Bonner now? <laughs> Reese's Puffs, Reese's Puffs. <clears throat> you may be dumb, but I'm, at least I'm not smart. <laughs> that, was a, that was a meme he sent earlier. I really liked it. All right, we're not doing we're not doing that one. That one nobody will ever listen to that one. Oh, okay, we're doing this one. I don't care if it's dumb. We're doing this one. One hundred and one or one hundred, one thousand and one fun facts about countries. Facts everyone should know. We're doing this one. All right, looking for a fun and fancy, fascinating way to learn about countries around the world? Look no further than one thousand and one fun facts about countries. This book is packed with interesting tidbits about trivia about countries about 
Across every continent, these include famous landmarks and cultural customs to fun facts about the geography, history, and people of each nation. Whether you're a seasoned traveler, geography buff, or simply a curious about the world around you, 1001 Fun Ways About... Fun Facts About Countries is the perfect guide to explaining your knowledge and discovering the unique and fascinating aspects of countries all around the globe. Grab a copy, sit back, and learn something new. All right. <clears throat> We're doing this one because it'll be really easy to audition for, and they actually pay money. It's not like a royalty share, so I'm guaranteed to not waste my time entirely doing this. So, um... We're going to download this because I hate trying to read it off of this tiny screen here. Ba -ba -bum. And let me pull up my thing that I had. Uh, Got to rename it. They didn't name it the name of their book. 1001 Fun Facts. That's close enough. I named it 10,001, but that's fine. Um... You remember poor Mrs. Balls? I don't remember Mrs. Balls. Jeez. Fourth grade was ruthless. Yeah, I can imagine that wasn't so good. Will they pay me an ETH? I'd accept it. I, I'd, I'd do an audiobook for ETH. Cute wallpaper. Cute Mark Crusader. It's not that, actually. It's, uh... How do I... That's not showing the desktop again. Maybe if I... There we go. See, it's, a. Uh, it's, um... I don't know. It's just somebody's random character. But I like it. They always draw him in this space suit with the cracked helmet. Very cute. Got a banjo. <laughs> um, thousand and one fun facts. Sorry, I'm pulling it up here. It's just a lot easier to read it if I put it into my Google Drive and then use it like that. All right, okay, here we go. This is the audition. Egypt is the northeast of Africa. Out of more than 130 pyramids that have been discovered, the Great Pyramid of Giza is one of the seven wonders of the world and the only one still standing today. All right, this will be easy. This will be super easy. This is an easy one. Guys, go to ACX. I can send the, I can send the link in chat again. Find a book that, look, that has a cover that you think would be fun to listen to. Okay, I'm sending it in chat again. Here's the link. Go here. You won't be able to read the books unless you have an account, but don't bother. Judge the book by its cover. Just make sure that it's English, that it's a male voice, and that it's not erotica. All right, uh, Gremlin, redeem squats. we got to do some squats. One, two for you, Gremlin. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, just for you, Gremlin. I hope you I hope you enjoy keeping me fit and getting me out of breath right before I'm trying to read about fun facts about countries. All right. I am out of breath now. <sighs> okay. Number one, Egypt is in the northeast of Africa. Out of more than 130 pyramids that have been discovered, the Great Pyramid of Giza is one of the seven world one... <sighs> I'm out of breath from the squats. You did this to me, gremlin. <sighs> I need to be able to have my breath so I can sustain speech here. <sighs> Just breathing. I hope you're happy. I hope that was worth the 1,500 channel points. <laughs> Number one. Egypt is the northeast of Africa. No, in the... Number one. Egypt is in the northeast of Africa. Out of more than 130 pyramids that have been discovered, the Great Pyramid of Giza is one of the seven wonders of the world and the only one still standing today. Number two. The Egyptian civilization... J Number two, the Egyptian civilization dates back more than 5,000 years, making one of the oldest in the world. Number three, the Nile River, which flows through Egypt, is the longest river in the world at over 6,600 kilometers, 4,100 miles, and has been a vital resource for the country's agriculture and transportation for thousands of years. Number four, the ancient Egyptians are known for their impressive architecture, including the Sphinx, temples, and elaborate tombs like those found in the Valley of the Kings. Number five, 
The Egyptian hieroglyphic writing system is one of the oldest in the world and was used for over 3,000 years. Number six. In ancient Egyptian, cats were not kept as pets, but were considered sacred. Having a cat purring in the house was believed to bring good luck. However, cats were not only animals considered lucky. However, cats were not the only animals considered lucky. Number seven. While women in the modern era have only recently gained rights to property, and the world has only started seeing women doctors and business mongols in the 19th century. Moguls, not mongols. <laughs> I call them mongols. Laughs like the gremlin you are. You are a gremlin. Number seven. While women in the modern era have only recently gained rights to property, and the world has only started seeing women doctors and business moguls in the 19th century. <laughs> Number seven. While women in the modern era have only recently gained rights to property, and the world has only started seeing women doctors and business moguls. Number seven. While women in the modern era have only recently gained rights to property, and the world has only started seeing women doctors and business moguls in the 19th century, Egyptian women could own property, conduct businesses. Egyptian women could own property, conduct business, business, it should be businesses, right? Egyptian women could own property, conduct business, practice medicine, and even become priestesses. Number eight, Egyptian cuisine include, number eight, Egyptian cuisine includes many dishes made with beet, Number eight, Egyptian cuisine includes many dishes made with beans, lentils, and vegetables, as well as popular street foods like koshari and falafel. That, that caught me off guard. I don't know what koshari is. Number eight, Egyptian cuisine includes many dishes made with beans, lentils, and vegetables, as well as popular street foods like koshari and, as well as popular street foods like koshari and falafel. Number nine, the Egyptian museum in Ka Cairo, right? It's Cairo? Am I saying that right? Egyptian Museum in Cairo? Number nine. The Egyptian Museum in Cairo is home to the largest collection of ancient Egyptian artifacts in the world, including the treasures of Tutankhamun. Hey, Cheese! Tubish should replace Double D as the narrator of my dreams. <laughs> I gotta look up how to say Tutankhamen. Tutankhamen Pro Pronunciation. I gotta make sure I say that right. It's important in auditions to say words right. Why? Why does nobody just have it written out? Tutankhamen. 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 I'm just gonna say Tutankhamen because Tutankhamen sounds wrong to me. Number nine, the Egyptian Museum in Cairo is home to the largest collection of ancient Egyptian artifacts in the world, including the treasures of Kut including the treasures of Tutankhamun. Number ten, the Sphinx has a human head and the body of a lion and is believed to represent the Egyptian god Horus. Okay, book done. We'll just uh, save that and export it as a WAV. That took longer than it should have. All right, Dwarven sent us a book. Let's take a look here. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. You looked at this for all of seven seconds before sending it. Um, it has positive reviews. Well, that's that's promising. Is that? Hold on. Um, ba -ba -ba. We need to keep that one up. We haven't done Mammoth. Okay, so you sent two. You sent two. Are these different ones? I'm assuming these are different ones. Common is probably fine. I'm hoping it's fine. Oh, all right. So uh, Dwarven sent Mr. Grump, a boss. <laughs> a boss hole, Grump, Sunshine, Billionaire Romance. Billionaire boss holes, book one. I've never heard the term boss hole. That sounds so stupid. 
Are you sure this isn't an erotic book? Look at the cover. This guy doesn't have a shirt. It seems like an erotic book. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, this two full chap. That's two full chapters. What the heck? <laughs> so they included twelve pages, two full chapters, and want you to submit five to ten minutes of narration. I'm not doing this one, Dwarven. I'm not doing this one. <laughs> Centuries Witness, The Extraordinary Life of Journalist Wallace Carroll. 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 Carroll? Hmm. With Chris Prose. Pros. Pros. Fine research and clear moral purpose. Mary McNeil shines a light on Wallace Carroll and in doing so powerfully illuminates the current troubles of journalism. Okay. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Da -da 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 -da. So it's about, it's just about a guy. Oh, 31 hours of work. Oh, oh, that is, that is very long. That is very long. That'd be a good gig. But that is a lot of work. Let's check it out. Uh, da, da, da. Um, it looks like they just sent the text twice. Yeah, they just sent the text twice. So we'll, we'll try this one out. We'll do this one. This would be a good gig, actually. Uh, we'll throw it on the end of this one again. Okay. <laughs> Bring this back over. Hello, hello. I know that you don't hear this microphone, but... I forgot the name of the book already. Uh, no, it's it's here. Centuries Witness. Okay. Okay, here we go. All right, that's working. I hope the clicker isn't annoying for you guys, but it's really helpful for me with editing, so I got to use it. On October 15th, Carroll and the four foreign correspondents were summoned to the U.S. Embassy by his old friend Tommy Thompson, who was then second secretary at the embassy, and told the Soviet Foreign Office was moving to... Co co <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know that word. <laughs> I don't know that word. Kubiev, pronoun, pro, noun, C A. I can spell. I swear. I can't spell. I can't spell for crap. How do I pronounce it? Kubyshev. That sounds terrible. We're gonna find a different pronunciation. I have no idea how to say this word. Kubyshev. 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 Okay, we can do that. Kuibashev. On October 15th, Carol and the other foreign correspondents were summoned to the U.S. Embassy by his old friend Tommy Thompson, who was then second secretary at the embassy, and told the Soviet Foreign Office was moving to Kub... I already forgot. Kuibashev. Who was then second secretary at the embassy, and told the foreign office... Who was then second second? Who was then second second? Who was then second secretary at the U? Oh my word! Oh my word! Who was then second secretary at the embassy and told the Soviet Foreign Office was moving to Kubyshev? Kubyshev. Moving to Kubyshev. Who was then second secretary at the embassy and told the Soviet Foreign Office was moving to Kubyshev? A forlorn port 650 miles away on the Volga River. A forlorn port 650 miles away on the Volga River. 
Stalin would remain, as would all other government departments, and Moscow would be defended street by street if necessary. But the diplomatic corps, but the diplomatic corps and journalists would move by Kubyshev. Kubyshev. But the diplomatic corps and journalists would move by Kubyshev. Thompson, however, would remain in charge of the embassy and stay in Moscow no matter what happened. Carol, remembering their close friendship in Geneva, Geneva. Carol, remembering their close friendship in Geneva, shared a quick drink with his former roommate. Carol, remembering their Carol, remembering their close friendship in Geneva, shared a quick drink with his former roommate, wishing him the best for wishing him the best before departing. Carol rushed back to Shapiro's apartment and packed his bags. Embassy cars arrived to take him and Shapiro to the railway station. Embassy cars arrived to take him and Shapiro to the railway station. Tension in the city had increased. Tension in the city had increased, with pedestrians swarming the streets, as buses and taxis were commandeered to carry troops. By that time, it was dark outside, recalled Carol, and there was a heavy snowfall coming down. It was blacked out, but there was an anti- it was blacked out, but there was anti-aircraft fire that shot big star shells which made enough light so that the snow could be seen falling down. Carol was assigned a car with an embassy officer, Charlie Thayer. They drove around the corner and onto the B Circle, a wide avenue leading to the station. The following description, in his own words, describes his harrowing escape. Careening around the corner, we almost hit a woman carrying a little baby in a blue basket. As we started down the wide avenue, the other way we saw trucks loaded with munitions for the front, some troops, and then came a contingent of troops marching and carrying their rifles and bayonets. The dimmers were on the trucks with blue filters over the headlights, so everything shone blue. Blue lights picked up the bayonets of these troops marking to the Blue lights picked up the bayonets of these troops marching to the front. Okay. Cool. I'm uh I'm going to give this a little bit of uh We got to be quiet just so I can remove the noise after. Okay, that's long enough. All right. I hope I get that one, Dwarven. That would be a ton of work. It'd be very good. All right. Centuries witness. We'll, we'll hold on to that one. Oh, no, there's a cat at my window. It's going to start meowing. I don't need meows in the back of these auditions. How many have we done? Hold on. I've got I've to check how many we've done. Uh, we've got five. We've only done five? We've been live for two and a half hours, and we've only done five? Okay, we've got to step it up. Actually, five's roughly on track with what I wanted. We're doing okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're doing okay, but we got to step it up. we got to do more books. More books, more faster. Okay. Uh, All right. We got another link from Dwarven over here. Let's see what you got. Um. How Expert Guide to Columbus, Ohio. 101 tips to learn about the history and culture, tourist attractions, entertainment, food, scene, and events in Columbus, Ohio. <gasps> I'll bet this is pretty dry. Audition for How to Experts Guide to Hawaii. Learn tips about the history, culture, and the food scene. Blah, 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 blah. All right, we'll, we'll open this up. We'll take a look. We'll take a quick look. I'm, I'm opening it. Can you just... Come on. No Amazon reviews. Do people buy books like this? I feel like people don't buy books like this, you know? 
Like, why would I buy a book on Expert Guide to Columbus, Ohio? It, 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 Columbus, Ohio? Do people go to Columbus, Ohio? What is in Columbus, Ohio? I don't, I don't know. We got to liven this up, though. After I swallow this apple, of course. Okay. Sorry, I got uh, something in my tooth there. It was going to drive me crazy. All right. You really want me to do this one, Dorvin? This seems very dry. I mean, I'll do it. I'll do it for you, buddy. But um, it reads very dry. <laughs> we could try to spice it up. You know, just do it maybe a little over the top, more than the, what they'd probably actually want, you know? Maybe we'll just do that. And they can be like, why did they submit an audition like this? This is silly. And I'll be like, ah, you don't, you don't know what you're talking about. We're drinking slave. Just for you, gremlin. Here, oh, we'll, we'll, go, the, we'll go the full size. There you go, Gremlin. Thank you for dreaming hydrate so that I don't die of dehydration. Very kind of you. <laughs> All right. All right, so Columbus, Ohio. We're going to maybe do it a little bit over the top. If you want to learn about the history and culture, tourist attractions, entertainment, food scene, and events in Columbus, Ohio, then check out the How Expert Guide to Columbus, Ohio. Are you looking for a new city to add to your travel bucket list? Make it Columbus, Ohio, the city that has recently emerged as a hub for business, art, and innovation. With a range of things to do, an impressive culinary scene, and one of the top universities in the country. And one of the top universities in the country, Columbus is... And one of the top universities in the country, Columbus is constantly on the... Constantly on the come up. And one of the top universities in the country, Columbus is constantly on the come up. And you won't want to miss... This is weird. And one of the top universities in the country, Columbus is constantly on the come up. And you won't want to miss out on witnessing capital of the buck... Witnessing the cap... I hate this! And one of the top universities in the country, Columbus is constantly on the come up. And you won't want to miss out on witnessing the capital of the Buckeye State continue to flourish. If you're all ready to plan, if you're ready to plan your Columbus getaway, look no further than this guide. In How Expert Guide to Columbus, Ohio, you will learn how to experience Columbus like a local by driving into each of the city's distinctive neighborhoods, navigate the city and understand its history as the state's capital. Make the most out of your visit to Columbus's top attractions while embracing the spirit of discovery that they embody. Personalize your trip by finding hidden gems that cater to your interests. Fit in with the Buckeye crowd on game day and search for the best sporting events and concerts in the city. End your night or start your morning at the best restaurants, breweries, or cafe. End your night or start your morning at the best restaurants, breweries, and coffee shops in Columbus. Plan your trip around the annual events that most interest you. Discover places outside of Columbus to add to your itinerary. Discover places outside of Columbus to add to your itinerary. Itinerary or t itinerary? Suppose itinerary. Discover places outside of Columbus to add to your itinerary. In short, everything you could want to know about traveling to Columbus, Ohio is included in this comp. In short, Everything you could want to know about traveling to Columbus, Ohio is included in this short, everything you could... I, I missed a line there. In short, everything you could want to know about traveling to Columbus, Ohio is included in this comprehensive guide. Use it to plan the perfect solo adventure, couples retreat, or family vacation. Check out how, how expert... 
Check out How Expert Guide to learn about the history and culture, tourist attractions, entertainment, food scene, and events in Columbus, Ohio. Do you think they really want me to read the about the author? Do we care about the author? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jeez, you can't ban a word in the middle of an audio book. I have to be able to say that word to read this. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That is so funny. <laughs> Cheese has banned the word O-H-I-O. Well, I am trying to record. <laughs> All right. In that case, we're done with the audition. Well done, Cheese. We're not reading about the author. Sorry, author. We don't get to know about you. <laughs> we will submit a partial audition because of you, Cheese. If I can't say that word. <laughs> what? You don't want to hear about the most interesting tourist attraction on the face of the planet? I will have you know that Ohio has not. I'm sorry I said the word. I, I messed up. I will have you know that that state that contains Columbus, the capital of that state, I think is the capital, the Buckeye State, has sports, um, food, and streets in it. It is the best state to go to. The Buckeye State. Columbus, that place that you banned. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe you hate Meg Meghan. Wait, who spells their name Meghan? Meghan Tarney? That's silly. Meghan Tarney is a writer from Columbus Buckeyes State Land. In 2021, she graduated from the that word State University, where she studied English, creative writing, and history, and she currently works as an administrative assistant at the Ohio State University Press. She also loves to travel, and although she experiences constant wanderlust. She has a soft spot for her hometown of Columbus and aims to continue exploring as much of the city as possible. Outside of... Did I say the word? I don't think I did. <laughs> That's how you spell it? No. Megan is M-E-G-A-N. Megan. It's not Meghan. Meghan? Who's... Why Meghan? That's silly. All right, whatever. We did the, the forbidden word. Thanks for that. Dwarven has another book for us. Let's take a look. Can't believe you. Nothing sounds more fun than corporate buildings and colleges. Yeah, Gremlin, I don't know who's going to Columbus cheese, but <laughs> uh, it's, it's silly. It's silly. But we record an audition, and I'll bet you they don't get a whole lot for Ohio land. Er, God, I said the word. I'm sorry, cheese. It's hard to talk about the state without saying the state's name. The secret science of games. Yo, we gotta be gamers! Let's be gamers, okay. Maybe a better option? What could be better than being a gamer? Dwarven, what could be better than being a gamer? Uh, Donovan says, wants to talk about how good that state is when moments prior saying it's... What? <laughs> and what's good about that state? I don't want to hear it, Donovan! That state is the best state. It's my favorite state. I didn't think very highly of Columbus, that, that, that location. However, after reading How Expert Guide to That State, Columbus, 101 plus tips to learn about the history and culture, tourist attractions, entertainment, food scenes, and events in Columbus, that state, I learned that it was the best state. The Buckeye State, as I have learned after reading this amazing book. And I cannot, I will not hear slander in my chat. Somebody ban him. <laughs> um... Uh, let's see, let's see your other option here, Dwarven, but I don't know, I don't know how you could pos- whoops. I don't know how you could possibly top Gamer. Oh, it's not letting me- okay, whatever. Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it, okay. I got it! Be patient. So we've got uh, The Secret Science of Games, and we've got When the Tourists Leave, a true story of adventure and ad adversary. Adversity. I don't know why I, I had such a hard time with that. Why did I have such a hard time saying adversity? That... I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the audiobooks guy, and I can't even talk. Okay. 
Games are an art, not a science. You can prove it with science. Yeah. No, 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 no. Clearly, th clearly there's, there's a secret science in games. You just don't know about it, Dwarven. The secret science of games is an accessible and entertaining guide to the hidden role of science in making games more fun. Yay. User experience, UX, research is the vital part of the story of how video games have become a culture or drug or not, but game developers generally don't speak publicly about how data shapes game design and game development. This book is a friendly and practical tour of games research by someone who's done the work, including Ruby Hunter. I'm sorry, I can't do this one, Dwarven! <laughs> If Dwarven knew it, would it be a secret? Exactly. They know things you don't, Dwarven. God, that was a very boring description. Not this one, though. This book, this book here, when the tourists leave, this book has it all. Romance. Mystery. Intrigue. Enterprise. Jonathan and Megan meet on an online dating site. Little did they know what fate had in store for them. The adventure would take them on the other side of the world as they dropped everything, left their careers, and opened a hotel in the former Eastern Bloc nation of Croatia. Over five months in 2016, they transformed an old commu communist meeting house into one of Croatia's most beautiful boutique coastal hotels, only to have it stolen away through a series of unbelievable accidents. Events, I mean. You will laugh with them. You will cry with them. Cheer for them. Get angry with those who wronged them. Most of all, you'll be inspired by their perspective and love story that endures the harshest adversi adversity. I don't know why I keep saying adversary. When the tourists leave is an all too true story of what happened to two people who did what so many others fear to do. Break free. Just like Queen said. Take a chance. Chase a, chase a dream. A page turner. You won't want to put it down until you find out what happened. This is a winner of a book. We're reading this one by Jonathan Riff and Megan Riff. Yo, the Riff siblings, they know what's up. Or maybe they're married. I don't know. Uh, there's no notes from the right shoulder. Okay. Well, oh, sweet. I love it when they send PD. This is so, oh my gosh. This is so long. Why? Why is it so long? <laughs> to be clear, I don't have like a problem narrating like a really long book or whatever. My, my issue comes when this is, I am doing an audition, right? I don't know if this is completely wasted energy. Any thought that I put into doing voices well or delivering lines in a fun way or anything like that, I don't know if it's completely wasted because it's just an audition. And so when they send you an audition that is five pages long, it's it's just like, I don't want to waste five pages of my life, you know? I, I Make your audition one page or maybe two. Like, seriously, holy crap. Why? All books are page turners as opposed to what, a scroll? I only read off of scrolls. You read books? Dude, I only read page turners when it comes to books. Otherwise, it's on a scroll. <clears throat> Alrighty, we're getting ready to go here. Hi, right. we're getting ready to go here. Prologue. Prologue. In November of 2017, my husband was hit with warm watermelon juice. <laughs> what? In November of 2017, my husband was hit with warm watermelon juice. Read the Torah? How long's the Torah? How long's the Torah? I bet that's long. Be really funny if a modern book had a special edition released on a scroll. I'd buy that. The best audio scroll of them all. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Dude, there's got to be an audiobook of the Torah already. P prologue. In November of 2017, my husband was hit with one watermelon juice. Hundred and twenty six feet. Dude. Yikes, that'd be too much. Too much scroll. Alright. Um I already forgot the name of the book again. When tourists leave. Okay. Here we go.
All right, it's working. Here we go, prologue. Actually, my spacing is okay. Prologue. In November of 2017, my husband was hit with warm watermelon juice. He was standing waist deep in the plunge pool attached to our room when he got covered with the stuff. It arrived fast and hard, leaving his torso dotted with tiny red chunks and his skin blushed. Megan is my name, and I remember watching a Little Pink Rivers. <coughs> Megan is my name, and I remember watching Little Pink Rivers rolled south. That is. There. Megan is my name, and I remember watching Little Pink Rivers rolled. Watching as. Why do I keep doing that? Ah! Megan is my name, and I remember watching as Little Pink Rivers rolled south into water while he stood there in silent shock. I'd never gotten sick on Jonathan before. Never been sick on anyone. You might not expect to read that kind of thing on the first page of a book. After all, this is a story about a couple Americans who opened a boutique hotel in an old Communist Party meeting house in Eastern Europe. Right? Right. But the moment I'm talking about is important. Our lives changed for... Our lives changed forever that day, when my world, our world, flipped. Megan and Jonathan Rift. Rift. Megan and Jonathan Riff. You know what? I don't think I'm supposed to read that. Oh, I, I see. I see. That break is weird. Okay. Our lives changed forever that day, when my world, our world, flipped upside down and never flipped back. This story is about what led to that moment and what we did afterwards. Jonathan and I were on our honeymoon in Phuket, Thailand. F hey, Gremlin, how do I say that? P-H-U-K-E-T. I feel like you might know. Because I think it sounds suspiciously close to F it. <laughs> And I can't highlight it. How do I say it, Gremlin? Are you still there? I need to know. How do I say it? We are looking at... Oh my gosh, I hate it. Okay. Uh... Phuket? You don't know, but... <laughs> Uh, how do I say it? How do I say it? I gotta know. Oh my gosh. I, I want to know how to pronounce a word and it's giving me this crap. I hate this. Oh my gosh. Just tell me how to... Phuket. Okay, Phuket. We'll call it Phuket. <laughs> Happy enough! It is Thai, so it's going to be fuck it. Uh, I'll go Phuket, and they can correct me if they hire me. Jonathan and I were on our honeymoon in Phuket, Thailand. In Phuket, Thailand. In Phuket, Thailand. No one would want to want their trip to be the... No one would want their trip to be the only... To be one... What? No one would want their trip to be one they'd remember for the wrong reasons. But we got some bad news. We knew it was a possibility that we would get the bad news and had braced ourselves for it. We knew it was a possibility that we would get that news and had braced ourselves for it. Then it became real. Please don't think I'm exaggerating. I would have done a lot to avoid getting sick on my husband of only six weeks. But that's what happened when we got the news. In half a second... My vision smudged, and my brain lost its way. My psychological response was to hit a... My psychological response was to hit eject. Think about working harder than you ever have for something. For longer than you thought you ever could. Think about giving it every inch of your mind. Every ounce of your energy. Imagine leaving your home for it. Changing your career for it. Saying goodbye to your friends and family and colleagues and country for it. Imagine being unable to sleep over it, cry over it, feel like you're losing your mind over it. Understand how it could become an obs Understand how it could become an obsession. How the longer it went on, 
the harder it was to quit. How the tougher it became, the more I needed to fight. And you do fight. You don't quit. You do start to get there. You do start to win. It'll leave you broken, crazy, and exhausted. But you know you're doing a good thing. That people love what you're achieving. You reach a point where it all feels worth the risk and the time and the upheaval. You reach a point where it... You reach a point where it all feels worth the risk and the time and the upheaval. You start to feel it's been worth all the sweat and tears and heart and soul and DNA you buried right into it. It gets in... It gets to an incredible point where you can call it a success. No question. And then, just when your dream becomes reality, you learn what you thought you knew was never true. In the blink of an eye, that dream can be snatched away in circumstances so cloudy you want to scream your lungs out. That's how I felt then. How it feels right now. And how it felt the day my light lunch hit my husband. Our dream was brought to life for the greatest of reasons. And in the end, killed off for no good reason at all. As it died, we were evicted from our home in a foreign country. With a newborn baby and a dog, thousands of miles away from our family and friends. We were left with nothing. So how did it happen? A good question. We want to tell you about the creation of our little Croatian hotel. We want to tell you about the village that surrounded it, and the people who came into our lives in three years. We want to tell you about the village that surrounded it, and the people who came into our lives in the three years we lived there. We want to tell you how we responded to the way we were treated. To this day, it still gives us and many of the locals a reason to smile. Jonathan and I fell in love, and not long after, we fell in love with Croatia. We took the plunge, grabbed our dog Sailor, left California, and traveled 6,000 miles to live and work in the eastern... and traveled 6,000 miles to live and work in the country in Eastern Europe. We just turned 30 and left the States to breathe new life into a rundown old building halfway across the world. Our aim had been to create a beautiful boutique hotel from what was left of an old communist meeting house in the tiny village of Zaton. We had our challenges from the day we arrived. We were used to the sun, and in our new home, we found we were so cold we could watch our own breath when we laid in bed. We were design professionals, but found ourselves working with a construction crew who drank more during working hours than we could believe. Since we only spoke English, since we only spoke English, we struggled to navigate conversations with people in a language that had seven different tenses. On our journey, I'm going to do that line differently. This book is describing you, the exact scenario of you, the narrator. Yes. Um, since we only spoke English, we struggled to navigate conversations with people in a language that had seven different tenses. On our journey, we encountered Balkan landmines, faced officials who only worked for bribes, on our journey, we encountered Balkan land, Balk, Balkan. On our journey, we encountered Balkan landmines, faced officials who on, faced officials who only worked for bribes, and were caught up in a huge criminal investigation that we, and were caught up in a huge criminal investigation that would see an entire squad of undercover police take up residence in our hotel. We learned how to explain to family, and amazingly enough, how to explain to family that amazingly enough, living in the we learned how to explain to family that amazingly enough, living through those events actually contributed to our greatest days in the most beautiful place on earth. Yet, we found out how it felt when betrayed, yet, we found out how it felt when betrayal emptied your heart, when people you knew emptied your bank account. As our world turned upside down, it felt like nothing would ever go our way again. Then our little boy arrived and changed everything. He came along just as we had started to forget ourselves, as we were struggling to see the beauty right in front of our eyes. We called him Roku. <laughs> Roku. We called him Roko. Roko? Yeah, sure. We called him Roko. We called him Roko. After a saint greatly loved in Croatia, especially Zaton. No matter what was wrong in every other part of our lives, Roko reminded us every day that everything we did was for love. Because this crazy Croatian story of ours is our family's love story. We dedicated it. 
Because this crazy Croatian story of ours is our family's love story, we dedicate it to him. For Roko. Okay, that one's finally done. That was way too long. <laughs> it was a very long one. We lost like half the viewers on that. Nobody wanted to watch us talk about Roko. All right, we got to give it some silence so I can remove audio later. All right, good enough. Too bad I had seven different tenses performing that last line. Sometimes that's how it goes. Like, you'll just get really caught up on a line. I, I have gotten caught up on lines that shouldn't have tripped me up at all, like, just for no reason. My, my tongue will just get tied on it, and you can't get past it. It's very frustrating, and sometimes it just happens. And, you know, you just got to get through it. It was an actual book, though. Yeah, I know. They had me read, like, the whole, I guess, foreword is probably what this was. Uh, yeah, the prologue. Ugh. Yeah, that was, that was long. That was too long. If they don't hire me for this book, I'm going to file a complaint. <laughs> going to have a bite of apple. Oh, you meant the writing quality, not the length. That's fair. It was actually written good. It was it was not not even like okay, like it was actually pretty well written. That was That was great. I've got I have a um I have a chipped molar and so food get caught in it. Food gets caught in it. So anytime I eat anything that's stringy at all, I have to it'll get caught in there. Anyway, that's why I'm sitting here with a toothpick. Um Oh, yeah, that was actually a book. I can't believe it. They actually did a book. Crazy. All right, I think that brings us to six books so far. <laughs> Can I say Ohio now, cheese? <laughs> um, with Ohio, we have seven books. Hey, that's pretty good. The goal was at least eight, so we've got to do at least one more. Um, okay. Fine. Thanks, Cheese. I appreciate it. Mwah. I want to do something that's like an actual, uh, something more fantastical. You know, I want to like do a character or something. I want to do a character. <laughs> Dark Knight. The Fallen One. The Profec. <laughs> hmm. Mage's Maze, a dragon mage story. Ooh, that's got to be good, right? Let's see. It's uh, it's actually kind of selling a little bit, so that's that's a good sign. When Karen Paul Palandino, a mild mannered accountant, started her work week with a simple carpool. Okay, if the main character is female, why do they want a male narrator? Okay, simple carpool. I might expect to turn towards the absurd when sometimes just plain weird. Okay, thrust blindly into a world of magic she can't believe or comprehend. Karen is a rocketed and whirlwind journey. This it, this sounds... <laughs> Do you think if you mounted your index base stations upside down, they would still work properly? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they can work at whatever angle, I think. I don't think it matters. Um, yeah, I mean, like, so long as they're above you, they need to be above you. Like, so long as you're not saying upside down is in, like, on the floor. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't think it matters what angle they're at. You've been sitting here for three hours wondering when the April Fools would appear. <laughs> yeah, I know. I did no April Fools joke. I um, I just decided I wanted to audition for some audiobooks, and it happened to fall on April Fools. So here we are. Ha! <sighs> this 
when the evil white hand of Salazar learns of John Hardin's new friend and what she could do. She will stop at nothing to capture her and the door. This, uh, this story has something for everyone. Magic, gods, dragons, vampires, Arthurian legends, and odd occasional con... And the odd occasional centaur sex joke. Littered with action, sarcasm, bad jokes, and your mother's magic fantasy. I skipped a line. This story... No, did I? Screw it. This sounds terrible. I want a decent book. This April will all the fools... The real fool is that I keep reading, like, travel guides instead of doing, like, character voices. Hmm. Why is there four versions of this book? Oh, they, they uploaded four volumes. Are they going to get a different narrator per book? And it's royalty share, and it's kind of selling. Oh, it's very old. Seven-year-old book. The Haunted. True stories for the ghost lover's soul. A Haunted History Series Book One. A true haunted past. I want to tell you a story about a place called the Devil's Furnace. A place that dates its beginnings in prehistoric times, where indigenous people once lived and haunted. Yeah, haunted. A place that's known massive bloodshed. This bloodshed has stained the soil of the landscape and created a portal to another world. It's a world where the souls of the deceased enter and exit at will. Read about the stringy-haired ghost woman. She still roams the streets of the southern town. Find out where the ghost sightings are regular occurrence in the haunted buildings and homes. Explore the history of the city known as the cradle of rock and roll. Elvis Presley's birthplace. <laughs> There's only so much a dwarf can do. Like two-thirds of this audition list is smut for sad Serbian mother. <laughs> It is, though! The site has so much erotica. It really, really does. Like, I have it turned off and filled... Like, I don't even do the, the romance books because those are all just erotica with a different tag. It's terrible. <laughs> uh, how's my Prime Numbers stuff going? Oh, I've still got to do the, the Smasher Pass for Prime Numbers. Um, I've got to do that at some point. I just... I decided probably not going to do a whole bunch of 24-hour streams, so I've just got to decide how I'm going to do that. I'm still probably going to do one 24-hour stream because it fits the format. But I realized that trying to do 24-hour streams was kind of a dumb idea. It was going to be trying to... It was trying to be interesting for too long. You know, I was just going to become tired and it was just going to run out of content to do. You know, like, I mean, we've been going for three hours and I'm sure that anybody that's been here for the full three hours, they might be thinking this is getting stale by now, even though I'm having a good time. But uh, 24 hours, I don't know. I just fell off the fell off the wagon of wanting to do that. All right. Sorry, my nose is kind of itching. My beard's at a weird length. Um, I need to trim it because what happens is my mustache, It um, if it's longer than this, it's fine. If it's shorter than this, it's fine. But right at this length, it starts to tickle my nose and I just it, gah, can't stop. Can't stop. Gah, I hate it. I just need to trim it. All right. Well, uh, let's take a look at this audition. It might be okay. Welcome to the Devil's Furnace. Tup Tupelo? Tup Tuplo? Why am I doing audiobooks, guys? I can't pronounce words. I don't know what that word is. T-U-P-E-L-O? Tupelo? Tuplo? Uh, Tupelo, Mississippi has long been known as Ghost Lover's Paradise, nicknamed the Devil's Furnace by the many Union soldiers who were captured and made prisoners of war. The city earned the name due to the hot, scorching temperatures notorious for summer in the South. All right, we'll do this one. I want to do it. I want to do a spooky book. I want to do a scary book. All right, we're doing scary book. Welcome to the Devil's Furnace. Nah, I can, I can do better than that. Welcome to the Devil's Furnace. Tupelo, 
Mississippi. I, I, you know, I've got to at least get the first word right in this thing. You know, I've got. I, I should look up how to say that word. Blah blah blah. I just want it written out. Why do they all got to be like YouTube videos and crap? Just... Tupelo. Tupelo. I don't believe you. Tupelo. Tupelo. Tupelo? I don't know. Tupelo? Tupelo. We'll call it Tupelo. Why not? That's what the internet said. All right. Testing. All right. Ah, I lost it. Welcome to the Devil's Furnace. Tupelo. Tupelo, Mississippi has long been known as a ghost lover's paradise. Nicknamed the Devil's Furnace by the many Union soldiers who were captured and made prisoners of war, the city earned the name due to the hot, scorching. The city earned the name due to the hot. The city earned the name due to the hot, scorching temperatures notorious for summer in the South. The city with an approximate popula. The city with an approximate population of 35,000 was once home to indigenous peoples. They lived in the area for thousands of years before the Europeans ever stepped foot in the north. They lived in the area for thousands of years before any Europeans ever stepped foot in north. Oh, wh why is that a new line? They lived in the area for thousands of years before any Europeans ever stepped foot in north Nithis. They lived in the area for thousands of years before any Europeans ever stepped foot in North Mississippi. The Native Americans were a mo Misogian? Muskogian? Muskogian? Hi, Nick. Hi, Irish. How's it going? We're, uh, I'm, I, I chose a book, and it's got a bunch of words I don't know how to say. Chick, cho, choke, chokta, choke, chokata? Oh my gosh, I don't know how to say any of these words. Screw it, we're not doing spooky book. I can't say any of these words, and I don't want to stop just to figure out how to say each freaking word. Um... You gotta use a pen like ne next time you're recording. You just get mentally frustrated. <laughs> yeah, this is really not. It's not a pen. It's just like a. It's like a dog training clicker. So you click it, it makes a click noise, and it's super, super useful to mark where you made mistakes. Um, yeah. God, I can't say any of those words. We're not doing it. Uh, we've we've uh, Irish. We've done seven books so far. We have uh, done the auditions for, but we're trying to do at least eight today. Um, we're trying to find one that's kind of fun because we did like some travel stuff and, you know, it's, it's very dry. Travel stuff's lame. Good practice reading while you read. I can't, I don't know how to say like a bunch of Native American tribe names. C-H-O-C-T-W-A-K. How do you say that? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know how to say it. Oh, dude, we could be stock investors. Yo, financial advice? Stock investing for beginners in 2023. Maximizing your investment potential. A guide for new investors in the post-COVID-19 economy. Ernie Brave Boy? By Ernie Brave Boy. Yo! Ernie Brave Boy. <laughs> what a name. Brave Boy. Am I practicing? Um, kind of. I'm just looking for audiobook work. Um, I, I, I've, uh, I've been doing an audiobook just... For the sake of doing an audiobook, I've released over 63 chapters of this one and a half million word book already. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I've done some auditions in the past, but I haven't auditioned nearly enough. So I'm doing a stream just to sort of keep me on task, which, you know, I'm very scatterbrained. But it's keeping me on task and we're doing, um, we're just uh, we're just trying to audition for a whole bunch of books here. Because I like, I like doing the voice acting stuff. I really enjoy doing audiobooks. And so it's a good time. Isn't Brave Boy like a hate group? Is it? But Brave Boy's such a good name. How could it be a hate group? That's so sad. Uh, are you looking for fiction or nonfiction? Anything. So anything on the Amazon audiobook site. Um, I'll find the link and I'll resend it again. Uh, you know, it'll be easier to find it here. Ah, work. Oh. Anything on this site... That, that there's a couple of stipulations, okay? Stipulation one, it needs to be for, um, here, I'll, I'll show you. When you're on the site, you have these filters on the side. The stipulations are, it needs to be in English. It needs to be male or gender neutral because 
I don't have a female voice. And then as far as genre, it can't be erotica. Okay. It's got to be Twitch safe. Um, and that actually kind of rules out all the romance books too, because we've had a couple of those suggested. And every time I've looked at them to like see the preview for like the, the audition, it's been erotica every time. So <laughs> pro don't no erotica, which means probably not romance either. But other than that, anything that looks interesting, you can't actually see like the audition stuff unless you have an account. So just judge the book by its cover and send it my way. Pity we never recorded your visual novel, your VA work, and that was great. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Okay, when is uh, when is uh, what was it called? It's not Ninja Gate. It was like Flop City. When is Flop City Two coming out? We got to do a live stream for Flop City Two and do all the voices. We could we could do it a thing when it's coming out. We can do a we can do a um a stream for Flop City One. We and do, go through that again so that everybody can be part of the experience, and then we can do another stream for Flop City Two. That'd be a ton of fun. A lot of books with feet on the cover. Yeah, I saw those. Uh, if you click on your genre here, you can go to the different sections, right? And I, I just unchecked anything that like, I didn't want to do like a children's book because I don't, I don't know. I didn't want to do a children's book. I didn't want to do politics on stream. Romance is basically just erotica. I didn't want to do that. At the top here, you can click this box that says exclude erotica and sexuality. I didn't want to do anything that was going to broach those topics. That would be awkward on stream. So, uh, yeah, I just unchecked anything that I didn't want to have on stream. And that's what I'm looking at. So these are the categories I'm looking at. But anything you think is interesting that isn't erotica, we can do here. Um, I'm, I'm happy to keep going until, you know, my voice is too tired or whatever and I keep making mistakes. But I'm having a good time just applying for audiobooks. Uh, mostly how this works is you just judge it by its cover. Like, oh, this looks pretty cool. We, um, I've been opening them in new tabs. Uh, this looks pretty good. 11.9 hours. Wow. And then, uh, like, this is stuff that I'll look at. This thing is not selling at all. Nobody is buying this book. Wow. Uh, one thing you'll notice going through the books on this site is that most of them are terrible. They're, like, legitimately, like, there's a lot of fan fiction that is better written than, than a lot of the books you'll find on this site. But that's just sort of how it goes. And if you find one that you like, I'll do it. Oh, you DM me one? Irish found one. All right, we'll do Irish's book. What's up, dog? An Adeline Gibson mystery. Fifty-one thousand. Uh, that seems like a lot. It's actually like six hours. Okay. Let's see. Presented with an opportunity that's too good to pass up. Animal behaviorist, be behaviorist in training, Adeline Gibson, Addie to her friends, travels a world away from her small family hometown of Hadley's home to find the bright lights of Los Angeles, where her appearances is everything. When her new canine client goes missing, Addie has to learn a whole new set of skills and finds that nothing in the big city is as it seems. Oh, I can move this, by the way. I'm using this microphone. <laughs> um, what's up, dog? Is a cozy mystery of around 50,000 words featuring cute animal companions and their human counterparts. A small amount of mild threat and no bad language. <laughs> I like that they specify the no bad language. <clears throat> oh, no. This is this, uh, right here. So, okay. So, it has to be female. This is why I say it's got to be for a male voice, because I could audition for this, but they want a female voice, so I'm, they'll never pick me, because I don't have a female voice. I'm sorry. I'm a strong baritone. I'm not... I don't have that soprano in me. I'm sorry. <laughs> you say that like fan fiction is bad? Dude, okay, a lot of fan fiction is bad. We can't all be to the quality of Honk Boy's fan fiction, which if you haven't read Honk Boy's fan fiction, that is... um. Well, I mean, go read it, Cheese. I think if you click on his on his profile, you can find it. Yeah. Sorry, Irish. I just if they're not even like if I'm not even going to be eligible, I don't want to. I don't want to audition. I don't want to just set myself up for sadness. Um. Let's see. You got to use a. Uh, Pray boy totally doesn't sound like a scam, dude. That book, that whole everything about that finance book looked like a scam. I'm sure it was terrible. It. <laughs> It is so easy to just write a finance book and then you're going to make more money from the writing the finance book than the actual information that is in that book. Because if you were actually making like if you I'm not I shouldn't go into stocks or anything like that. But like if you were actually good enough with stocks to actually be making money with the strategy, you would be making money with the strategy. You wouldn't be like writing a book and having somebody narrate it for a revenue split on Amazon ACX, you know. <laughs> you might have found one. Sweet. Oh, I got to look at Dwarven's. But uh, send it, send it. I'll take a look. 
We come to mi welcome to Midgard. I like this already. What a t what a cover. I love it. Dave Wilfmart. Will Wilmarth. Oh, dude, this is great. This is a good book. This is a oh my gosh, it's actually selling. This is a real book. You were you weren't kidding, Dwarven. This is like a real book. This is like thousands of people buying this book. This would be a big gig. This would be a good gig. A simple farm boy in a mundane medieval world. Turned soldier after his home and family are destroyed. Mere steps from achieving his vengeance after years of fighting. A lucky sword strike ends finds it. A lucky lord. A lucky sword strike ends his life. His soul transferred against his will by one of the gods to another medieval world. One fa This is an isekai! Oh my gosh, you just found an isekai! One filled with magic, monsters, races out of his childhood fairy tales! Oh my gosh! You found an isekai, dwarven! You found the medieval isekai! Alright. Our farm boy is now a contender, but brought to Midgard to fight and kill other contenders to grow strong enough to ascend to become a champion. The magic is wondrous, and he's excited about becoming a mage, but he's had enough fighting and feels no obligation to kill for the unknown gods of Midgard. Instead, he seeks to grow stronger by completing quests, <laughs> killing forest beasts and monsters, and he must get stronger as everyone from his internal guide to the citizens he meets warn him that should another contender find him, they will try to kill him. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> your, fi my fa your favorite good one. How I made $100,000 writing finance books. Books cost $100,000. I love it. That that's really good. Sell one copy and you've, you've, you've done it. Iris, you said you found a book. Are you, are you going to send it? We're gonna do we're gonna do dwarvens though. This is a great book. This is actually a very good submission. We're gonna do this one for sure. Uh, the main character has no particular accent other than being American in general. Good, that's me. Except for okay. In the audiobook I'm currently doing, there's a there's a point where there's like a ravine and they have to cross this ravine, you know, a number of times, and they're they're shouting at each other like, "We gotta get across the ravine," you know. They're doing all that, and they're like. And I say across the ravine. People have been, people being one person, has been complaining in the comments of that. <laughs> like, oh, you say across t with a t. And I'm just like, I'm sorry. I can't, I'm from the Midwest. We say across. I don't know what to tell you. I know it's not the right way to say it. He wants me to say across like somebody who speaks good or something. But no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, Sorry, small rant. I, I have an accent. I don't know. All right. Um, bu -bu 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 -bum. Make sure there's no particular accent other than, being, being, other than being American in general. The guard should sound British. Commoner, not high class. Uh-oh. I don't know how to be British. Elder Togglebottom is a gnome. <laughs> That's an amazing name. Elder Togglebottom. Togglebottom is a gnome and should have a higher-pitched voice to reflect that. How high-pitched are we going? I could be like this. Elder Togglebottom is a gnome and should have a higher pitch voice to reflect that. I like it. This will be fun. I'm excited. I want to do this book. Your attempts have failed. It's already been taken. No. That's so sad. All right. This is, I, I'm, we're going to rename this. Welcome to Midgard. And we're going to open it up. How do you do how do you do a British accent? Oi. Oi, I'm British. Record your best performance. No, wait, I'm going Irish again. How do you be British? I don't know how to British! Oh gosh, I don't know how to be British! Oh no! Watch a lot of Doctor Who to pick up the accent. I watched a bunch of Doctor well, Doctor Who. Uh Reeks the Cheese. The only reason I don't have LGBTQ checked is because, again, I didn't want it to be like a book about sexuality while I'm trying to do this on a Twitch stream. I I just felt like it would be awkward. Um, but if you find one that you like that isn't like, you know, sexual, then absolutely send it. I'll do it. Give me two seconds. Okay. I actually have to run to the bathroom. So I'm going to run to the bathroom and I'll be right back.
I was muted. Thank you, Dwarven. I'm back. Hello. Um, I, I was just saying I'm, I'm eating something because I uh, haven't really eaten today. I'm really hungry. And then I decided to start a stream without having eaten first, which was, I don't know, kind of silly. So I'm just trying to eat something really quick. All right, Dwarven sent me some uh, British. We're going to listen to British. Maybe there's a guy on the other side. Maybe, maybe there's someone in my house right now. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't know. And especially like, especially in the nighttime and you like fucking, you fucking hear something in the middle of the night in, in like your living room or something. Yeah. And you're like, I know there's nothing in my house. <laughs> I know there's nothing in my house. Hmm. Gotta eat. I'll eat eventually. It'll be fine. Uh, I don't know. It's a uh, trash taste. That's what he sent me. Um. This, this is what he sent me. I don't know. This is the maybe clip one. Maybe there's a guy on the other side. Maybe, maybe there's someone in my house right now. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't know. And especially like, especially in the nighttime and you like fucking, you fucking hear something in the middle of the night in, in like your living room or something. Yeah. And you're like, I know there's nothing in my house. <laughs> I know there's nothing in my house. Okay. And let's hear, let's hear number two. Now the two accents share many pronunciation features, including those wide vowel sounds, but Essex speakers tend to close off the ending. For them to write that about us Essex girls, we are not happy. No. So we are not us happy. In the dictionary, but please change the meaning. And but I think please you say change the meaning. Girl is smart, sassy, smart, fun, sassy, and striving hard fun in life. And striving like hard. Else. You can hear Gemma Collins there using that vocalised dark L on girls, and also that glottal T on about. I nailed it. Thanks, buddy. About. <laughs> If you want to hear any about. more of the Essex accent, there is only one place to go. The TV series, The Only Way is Essex. Easley Truman, over in the West. I'll tell you what, I'll bet there's more, more than one place to go to hear an Essex accent. All right. We're armed enough. We're British enough. I got the American accent down. And then we'll be British while we'll attempt it. We'll, we'll see what we can do. Thank you very much, Dwarven. This is helpful. Hearing the accent. I should really work on more accents. Um, I can sort of do like a... More of like a Jersey accent. You know, where they talk a little bit more like that. And then they sort of... They drag more on the syllables and stuff like that. And they lose the end of words. And I can do, a, I can do kind of a crappy Irish accent. Or I can do kind of a crappy Irish accent. I can do sort of the tone that they talk well enough, like sort of more stereotypical, I suppose. But I lose the uh, some of the pronunciations correctly. But I can do the I can do the tonality well enough to uh, well well enough for a book. <laughs> uh, but as far as British, record your best performance performance that provided 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 audition audition script script. I don't know. We'll we'll try it. We'll try it as we go. All right. Welcome to Midgard. Oh, I downloaded it already. Where'd I put it? Um. Uh, here it is. I found it. Okay, let's see how long this audition is. Hopefully it's not a 12-page one. Uh, you know, three pages is reasonable enough, I guess, for, like, a successful book. I saw a message from you, Gremlin, but I don't... Did you... You must have deleted your message. I don't see anything. I just see the, the music you sent earlier. And I feel tricked! I feel bamboozled! Um, You've watched like 80 episodes of Trash Taste and 20 episodes of Trash Taste After Dark, and you can't do a British accent because there's so many of them. I just... I don't know. I'm just going to sort of exaggerate my vowels and try to talk a little bit proper. Hello, the gate. Identif... Ident... Identify yourself. I s yourself. Fuck or continue. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So he said, main character is sort of American. The guard should sound British. All right. You wish me luck. Thank you, Irish. I appreciate it. We'll, we'll, we'll do my best. You like that it's called Midgard Norse mythology and the ask for British? I know, right? They should be asking me to be all Norse or whatever. Every time 
I speak in a Brooklyn accent. And I end up sounding like Joey Wheeler from Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> that's not bad. That's a funny act. That's a funny voice to do. Yeah. I was never allowed to watch Yu-Gi-Oh, but I was for some reason allowed to watch Yu-Gi-Oh the abridged series, which was way worse than Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, and so I can only think of the voice that they did for Joey Wheeler. Yes, Brooklyn Rage. That's a, that's exactly what I was thinking of too. Oh, oh, good. More British. Thank you. I need that. Maybe when you go talk about this oh, with yeah. your friend, you'll say, Maybe oh, when you go talk about. Did you get the broom closet? When you go talk about. When you go talk about. This with your friend, you'll say. When you go talk about this with your friends. They. Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. I hope your friends find this concerning. Eh, eh, whatever, good enough. <laughs> Tom Scott is British. You're right, the British just has a bunch of accents. They just sound like people. Hello, the gate! He called out, smiling at the guards as he advanced. The guard in turn took a single step to the side, placing himself in the middle of the open gateway and gripping his polearm with both arms, tilting it across his body in a defensive posture. Identify yourself. And now uh, I gotta. I de. How to. How I gotta. Identify yourself. Now uh, it doesn't sound British at all. Dun, 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 dun. Identify yourself. I don't. I don't know. I, it feels terrible. Identify yourself. This is the hardest thing. Is trying to do like distinct voices. How does Thor talk? British is tough for me because I just end up talking. Identify, identify yourself. Oh yeah, identify yourself. Oh, that's good. Thank you, Gremlin. That's good. Identify yourself. Identify yourself. Falco continued to stride forward, though he put away his walking stick lest to be considered a weapon. Both hands open and held out to his sides, he answered, "My name is Falco. I'm a traveler, and I'm afraid I'm a little bit lost. In this." Is this the village that used to be called Riva? Was and still is. Yeah, like that, is that? Was and still is. The guard nodded once, not relaxing in the slightest. What's your business here? I feel like I'm going a little bit, almost leaning towards Scottish. What's your business here? Well, I was hoping to trade a little, maybe find a decent meal and a place to rest. Falcor was now within about 20 paces of the gate and its guard. He kept a friendly smile on his face and his hands empty. Trade what? Trade what? Yeah, okay, we got this. 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 This is easy. I'm a professional. Professional. Welcome to Midgard. Yeah. Bringing in the microphone. Identify yourself. All right, that's working. Hello, the gate! He called out, smiling at the guard as he advanced. The guard, in turn, took a single step to the side, placing himself in the middle of the open gateway and gripping his polearm with both hands, tilting it across his body in a defensive posture. Identify yourself! Falcor continued to stride forward, though he put away his walking stick lest it be considered a weapon. Both hands open and held out to his sides, he answered. My name is Falcor. I'm a traveler, and I'm afraid I'm a little bit lost. Is this the village that used to be called Riva? Was and still is. The guard nodded once, not relaxing in the slightest. What's your business here? Well, I was hoping to trade a little. Maybe find a decent meal and a place to rest. Well, I was hoping to trade a little. Maybe find a decent meal and a place to rest. Falcor was now within about 20 paces of the gate and its guard. He kept a friendly smile on his face, and his hands empty. Trade what? The guard relaxed slightly, but still held his weapon diagonally in front of him. Well, just a few minutes ago, a ridiculously large turtle tried to eat my foot. I killed it, and I have some meat and parts to trade. Also a wolf pelt and some other miscellaneous things. Well, just a few minutes ago, I ridiculously... Well... Just a few minutes ago, a ridiculously large turtle tried to eat my foot. 
I killed it, and I have some meat and parts to trade. Also a wolf pelt and some other miscellaneous things. He produced the ebony wolf pelt from his inventory and held it up to show the guard. Your armor. I recognize that style. It came from the trickster settlement. Nice. No, your armor. I recognize that style. It came from the trickster settlement. Ah, f I keep losing the accent. Identify, identify yourself. Your armor. I recognize that style. It came from the trickster settlement. The guard was still eyeing him suspiciously. Did they send you to spy on us? Falkor shook his head. I was attacked by a couple tricksters a few days ago. I killed the one that was wearing this armor. The other fled into the brush. Falkor mentally winced at hearing that there was a whole settlement of tricksters, though he kept his face and. Falkor mentally winced at hearing that there was a whole settlement of tricksters, though he kept his face as neutral and friendly as possible. And then you walk straight here so they could track you to our village. The guard took a threatening step forward, a scowl on his face. No, I walked down the other side of the stream and discovered an abandoned harborage, where I spent a day and a night. That's the other reason I'm here. I have a quest to spread the word that harborage is restored and operational. There's no harborage here. That'd be an old wives' tale. The guard spit on the ground at his feet. Falkor was quickly losing ground and beginning to worry. It's not just a tale. I stumbled across it. Maybe you know the place? About a mile upstream, there's a large rocky mold. About a mile upstream, there's a large rocky mound just uphill from the stream. About a mile upstream, there's a large rocky mound just uphill from the stream. About a mile upstream, there's a large rocky mound. About a mile upstream, there's a large rocky mound just uphill from the stream. The dark. The guard still looked skeptical, but nodded. I, I know the place. Well, about halfway up on the stream's side, there's a small crevice in the rock. When I went in, the Arborage avatar told me it was the Rivian Foothills Arborage. Well, about halfway up on the st Well, about halfway up on the street. On the upstream side, there's a small crevice in the rock. Well, about halfway up from the upstream side, there's a small crevice in the rock. When I went in, the Arborage avatar told me the Rivian Foothills Arborage. When I went in, the Harbor Javatar told me it was the Rivian Foothidge. Ah. When I went in, the Harbor Javatar told me it was the Rivian Foothills Harborage. It had been damaged in the same earthquake that apparently destroyed the town that used to sit here. He let his voice trail off, waiting for a reaction from the guard, who was now looking thoughtful. All right, wait right here. There's an elder in the village who will know if you're telling the truth or not. Do not move from that spot. The guard growled at the... All right, wait there. All right, wait there. All right, wait right there. There's an elder in the village who will know if you're telling the truth or not. Do not move from that spot. The guard growled the instructions, then turned his back on Falcor long enough to stick his head inside the wall and shout at someone. A moment later, a young man in leather armor came dashing into view. He listened to the guard for a moment, shot a wide-eyed glance at Falcor, then dashed off towards the heart of the village. Farquhar took the opportunity to cast Examine on the guard. Leroy, Village Guard, Level 15, Health, 2100 of 2100. His ankles still being a little sore, Farquhar elected to sit cross-legged on the path while they waited. Leroy resumed his position in front of the gateway, facing Falcor with a mostly neutral expression on his face. Eventually, he broke the awkward silence by asking, How'd you get the wolf pelt? Black wolves be rare in these parts. Falcor shrugged. I had floated down the stream after the trickters attacked me. Are we almost done? We're almost done. Falkor shrugged. I had floated down the stream while... Falkor shrugged. I had floated down the stream after the tricksters attacked me, hoping to keep my friends of... Hoping to keep any friends of theirs from tracking me. Falkor shrugged. I had floated down the stream after the tricksters attacked me. Falkor shrugged. I had floated down the stream after the tricksters attacked me, hoping to keep any friends from their, hoping to keep any friends of theirs, hoping to keep any friends of theirs from tracking me. Falkor shrugged. I had floated down the stream after the tricksters attacked. Why am I having a hard time with that word? Ah! Falkor shrugged. I had floated down the stream after the tricksters attacked me, hoping to keep any friends of theirs from tracking me. Hoping to keep any friends of theirs from tracking me. 
When I got out of the stream to dry off, I saw a rabbit that looked like it wanted to be dinner. When I got out of the stream to dry off, I saw a rabbit that looked like it wanted to be dinner. Before I could go after it, a black wolf took it. Then it saw me, and decided I would make a better meal. It very nearly got me. My clothes were still drying, and I didn't really have a weapon, just a shovel. He stopped when the guard interrupted. You fought the wolf naked? Well, <laughs> mostly naked, yes. I don't recommend it. Hard to focus with a wolf snapping at your knoblies. Ha! Leroy the guard laughed. Visibly relaxed and settling the butt... Leroy the guard laughed. Visibly relaxing and setting the butt of the polearm in the dirt by his foot. That would have been a sight to see! A moment later, he realized he'd... A moment later, he realized what he'd said and cleared his throat. <clears throat> Not that I'd be wanting to see a naked... Uh, I mean the fight. Falcor shock... Falcor chuckled, used to the rough humor and speech of soldiers. He held up both hands and grinned at the guard. <laughs> I know what you meant. If I hadn't almost died, I might have thought it was funny as well. <laughs> I know what you meant. If I hadn't almost died, I might have thought it funny as well. Death is rarely amusing. <laughs> Death is rarely amusing, Strip. Ah, uh, how do I say that line British? Oh, oui. Death is rarely... <laughs> Death is rarely amusing, stranger. Oh, wait, it's a different person. Death is rarely amusing, stranger. Death is rarely amusing, stranger. A voice rang out from behind Leroy. Death is rarely amusing, stranger. A voice rang out from behind Leroy. Falcor blinked a few times, scanning the gateway, then atop the wall, not seeing anyone. Death is Rayleigh? What? Rayleigh? What? What are you saying, Gremlin? I don't understand. Oh, Death is Rayleigh. Yeah, um, this is a different guy, though, so. Death is rarely amusing, stranger. A voice rang out from behind Leroy. Falcor blinked a few times, scanning the gateway, then the top of the wall. Then the top of the wall, not seeing anyone. A second later, the guard turned and stepped aside, revealing a very short-statured elderly man who'd walked up behind him. Or maybe not a man. Falcor thought to himself... Or maybe not a man. Falcor thought to himself as he got to his feet. Or maybe not a man. Oh, this is Toggobottom. Okay, this is the high-pitched guy. The high-pitched and elderly. Death is rarely amusing, stranger. A voice rang out from behind Leroy. Falcor blinked a few times, scanning the gateway, then the top of the wall, not seeing anyone. A second later, the guard turned and stepped aside, revealing a very short-statured elderly man who'd walked up behind him. Or maybe not a man. Falcor thought to himself as he got to his feet. The speaker was about the same height as the goblins who had attacked Falcor, with snow-white hair. The speaker was about the same height as the goblins who'd attacked Falcor, with snow-white hair that stuck out in every direction, long white beard, Oversized gray-blue eyes, and ears that looked large enough that, if they were to be folded forwards, might cover his eyes. He was dressed in plain gray cotton pants and shirt, and walked with a staff in one hand. He was dressed in plain gray cotton pants and... He was dressed in plain gray cotton pants and shirt, and walked with a staff in one hand. Leroy bowed at his... Leroy bowed his head briefly. Elder Choco Bottom. Toggle, toggle bottom. Ah. Leroy bowed his head briefly. Elder toggle bottom. This strange. Oh. Leroy bowed his head briefly. Elder toggle bottom. This stranger be called Falcor. He claims to have fought tricksters, found a arborage under the Dragon Mound, and received a quest to come here. And received a quest to come here. The elder looked like Falcor, raising. The elder looked at Falcor, raising one eyebrow. Is that so? Well, is that so? Well, we'll see about that. He pointed his staff at Falcor and mumbled a short phrase. Falcor felt a tingling sensation in his head and quickly checked his health bar, thinking that it was an attack. Seeing that he was still at full health, he focused on Toggobottom. What was that? That was a truth spell. Now repeat your story to me and know that I'll be able to tell if you're untruthful. Falcor sighed 
and repeated what he told Leroy. In chronological... <coughs> Falcor sighed and repeated what he told Leroy. In chronological order this time, starting with the attack by the tricksters. When he finished, the old one nodded. He's telling the truth. Okay, that took a while. That was a long audition, but we're done. We're just going to give this like 30 seconds of silence so I can remove room noise after. Okay, that's long enough. Save and export. All right, that was that went all right. I enjoyed that. I think I did a good voice for the guard. I think that's our eighth book. So that's that's eight. Uh, we haven't done any editing yet. Um, we'll see if we do that on stream. That might be kind of boring to watch because I can't really talk while I'm doing it because I gotta listen. Um, all right, uh, Dwarven sent something. Uh, uh, quite a while ago, before we started recording this, so we're going to listen to what Dwarven said. British people be like, like, oh my god, your British accent is like the worst. Which, pray tell, of the many accents am I getting wrong? You probably weren't expecting an East Yorkshire accent. You did like a valley know. girl for the British but person. But you might learn something if I use a Geordie accent over and over. Or maybe I'm talking in a little bit of a Cockney accent. Or maybe it sounds more like a Bristol accent, like Liam Neeson or Jim Browning. Your Cockney one was the best, Dwarven. I think the Cockney accent you had was the best. That one sounded pretty good. All right. Uh, any other books that people want to do, like that they want me to do? Uh, I, I really liked this. Dwarven, this was a really good suggestion. I hope I get this book. This would be a fun one to do. It's kind of, I feel like anytime they try to do a book where they have like this kind of, you know, where it's like, ah, oh, you know, he checked, he cast examined, and he saw the video game level. I, I find it a little cringe, but overall the book would probably be fun to do. It'd be a good gig for sure. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm not, not muted or anything. That would have been awkward if I did that whole book and I was muted the whole time. Oh, that would suck. Sorry, I'm just looking at stuff. Um, yeah, I don't see any of suggestions, so I, I will start looking through books again. That was a really good suggestion, though. I'm happy you found that one, Rorvin. I hope they, I hope they take me. I was happy with how that went. Vocal style versatile. Oh, well, we'll see how it goes. Shards of the Coven, Starfall, Shards of the Coven, Book Two. Ah, freaking mustache is just the wrong length. Ah. Die and stay hidden. I don't know about that. Uh, no, I bet this one's real cringe. I bet this is a video game book, too. Red Enteries. Entaries? En enteries? Uh, nobody has ever bought this book. It's not even on the sales ranking, which means it's either not published or nobody has ever bought it. And since it says published, I don't think anybody has ever bought this book. <laughs> For over 30 years of reading, Roland has learned he's a talented writer. He's a talented writer. Okay, so the first line of this, like this, about this title is him saying, I'm a good writer. I've been reading for 30 years. Uh, okay, Roland. Uh, he studied sci-fi and he decided that he wanted one day to dream about writing a novel. Here it is. It's been nearly 11 years coming. And this is the final product. You can find action and adventure with a little romance and love. Oh my gosh, I bet this book is bad. Oh, sweet. Um, 
You should definitely think about purchasing this epic novel. One day it'll be a classic story read in the throngs of many. Your reading time is precious. Half of this novel takes place in a dome on Mars called Rend and Terry's A City. That was one of the worst abouts I have ever heard. That's a writer thing. Writers have terrible habit of writing about writers because know what you write. No, 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 no. He's not writing about writers. That is himself. Roland is the author. The author is Roland Bunch. He is talking about himself, about how good of a writer he is. That is straight up him saying, I have been thinking about writing a book. It took me 11 years to write this book. Read my book. Ugh. Let's see what let's see what Gremlin sent me. British accent fluctuated during recording, but you think it's adequately goofy? All right, we're going to listen to Gremlin's uh, British accent. What did you just say about me? What did you just say about me? I'll have you know, I graduated top of my class know. in the Navy SEALs. I've been involved in numerous secret raids on Al-Qaeda. I have over 300 confirmed kills. I am trained in guerrilla <laughs> warfare. I'm the top sniper in the entire British armed forces. You are nothing to me but another target. <laughs> I will wipe you out with precision, the likes of which has never been before seen on this earth. Mark my words. You think you can get away with saying that to me? Over the internet? Think again. As we speak, I'm contacting my secret network of spies across the US. Please, Gremlin, no! Being traced right now. So you better prepare for the storm, maggot. That was really good. I really enjoyed that. Thank you for that, Drew. <laughs> Thank you for that, Gremlin. That was a... Uh... <laughs> Oh my word! Uh, I never want to see another fanfic author go. I suck at summaries because literally everything is, but anything is better than this. It was a horrible summary. This is a terrible summary here. Like, oh, I, I couldn't think of a. Uh, we should at least look at the at the audition, right? Because maybe maybe it's terrible, maybe it's not. I've at least got to know. Trevor Tahern. <laughs> okay, first of all, bad name. Trevor Tahern began to look out the window of his penthouse office building. He could imagine it. A feeling of grace when his corporate spaceship would arrive. And it was done any time from its... And it was done any time from its current delivery. What does that mean? A feeling of grace when his corporate would arrive, It was, and it was done any time from its... Maybe he meant due? Like, it was due any time from its current delivery? The spacecraft itself was 125 feet in length and could pack a pack a punch through the atmosphere easily and breathlessly. Tahern got halfway up his chair to meet the spaceship at its touchdown when he began to beep when its comm began to beep. This is Chairman Trevor Tahern of Lunar Life Corp. He didn't even put quotations. Uh, how may I help you this evening? Aye, it's Cliff. He didn't do quotations again. He is one of the corporation engineers and a dear friend of Trevor's. Cliff has an Australian accent, and there are multiple women and two children in this story. Wait, he did... He went from script to, like, describing the characters with no break. You need to do a little Spanish roll with the Tahern. Tahern. What do you mean Spanish roll with the... Tahern. Como se... Tahern. 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 Okay, did it download? I gotta... We've gotta see, like... Am I, maybe it's the formatting. Okay, so Trevor Tahorn began to look out the window of his penthouse office building. He could imagine it. A feeling of grace when his corporate spaceship would arrive, and it was due any time from its current delivery. Again, that has to be a typo. The spacecraft itself was 125 feet in length and could pack a punch through the atmosphere easily and breathlessly. Tahorn got half... Tahorn! Tahorn got halfway up his chair to meet the spaceship as it's... At its touchdown, when his comm began to beep. This is Chairman Trevor Tahern of Lunar Life Corp. How may I help you this evening? Aye, it's Cliff. He is one of the corporation engineers and a dear friend of Trevor's. I imagine somebody is saying this. Hello, yes, it's Cliff. He is one of the corporation engineers and a dear friend of the Trevor's. Ah! Cliff has an Australian accent. Australian? How do you do Australian? Is this, this is Australian enough? This is Australian, mate. It's Australian. <laughs> Aye, it's Cliff. He is one of the corporation engineers and a dear friend of Trevor's. Lad. <laughs> I don't know. It's Trahern. <laughs> How would I pronounce Imena? 
Imina? Probably Amina. Imina? Emina? I I'm assuming it's a name, I'd probably say, like, Amina. If it was a name, I'd say Amina. If it was, like, a, not a name, I would probably say Imina. Like, Imina. Imena. No, I'd probably say Imena if it was, like, a thing, or Imena. No. I don't even know what I said anymore. I don't know. That's a weird word. Anyway, let's finish. Yeah, sorry about before quotation mark broken right there. Joanne smiled gently. I should have spoken up, but thanks for not searching under my garments. Joanna made it to the bottom waiting for Clifford. This guy is terrible! You're welcome, Trevor said. Ty came last as he nodded at Trev. Cliff, I should have realized you told the truth sooner! End quotations. Trevor patted his old friend's shoulder. It was Blake. That ruffian should have been fired long ago. I can always rely on you, Cliff reassured Trevor, standing two steps ahead of him. This is bad. Imana? Yeah, I could go with Imana. Yeah. This is physically painful. I agree. That is physically painful. And you read fan fiction for fun. That was bad. I'm sorry, guy. Like, I'm very sorry. I know that you have been, for over 30 years of reading, thought you are a talented writer and spent seven, or it's been nearly 11 years coming. But, buddy, that's a rough read. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm on page seven. Oh, I accidentally went to the final page. So the way these are ordered, I'm pretty sure is like chronologically by default, like order of upload. So anything, I'm at the very final page. That means anything on this last page has probably been sitting here and not able to find a narrator for a while now. So anything on page seven here is going to be pretty bad. If you ever feel bad about yourself, remember that it took this guy 11 years to write that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But not only that. Not only was it that. It's also 71,974 words. He wrote 71,974 words of that. This last page is where I found that motorcycle book from earlier. Ah, yeah, well, that explains it. Uh, yeah, the, fi the final page is where you find bottom of the barrel, crusty, old, not good writing. Oh no, that's where I found haunted. That ex I couldn't pronounce any words in haunted. Haunted. I can't pronounce anything right now. Down bad badly. There's no way this is anything but erotica. 1.3 hours? It's so short. It's so tiny. Yep, I was right. It is erotica. Thanks, filter, for not filtering that. Frozen stiff drink. Oh, wait. I think I remember seeing that. We gotta, we'll, we'll go click on that. Frozen stiff drink. A winter blizzard's barrels... A winter blizzard barrels towards Wart Wharton 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 County with a vengeance. Madame Zenya predicted the raging storm would change the course of Kellyan's life, but the far seer never could have prepared him for all the collateral damage. Nana D disappears after visiting a patient at Willow Trees, leaving behind a trail of confusion. When the patient turns up dead and a second body is discovered beneath the snowbanks, Kellen must face his worst fears. What tragedy has befallen his beloved grandmother? Kellen's brother Hampton learns essential life lessons the hard way after his mother-in-law accuses him of embezzlement. While trying to prove his innocence, Hampton digs himself a deeper hole that might lead to prison. Sheriff Montague wants to save him, but she received the shock of her life as the past hurdles forward and complicates her future. Between locating Nana D and solving the scandalous murder of another prominent Braxian citizen, Kellen and April's world explode with more turmoil than they can handle. Too bad neither one of them knows what to do about the psychic's latest premonition. The suspicious deaths happening around town aren't, any en aren't ending any time soon. Ah, ah, ah. 
All right, how was that? Was that good? <laughs> At least the summary is interesting. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. I had fun reading that. The book doesn't sound any good, but that was fun. Uh, I can't even download it. It's busted. So this is why this one has no auditions. Is The audition is busted. You can't download it. There is no audition. I'll just submit my reading just now then. That was fun. I enjoy rolling words that or letters that shouldn't be rolled and uh, talking like this. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. That was fun. Too bad we can't apply for the book. I like that you can read faster and more accurately in a goofy voice. I know. I If I'm goofy, I'm not taking it seriously and I just get it all. I, I'm perfect. But if I'm trying to talk normally, it, it's impossible. Glass houses. What don't kill you make you... The title has a grammatical error. Glass houses. What don't kill you make you strong. Makes you strong, at least. But What don't kill you makes you strong. <clears throat> I don't know. We might just stop at eight books here. Eight's pretty good. And uh, I don't know. Blood Like Water. That's got to be good. Hunters and Prey, book one. Well, it does have prey in the title, and I am biased towards books slash stories with prey in the title. Amid the Vampire War, a new hell emerges. Before the Vampire War started, Anna's best friend went missing. As if trying to find her wasn't enough to worry about, Anna comes face to face with a demon princess! Awaiting the missing piece to help her fulfill a prophecy. The princess is also determined to track down her family. I'm spitting so much. I don't know if you can see it. But this princess isn't here. Just here for her family reunion. She's hell-bent on taking over Anna's dimension. Or is it Anna? I'm gonna go with Anna. Anna hadn't wanted to team up with the vampires to begin with. But in order to survive the wrath of this scorned princess, relying on them once more might be her only way out. Uh, this sounds like a book that should have a female uh, narrator again. Um, wait, what the heck? Please state which character you were choosing to read for and only read those pages. There are four characters chapters here. Anna, Chris Christina, Spider, and Gertie. I want to be Gertie. <laughs> Spider must have a dark, gruff voice. I can be, I can be dark, I, I can be gruff. I can be a, a low, dark, gruff voice like this. I imagined him in maybe his 30s or 40s. All the female maids are in their early 20s, so they should not sound like older women. Gertie must have a higher pitched voice. A minor character, Sonya, is British, but no, so narrators must be able to do a British accent while reading her character. Okay, so they make it sound like they want like four different actors for this book? But there's no way. Like, this website doesn't have a way to format it like that. But they make it sound like they want you to read for a specific character. That's kind of weird. No, no, no. The grammatical errors could simply be indicative of the author's, author's dialect. <laughs> what don't kill you make you strong would be grammatically correct sentence in many communities. Like, like English? Or are you talking like if we translate it di directly to Spanish? Lo que son no... Uh, I've lost so much Spanish. Lo que no... I can't... Mierta? No, that... I can't remember how to say kill in Spanish! For, um, se hace fuerte. I don't know. A day... The day my dad came home. Oh my gosh! Dad found his smokes and came home! This is not sold. To save her father from sinking deeper into the spell that has been waged against them both, Jennifer quickly moves from her father's house to escape the evil and turmoil surrounding her every day. All right, I'm, I'm, clearly I'm enjoying audiobooks too much. I really am. I'm having a good time here, Millie, and you should have been here. We just had a fun time reading reading an entire description of a book like this. It was a good time. We're, uh, we've sort of, we're sort of scraping the barrel, though. I mean, we've already auditioned for eight books, and... Uh, there's a, the books on here are already pretty bad, uh, but I'm having a hard time finding um, good ones here. Not an Ave, it's not. Mortier. It's Mortier. It is Mortier? Huh. 
Lo que no se muer, morti, morte. I gotta, I should get back into Spanish. You think I do great erotic vampire novellas? Thank you. We, we actually had one that was a vampire. Uh, I just left it. Uh, blood like water. But it's weird because they want like four different people to audition for this book or something. I don't know. It's weird. Hmm. Shipyard days and nights. Hmm. Endless Storm by Riley Miller. A huge post apocalyptic disaster saga with 1,000 plus pages of an American family surviving a world changing storm. That is a horrible title. That is just a garbage title. That's terrible. You put all this work into your book and you title it some crap like that looks like a BuzzFeed article? Like, what the heck? I don't know what Ave is. You're correct. Oh, African American vernacular English. Okay, I didn't know that. I'm sorry. I'm not cultured. I don't know things. Oh, hey, Million Fowl. Check this out. Haha. <laughs> I've got uh, a new cable. Look at this. It's just like the one you broke. <laughs> I can use the treadmill again. I finally got a replacement cable for it. So that, that's very happy to finally have that. Yeah, only took four months. They had to ship it from China, I think. Man, you know what? We might be done with books. Most of these look like they kind of suck. <laughs> Death's Pale Flag. I don't know. Let's look up Death's Pale Flag. What don't kill you make you stronger would be the closest grammatically correct version of that sentence. Huh. What don't kill you makes you strong. Weird. I don't know. I mean, from I don't know. It's just where I'm from. That's bad grammar. I was I did not know. Hmm. I like the look of this one. A brain surgeon and unlikely war hero Ryan Brennan has it all. A booming practice, a beautiful home in an idyllic setting, and a happy, loving family. Then the apparitions begin. <laughs> Oh, hatred is Kaiser. This isn't New Vegas. <clears throat> All right, this is good. I've been wanting to do a spooky one, and we've had garbage spooky ones. And this one pays real money. That's the best part, is that this may have, like, zero sales, but because they pay real money, it's still worth doing it. All right, let's, let's download the script and take a look. Chapter 1. Hemorrhage. Perhaps it had passed the point of futility, but neurosurgeon Brian Brennan persisted in packing pristine white cotton balls into the gaping hole. And again, the white turned to red and blood began to stream out of the little girl's head. With a sigh, Ryan peeled the now spent cotton balls away and tossed them with a dripping wet splat into a nearby stainless steel basin. He shot a look at several of the bleeding points, the acrid smoke of cauterization mixing with the smell of blood and brain but quickly abandoned the effort and packed, them, and packed in more cotton. How long is this? This is... God, why do they keep sending, like, stupidly long auditions? We'll do this one, though. We'll do it. Am I going to gross you guys out if we talk about the blood and gauze and apparently, I don't know, child brain surgery? I want to do this one, though. I'm going to prepare a audio track. What you, am I gonna am I gonna gross you guys out if I do this one? Because this would be a good gig. I'd like to do this one. <laughs> million Fowl says child's brain surgery is the best kind. Thanks for that, Million. I, I <laughs> of course. Uh, you start your stories with child brain surgery. It's a good hook. What's better than child brain hemorrhage? Uh, clearly all the keen-eyed narrators have combined, come through the trenches already in search of non-garbage and left you only welcome to Midgard and when tourists leave. That's how it is. And you have to realize that like 99% of what's written is just kind of garbage anyway. So it's how it is. I myself had had brain surgery. It's a good time. I don't know if you're even kidding, Million. 
I can see you doing child brain surgery in your pastime too, you know, just for fun. But have you had brain surgery? Neat. Very neat. Poke around in your brain there. They 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 opened up your skull and, and put in mare parts. All right. Hemorrhage. Hair's so long. I don't I don't know. I'm not used to it. I need this. Testing, testing. We're good. All right. Chapter one. Hemorrhage. Perhaps it had passed the point of futility, but neurosurgeon Brian Brennan persisted in packing pristine white cotton balls into the gaping hole. And again, the white turned to red and blood began to stream out of the little girl's head. With a sigh, Ryan peeled the now spent white with a sigh, Ryan peeled the now spent cotton balls away and tossed them with a dripping wet splat into a nearby stainless steel basin. He took a shot at several of the bleeding points. He took a shot at several of the bleeding points. The acrid smoke of the cauterizai He took a shot at several of the bleeding points. The acrid smoke of cauterizai He took a shot at several of the bleeding points. The acrid smoke of cauterization mixing with the smell of blood and brain, but quickly abandoned the effort and packed in more cotton. The evening had started peacefully enough. Ryan had just sat down for dinner at the kitchen table with his wife, Kelly, and their three daughters, Ava, Ray... Ryan had just sat down for dinner at the kitchen table with his wife, Kelly, and their three daughters, Ava, Riley, and Aaron, when his phone erupted. He took one... He took a last look at the plate of grilled vegetables. Then he took a last look at his He took a last look at his plate of grilled vegetables, then pushed himself away from the table as he answered. Hey there, er <clears throat> that's him. Hey there, Eric. Hey, sorry sir. Sorry to bug you again so soon. Hey sir, uh, sorry to bug you again so soon. It was a ginger-haired Eric Edmondson. I'll do maybe a squeaker voice for him. Old people glasses. Hey, sir. Sorry to bug you again so soon. It was ginger-haired Eric Edmondson. Third-year neurosurgical... Neurosurgical. It was ginger-haired Eric Edmondson. Third-year neuros... Third-year neuro... Third-year neurosurgical resident. Known throughout the hospital as Eric the Red. No sweat, buddy. What's up? Asked Ryan as he slipped into the dining room. We just got called on a... We just got called on a two-year-old girl, Olivia Spencer. Head injury from a bad car accident. Reported awake at the scene, now in a coma. She just dilate... She just dilated her right pupil. They're bundling up her for... They're bundling her up for a scan as we speak. Ryan's coal black eyes narrowed. Okay, I'm on my way. Meet you in CT. Kelly looked up from her dinner. A subtle br Kelly looked up from her dinner, a subtle frown crossing her lips. Really, Ryan? You just got home. Sorry, honey, replied Ryan as he kissed each daughter on the top of her head. They've got a kid who's in big trouble. I doubt I'll be back anytime soon. This was code that he was likely headed to the operating room. It was greeted by a chorus of theatrical sighs from the girls. But, Dad, we were supposed to carve pumpkins tonight, protested seven-year-old Riley. You promised. We've been waiting all weekend. Ryan was out of the house and jogging to his Jeep before she could finish. He arrived at the CT scanner just as Eric, two pediatric intensive care unit nurses, two pediatric intensive care unit nurses, and pediatric critical care specialist Hugh, Hugh O'Connor and pediatric critical care specialist Hugh O'Connor pushed Olivia's hospital crib into the suite. He helped the team load the little girl into the giant, gleaming white miracle of modern electrical engineering. Within a couple of minutes, pictures of her brain appeared on the monitors. Ryan took one look and pulled out his cell phone, speed dialing the operating room. Or front desk. Oh, oh our front desk, came a cheerful response on the second ring. Hey there, uh, Brennan here. You again, Dr. Brennan? I thought we just got rid of you. Yeah, well, we got a little girl in CT who needs to come up right away. Cranny, 
right side, cranny, right side, cranny, right side, big bleed. As Ryan spoke, phone held between his ear and shoulder, he helped remove Olivia from the scanner and return her to a crib. Soon, he and Eric were wrestling the bulky apparatus towards the elevator. Operating room 12 was pulsating with activity when he pushed the crib through its swinging doors. The scrub nurse was laying out an assortment of stainless steel instruments on tables draped in sterile blue disposable sheets. Other scrub attired personnel were hooking up drills. Other scrub attired personnel were hooking up drills, suction systems, and electro cautery. Other scrub attired personnel were hooking up drills, suction system. Other scrub attired personnel were hooking up drills, suction systems, and electro electro and electro cautery devices. And electro cautery devices. The anesthesiologist and his assistants were filing various. The anesthesiologist and his assistants were filling various syringes and hanging IV bags, and two circulating nurses were. Let's see. Um, we're gonna. I got. I got to read your comment here because this is gonna be long. You love the implication that this is a small child is bleeding out in front of him, and he's just making out how nice dinner would have been. Well, you, that is exactly what's happening there. He's like, ah, I really would have liked to finish this asparagus, but I guess I'll go help the newborn with a brain hemorrhage. <laughs> uh, the doctor also has the most casual way of speaking in existence. Call from the ER. Hey, dude, what's up? Yo, dude, what's up? <laughs> I'm going to pick up a six-pack on my way to the operating room. <laughs> uh, calling to set up emergency surgery. Hey, fam, what's happening? Yeah, honestly. <coughs> <coughs> All right. Uh, back to recording here. The anesthesiologist and his assistants. The anesthesiologist and his assistants were filling various syringes and hanging IV bags. The anesthesiologist and his assistants were filling various syringes and hanging IV bags, and two circulating nurses were tearing open bundles of sterilized tools and drills. All activity paused for a moment, however, as Ryan lifted Olivia to the operating table, and everyone in the room let out an anguished groan as her bruised and battered body was laid bare. Ryan shaved a large pack of Ryan shaved a large patch of Olivia's hair and slathered the exposed scalp with a fluorescent orange solution. He left the room for only a few seconds to rub antibacterial lotion into his hands and arms, then burst back in, arms held away from his body, impatiently waiting to be gowned. With the scrub nurse's assistance, he donned his sterile gro- Should I say sterile or sterile? Probably just sterile, huh? I don't know. With the scrub nurse's assistance, he donned his sterile gown and two pairs of gloves, draped out all the op- Draped out all the operative, what? Draped out the, okay. Draped out the operative, Draped out the operative area of, uh, Draped out the operative area of Olivia's head and picked up a scalpel. Okay, guys, time out, he barked. This was an institutionalized pro, This was an institu, This was an institutionali, Institutionalized. Ah! This was an institutionalized nod to patient safety, where the surgeon would normally run through an accounting. This was an institutionalization. This was an institutionalized nod to patient safety, where the surgeon would normally run through an accounting of his or her surgical plans, needs, and concerns with the rest of the personnel in the room before starting the procedure, like an airline pilot running a pre-flight checklist before a takeoff. But with a dying child under his scalpel, he cut short the exchange. This is Miss Olivia Spencer, and we're about to open the right side of her head for a big-ass bleed. If anyone has any objections, speak now or forever hold your peace. He cut into the child's scalp directly below the widow's peak, fashioning a giant question mark shaped incision, encompassing, encompassing the entire right side of her head, while Eric applied blue plastic clips to the cut edges to stop them from bleeding. After a few minutes of operating, Ryan addressed a couple of nursing students who were watching the procedure. So, this little girl's got a large accumulation of blood deep in her brain that's crushing the surrounding tissue. The longer the brain gets crushed, the more it shuts down and dies. The blood solidifies. 
The blood solidifies into a clot, or as we call it, a hem. The blood solidifies. The blood solidifies into a clot, or as we call it, a hematoma. Dr. Edmondson and I are trying to get the hematoma out before it's too late. We'll see how lucky we are tonight. The two surgeons continued to operate, peeling the scalp off the skull. Ryan then stepped on a metallic pedal on the floor. An 80,000 RPM drill in his right hand leaped into action with high pitch. An 80,000 RPM drill in his right hand leaped into action with a high pitch scream. With it, he made dime sized holes in the skull, then switched out the drill bit. So, we just stand. <clears throat> so, we just made what we call burr holes. This new drill bit cuts on. This new drill bit cuts it. This new drill bit cuts on its side. So if we insert it into a hole and push it against the bone, we can make nice thin cuts from one hole to another. He maneuvered the drill about the child's head, creating a 6 by 5 inch window in the skull. He lifted the freed up flap on the bone and passed it to the scrub tech. Underneath lay a purple red glob of what looked like current jelly. Ryan pointed it out with the Ryan Ryan pointed it out to the students. So, what do you think this is, guys? Um is it a subdermal hematoma? Reply. Um, is it a subdermal hematoma? Replied one of the students who was so taller scrubs. Okay, it's a her. Um, is it a subdermal hematoma? Replied one of the students who was so tall her scrubs ended halfway down her shins. Close, replied Ryan. It's an epid epidural. It's an epidural hematoma. The brain and spinal cord are contained in a bag of fluid called the dura. This clot of blood is on the outside of the dura. This clot of blood is on the outside of the dura and thus is epidural. If it were under the dura, it would be subdural. The problem is, it's not this little girl's problem. The problem is, it's not this little girl's problem. The clot that we're really after is in the brain itself. It's known as an intra parenchymal. It's known as an intraparenchymal hematoma. Ryan swept the clot off the underlying tissue with his gloved finger. So, here's the dura, the leathery bag of fluid that the brain sits in. It feels tight as a drum. It's not good. It means the pressure in this girl's head is off the scales. All right. Do you guys enjoy that? I gotta talk about surgery stuff. Um, all right, I'm gonna leave a, a little bit of room tone here just so I can remove background noise later. Okay, that's good. Uh, I, you thought I hated noise removal? I hated it until I learned that if you use like a 30 second clip, it actually works really, really, really good. And so I just leave like 30 seconds of silence at the end of my stuff and then I can remove it like that and it's great. Uh, stick with your day job of neurosurgery, dude. I, I, I will, yeah. I, I don't know if you're talking about me or the guy in it. The guy thought he was God. Yeah, he, th that guy, it was so weird. I, I, I think you were saying that. <laughs> Um, I, I'll read your thing in a second. PBN, is that the level you should be recording at? I record really low like this um, when I'm doing audiobooks because the thing is, is I'm used to doing like Pray in a Lamb and in Pray in a Lamb, I will go from like, you know, being like quiet like this and talking to pray screaming his lungs off and everything ends up peaking, right? And so if I do it like that, everything just ends up peaking. So I record pretty low so that when I get loud, I can have that dynam dynamic range. And so long as I don't have like any background noise, like I don't have like computer fans going on or I don't have like a hiss, um, I can pump I can pump up the low audio and it sounds fine. Uh, with this microphone, this is the level that I record at. Um, as far as if this is the level you should record at, if you have a nice microphone, definitely try it. I like it because I can have that dynamic range without having to stop to like turn down my dial, turn up my dial, right? Um, to avoid peaking. That's why I do it. Um, 
Silver Fluff had a bunch of uh, comments during this that I want to go over because that was weird, right? That he was just sort of like, oh my gosh, this child's brain is hemorrhaging. There's blood everywhere. We've got to drill holes into things. But also, you know, hey, uh, college student girls, uh, the one with the scrubs that don't quite fit for no good reason at all. Um, what, do you, what, do you, what do you call this here? Well, this here is a subdural hematoma. <laughs> um, you love the implication that the small child is bleeding out in front of him and he's thinking about, oh, no, 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 I read that. Uh, for a man who uses five extra words everywhere else, he couldn't say sympathetic groan. Everyone in the, oh, this fuck, this child dying and stuff, so annoying. I know. I, it, it, this is weird. Why, why is he explaining surgery techniques to nursing interns? It's like you would, you would be explaining surgery to like interns and stuff like that. But not if it was like, this child's been in a car accident. Their brain's exploding. It, it's really kind of a weird scene. But in reality, the reason for it is so that he can be explaining to us, the reader, what's going on and why he's doing things. Um, cool. Well, that was fun. I enjoyed that one. Uh, let's go ahead and export this. <clears throat> oh. Export, WAV. There we go. Okay, so really quick. Uh, PBN, I'll show you why I, uh, I do it this way. So this is, this is Adobe Audition. So if I zoom in here, I can go to the end where I left this silence, right? Um, boop, here it is. So what I do is with this like 30 or so seconds of silence, you can take a chunk of it like this. You hit Shift P and it captures that as a noise print. And then you select everything, control shift P, and you can do noise reduction. And it uses that silence as what your room tone is. And so the only noise that it removes is whatever was in this room tone, right? So if we, uh, if we took like, let's say, take this chunk of silence here and we just boost the audio a ton, right? You can hear it. You can, you can kind of hear like a fan in the background. You can hear hiss from like this box that I'm using. It's not good. So I'll undo that. Um, but now let's go ahead and take that noise print and then we select everything and we do this noise reduction and it goes pretty quick. Now, if we did that exact same boost that I did before, which was this, now you can't even hear it. And I just boosted it by 45 decibels, right? So that's, that's great. And so that's why I do that noise print at the end is we get this really nice clean audio. And what that does for us is now because I can boost audio by four to five like 30 decibels and still not hear any background noise we can have it let me remove any noise that i might have had from like this audio setup right that's really quiet now i can boost this to whatever level i actually want it to be at a little bit of space here at the end right like let's say i want it like here and will let me remove any noise that i might have had from like this audio setup and and now it's still very clean audio um even though i recorded quiet and now if i had like a really high dynamic range you know, while I, like I was shouting or I was whispering at points, I can use a multiband compressor to get everything to sort of be the same level of audibility. Um, and we're not losing any quality. So it's really nice. And um, so, yeah, that's why I record so quietly. Plus, this microphone just kind of um, unless you have like a cloud lifter, it doesn't record very loud anyway. So and it sort of works out. And I'm not using my cloud lifter here. I'm just using um, a box that has a bit of hiss. And so I've definitely got to remove background noise with it. So yeah, that's a, that's a little audio 101. <clears throat> Poor narrative voice. If you use dialogue to replace justification for the character's reactions. Oh, the, to replace justification. I've been reading too much. Poor narrative choice, in your opinion, if you use dialogue to replace justification for character's actions. Yeah. Uh, people don't tend to monologue out loud. They really don't. How many books in it? Uh, I think that was book, I think that was nine. Let me check. Uh, bu 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 bu. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, we're nine books in. Well, we'll do we'll do this camera. I'm st I keep forgetting which hotkey I have bound to what scene. Uh, but yeah, we're nine books in. We have done nine books so far tonight. I still have to go through and edit them, but we've got nine books recorded, and that's you know that's the hard part. Um. You, uh, I noticed you use a clicker to mark edit spots. Is that because you edit an audition? 
Personally, in the one chapter me and Honks did, you did you placed electronic markers at flubs and audacity and cut there. Um, so I use uh, I use the clicker because this is my workflow. So I could do like um, electronic markers, and that would honestly that might be better. Honestly, I do it for the uh, uh, as you can see, you have like these very visible spots where I've screwed up, and I can go and just know, oh, this is where I flubbed the line, right? Uh, this is where I, you can see where I flubbed the line. The reason I do it this way is because I have like a recording booth that I use and um, switch cameras again. And in the recording booth, I use a different computer than I edit on and I only have one copy of Audition. And so I record in Audacity on my laptop in my recording booth and then I edit on my desktop in Audition. And the markers that you can place in um, Audacity, they won't transfer. I have not found any way to transfer them over to Audition, unfortunately. And so I have to do some sort of physical thing that you can see in the waveform. What I used to do is if I messed up, I would just pause for like five seconds. So there would be like a big old gap of silence, right? Like you would see, uh, if I messed up, you would see like a big old space like this. But the problem with that is um, sometimes I would miss them if I paused a little bit too short or stuff like that. And it made the file way longer than it needed to be. And it made it more of a pain to retake lines because let's say I just sort of kind of stumbled over a word. You know, I, I went to say, they went down the street, and I said, they went down the street, right? It's kind of bad, but, like, I don't want to pause for five seconds, reset, and go back to say they walked down the street when they walked down the street still fall, still works. And so I had a lot of little flubs like that that I just couldn't be bothered to go back and fix. And so I switched to the clicker because now if I say they walked down the, the street, right, I can just, they walked down the street and immediately redo it. It's way more convenient. Um, reflect on your air for a minute after every flow, um, after every flow. Um, it is, it is, I, I do, um, sometimes stop and just reflect on it. I don't reflect nearly as much as I used to because of the clicker, because I can just start and restart. So it is probably something that I need to do better is stop and reflect on the air a bit more. Um, after every flub. Yeah. Uh, I don't always need to stop and reflect because sometimes the flub was just like, I misread a word. Right. Uh, but yeah, it is it is a good idea to stop and sort of reflect. Um, that is one thing. It was a really good opportunity to like stop, reflect, even read ahead a little bit so I could do a little bit better when I was doing like the five second pause between flubs. But the clicker has made it a lot more efficient and I have a lot less flubbed lines because it the barrier to just going back and fixing a line is way lower. Sit in the punishment corner for misspeaking. Yeah. No, that, that is how it felt, though. That, that was really the problem. Like, while it's good to sort of sit and be like, okay, why am I messing up? Take a second, repace every now and again. It would be like, they walk down the street. I said that stupid. Idiot, 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 idiot. idiot. Okay, they walk down the street. It's way better to just be like, they walk down the street. They walk down the street. That's better. <laughs> uh, what book was the last one? It was called uh, Death's Pale Flag. By Gary Simmons. Simmons. Sim Simmons. Simmons. It's a weird way to spell it. Um, two computers make sense. The electronic markers also make you edit back to front because it doesn't shorten the marker track by the same amount as audio as you deleted, at least by default. Um, that, that might be an issue in Audition, but it actually, it's fine in, or I mean, in Audacity. But on Audition, if I were to place a marker... Um, you can actually edit front to back still. Um, so like, let's say I wanted to have a marker. We'll just put some here. Uh, uh, we'll put one. So there's a marker. There's a marker. There's a marker. Let's say I edit it out like where this marker is, right? Everything shifts with it. So Audition actually keeps track of that fine. Um, I'll make this bigger so you can see. So see, I have like these three markers. You can see that this one's on this spike here where I messed up. Look at that, it moved with it. So Audition, it's actually not an issue. Um, I'm not sure about Audacity. A nurse is drilling into a skull and they're going to jail for medical malpractice. That's the end of the book, is they all go to jail for medical malpractice. There was no actual spooky haunting. They were all just high. They were all on LSD right before child brain surgery. That's what was going on. Can you place markers live while recording on Audition? It might give you a reason to record in it. That is a great question. 
I don't, the reason I am recording an audition today is because I legit am not super sure how to record an audition. Why I'm using Audacity is because I always record an Audacity. I'm not sure how to record an audition. So let's figure it out right now. I'm sure there's a way. Uh, new. Audio file. Yeah, test, test in. With three, a bunch of Gs. Yeah, okay. Um, here's the record button. Uh, it doesn't know what audio device to use. Uh, input. Scarlet. Mm-hmm. Okay, now we're recording. And l okay, we're recording. Let's say I messed up. Look at that. You can totally leave one live. So, yeah, if you record an audition, marker, marker, you can do them live. And then if we pause this even, I can go through and let's say this is the line I didn't want. Gone. And it moves everything with it. So, yeah, there you go. Simple as that. Scarlet Fire. Yeah, I really like Audition. Adobe has some good programs. Uh, I'm trying to switch away from as many Adobe programs as I can, but gosh dang it, I can't get away from Photoshop, and I really like Audition. But um, I switched to Resolve. I'm finally on DaVinci Resolve instead of Premiere. I actually really like Resolve. Um, I'd say it's an upgrade from uh, Premiere in pretty much every way, except for you can't export a PNG sequence, which is weird. You can only export like a TIFF sequence. Don't like that. All right. Um, so we could do more books or you could watch me edit the books. Watching me edit the books is not as entertaining as watching me record them because this is what that looks like. Okay. This is uh, we, we open up the program and I'm got, I have to be quiet because I have to listen to the lines. And I go, okay, here's where I messed up. So what line did I mess up? I messed up there, so I'm using the clip. I don't know how he... Oh, I have this, I have this uh, preset that makes it so it can be louder before I do any mixing, so I can actually hear myself. I don't know how he expects to hide his white... I don't know how he exp... I didn't know how he... So what I'm doing here is I'm going to where I see a mistake, and I'm listening to it. So I messed up there, so I'm using That's the me talking to you guys, so I can ignore that. I don't know how he expects to... I don't know how he expects. That's the line. But sometimes I mess up a line a bunch of times, right? So let's go to the next one. I don't know how he expects to... That's the same line. So we've got to delete to this line. So we've got to find, you know, where... Uh, I don't know how he... Ex I got to find that line. So I don't know how he expects. I didn't know how he expects. And that that's... That's the line, but I messed it up. I so I just go to there and I delete it. And I there we go. I don't know how he expects to hide his... Right? And so that this is how that would look. I want to do a different attitude. It's not funny, Caleb. There's a bird in here. It's not funny, Caleb. It's not funny, Caleb. All I can do is wait for him. He's going to be rem All I can do is wait for him to exhaust. All I can do is wait. For so that's the process. And I can't talk during it because I have to be listening to the words and everything like that and staring at the waveform. So I could do this, uh, this part on stream. It's just boring to watch and I can't talk during it. Um, You would watch one book edit? Okay, we could do one book edit. We'll do one book edit. Okay, we'll, we'll edit this first book here. So uh, let's make sure. So I did the noise reduction already. Whoops. Uh-huh. So this is my process. We'll go from the very beginning. We'll open this fresh. And, and we're going to do Welcome to Midgard because that one was fun. We had fun with Midgard. Okay, so this is Welcome to Midgard. Um, it's kind of a longer one, but I'll go through it quick. I've, again, I've released 63 hours of audiobooks so far. Um, so I, I've, I've done this a lot. I'm pretty experienced in it. So first thing I like to do is I go to the end here where I have my room tone. And I just select my room tone, right? So Shift-P, that gives me my nose print, noise print. And then I select everything, and I use the noise reduction. So Control-Shift-P. There we go. That's gone now. Um, I'm going to move this really quick just so I can see chat um, on the edge of my screen there. Okay. You're down to watch that? All right. Well, well, we'll do at least one of these here. And if there's another book that one of you are dying to watch me do, I can, uh, I can still do a book. I'm having a good time. I'm not burnt out yet. 
The mirrors always try to get you to edit videos while in voice chat, but you cannot hear the audio and you'll start talking to the video. Yeah, it's it, it's terrible. You can't edit. I have tried to like edit video or audio or anything like that. Like I can sometimes you can get away with like listening to a podcast or something while editing video sometimes, but it's rough. Really like video editing, audio editing, the most you can kind of do is listen to music quietly. <laughs> All right. So again, first thing I do, I get my noise print, I do the noise reduction, I get that out of the way first. Uh, audio, or uh, ACX standards, you leave about five seconds of uh, room tone at the end of this. So this is the last line. That took a while. Yep. Uh, that's actually not the last line. I think this is... He's telling the truth. All right, that's the last line. So we go to the end of this line. I'm gonna scroll here and make this a little bit bigger so I can see stuff. Uh, we go to the end of this line. At the bottom left here, we can see uh, 11, 39, 8, so we're going to go to 44, 8. That's about five seconds. That's what you're supposed to leave at the end of a, like a chapter for ACX. And then we highlight the rest of this, and we're going to delete it. Gone. All right. So I like to first get rid of the, first I do noise reduction, then I trim the end to what it should be. And then normally what I would do is I would go to the beginning and when I record it, um, you do the chapter. So you do like chapter, chapter name. So like chapter one, editing the audiobook, right? And I'll do that like two or three times just because I like to choose between which take of how I want the chapter to sound. So I'll do that pick as well. And then ACX standards, you leave a half a second to a second of room tone uh, before you start talking for the audiobook. So this is the first line here. So uh, it looks like I made noise right there. So hopefully this is at least 0.5 seconds. So we'll just delete that. And then it's not 0.5 seconds. So we're going to do this magic trick where we copy some room noise from somewhere quiet. And we're going to use... This isn't normally an issue, but again, my flow was thrown off doing this for a stream. So there we go. We got some sound. We got to have at least... We got to have 0.5 to 1 seconds of room tone before the chapter starts and for this being an audition it doesn't actually matter but it's a good idea to show that you know what you're doing <laughs> um for like the standards and stuff if you're going to be editing the audiobook so editing to standard when doing an audition is a good idea um you did animation on greg va while in a call talking to greg that must have been terrible why would you do that i suppose with a uh, with like animation i guess you'd be sort of scrubbing through it though so i don't know maybe it'd be a little bit different but that must have been confusion <laughs> There's normally a shortcut to select the end too. Oh, I, I don't know it. I If there's a shortcut, I don't know it, but you're probably right. Um, over here in the effects rack. So I like to do all of my audio balancing and leveling and all that after I've trimmed everything away. Um, so what I do is I have this in this effects rack, you can actually apply different effects non-destructively. It would be like drawing on a, like a layer, like a separate layer in Photoshop basically. So I, I have all of my effects that I'll be applying later in here that are non-destructively being applied while I work. So I can actually hear the audio close to what it will be at the final, but not actually adjust it until I'm done and I go do that manually. Oh, the gate, he called out. Yeah. I forgot that you're losing consciousness at a semi-normal time now and was wondering why your eyelids were lacking vigor. You got to stay up, Dwarven, at least from Midgard. You chose Midgard. All right. So I did the beginning and the end. Then what I normally do is I save it as a separate file because I like to save my raw audio and then I save my edited audio and then I save my um, edited and processed audio. I have those all as separate files in case I need to go back at some point to change things. Uh, so at this point, what I would do is I would go save as and then the naming scheme I normally use is just edited at the end of it um, and then save that wherever um, we're going to we're going to change. We'll do a, we'll make a folder here called auditions edited. Save. There we go. All right. And now what we do is uh, if you right or middle click, you can pan through it or you can use this little navigation thing at the top. We're going to go through and find all the clicks where we need to remove mistakes. Well, I was hoping to trade. Well, I was hope. Well, I was hoping to trade. Well, just a few. Well, just a few minutes. I killed it, and also a wolf pelt. Well, just a few minutes ago, a ridiculously large turtle. Well, 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 just.
just a few minutes ago. Your armor. I recognize that. Your armor. Your armor. I recognize that style. Yeah, I like his voice. <laughs> Your armor. I recognize that style. Again, this is sort of the quiet part, but uh, again, all I'm doing is I'm finding the click. I'm listening to what comes after. Falcor mentally winced at here. Falcor mentally winced. Then I go back. And uh, once you get used to it, you can actually kind of tell, like you look for a similar waveform. So I'm looking for a waveform that looks like that. This is probably where I said Falcor. Falcor mentally winced at Look at that. Falcor mentally winced. Falcor mentally winced. And then I delete it. And then I like to hit play again just to make sure I actually deleted to the correct line. Falcor mentally winced at hearing. There we go. And then we keep going. There's another click. Uh, about a mile upstream. When I have a bunch close together like this, I'll listen to them all like in sequence because I probably uh, messed up the same line over and over. About a mile upstream. The guard still looks. I stumbled across it. Maybe you know the place. About a mile upstream. There's a large rocky. About a mile upstream. There's a large rocky mound just uphill from the stream. The guard still looks skeptical. The dark. The dark. The dark. Bam. The guard still looks skeptical. Man is an audio machine. Oh, I go quick. Uh, I'm going slow right now. I Again, I have done this so many times. I have done this for 52 chapters of Prey and the Lamb, which are like hour and a half episodes or uh, uh, chapters. So I, I have I have deleted so many things. What's fun here? I'll do this. Um, if we shrink that, grow that. You can see all the deletes I do here. This list, I end up scrolling when I do this for like full hour and a half audiobook takes. Gonna get a clicker? Yeah, get a good clicker. This one's great. This one's super loud. I love this one. The louder the clicker, the better because it makes these really obvious clicks. Don't get a really cheap one because they're kind of mushy and then your clicks aren't so obvious. Uh, but the louder the clicker, the better because this is just so much nicer than having like five seconds of silence. Well, about halfway up when I went in, well, about on the upstream, well, about halfway, well, about halfway up on the stream, so, so, well, about sometimes I'll mute what's in between stuff. I have messier audio than normal again because I'm streaming and I'm at like a different setup than normal, which has more room noise and all that. Normally I'm in a booth. So, um, yeah, it's just how it is. Get a gun and fire it every time you mess up. I will go deaf. I can't voice act if I can't hear my voice. When I went in, when I went in, when I went in, the Harborage Avenue. When I went in, the Harborage. All right. All right. All right. All the right. The growled. His... Do not move from that spot. There's an elder in. The... Wait right here. All right. Wait right here. All right. Wait right there. There's an elder in the. Vi I did kind of roll my R there. All right. Oh well, it's fine. Falcor shrugged. Falcor shrugged. Falcor shrugged. Falcor shrugged. I. Falcor shrugged. Falcor shrugged. I had floated on the stream after. Falcor shrugged. Falcor shrugged. Falcor shrugged. I had. had... Falcor How many times did I do this? I had a hard time with that. Falcor shrugged. Holy crap! I had. I had. Fl... Falcor shrugged. Okay, we're just gonna put a marker Falcor there. Falcor shrugged. Hoping to keep any friends. Oh, now I find the take now that i had a marker delete marker falcor shrugged hoping to keep any when i got out of the hoping to keep any friends of theirs from, from hoping to keep any friends of when i got out of this when i got out of the stream when i got out of when i got out of the stream leroy the guard laughed leroy the guard laughed leroy the guard laughed ah! leroy a moment later he a moment later he realized he'd a moment later, he realized what Falkor chuckled. Falkor shocked. Falkor chuckled. I know what you meant. If I... He held up both... I know what you meant. If I hadn't... I know what you meant. Death is rarely immune. Death is rarely immune. Death is... Find where I became the noom. Death is... Death is... All of those are wrong. We'll just delete it for the sake of space. Death is... Boop, 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 boop. Oh, death. Death is red. Nope. Then the top of the wall. Nope. Not a man. Nope. I remember oh, this. Oh, this is Toggle Bottom. Okay. Death is red. There we go. That's the line. That's the line we're looking for. Death is rarely amusing. Death is rarely amusing, stranger. A voice rang out from. There we go. 
The speaker was about the same height. Too bad the se selection isn't magnetic to silence. Yeah, I've tried it with like the magnetic selection on and off. I end up defaulting back to the magnetic selection, even, to, even though sometimes it drives me crazy. The speaker was about the same with snow. Thockworth thought to him. The speaker was about the same height as the goblin. The speaker was about the same height. He was dressed in, in plain gray. He was dressed in. He was dressed in plain gray cotton pants and shirt and walked with a staff in one hand. He was dressed in plain gray. Leroy bowed. Leroy. Leroy bowed. Leroy bowed at his. Leroy bowed at his. Leroy bowed his head briefly and received a quest to come in. The elder. Is that so? And received a. Found an arborage under the dragon mound and received a quest to come here. I don't like it when I redo a line like mid breath like that because it can be harder to cut it together well. Um, but this one should be fine. Found an arborage under the dragon mound and received a quest to come here. Yeah, that sounds fine. The elder looked at. The elder looked like Falcor. Racing. The elder looked at Falcor. Is that. S well. Is that so? Is that so? All right, look at that. Uh, one more mistake. I missed a Falcor mistake. Falcor sighed and repeated. In chronicle, Falcor sighed and repeated what. Falcor sighed and repeated what he told Leroy. In chronological right. order. This so time. then, uh, generally, the what I'll do is, um, if this is like a longer audiobook, I'll just like scroll out kind of far and I'll go back to anywhere with like large peaks like this, and I'll make sure I didn't like miss a click, make a miss a clicker or mistake in there somewhere. But this one's good. So this one's done. So I'll hit save on that. And then again, I like to process it and then save that as its own file. So this is what I do when I'm doing my audiobook leveling. It's I've got it down to a science for uh, praying a lamb. Uh, so what we're going to do is first thing is I have this plugin that I bought, Isotope. I use the repair assistant. What this does is it lets us do some de-clicking because I have kind of a wet mouth and also a little bit of de-essing because I have a little bit of a gap in my teeth there. And so I have a lot of S is hard S's. Um, this doesn't really get rid of them, but it helps reduce how severe that is on your ears. Um, Audacity has a free declicker plugin that you can get that some guy on a forum wrote like eight years ago. Um, and it actually works better than the declicker in this program that I paid like $50 for. But this program is way faster than the audition one. So I just use this now because it saves me a lot of post-processing time. Atlas Shrug? No, Falcor Shrug, yeah. Um, sucks when you... Um, when past you redid a line halfway through and changed the tone, and you have to re-record a splice in the entire line to make it sound right. Yeah, yeah, that drives me crazy. That was fast? Thank you! It wasn't fast the first time I did this, but uh, I've done this a lot now, so that's the process. So uh, I run the repair assistant. It's pretty quick. It takes a little bit longer when I'm processing like an hour and a half long chapter, right? But um, again, this is... Uh, um, Almost six minutes is all, so it's pretty quick. All right, and then what I do is I apply a hard limiter. Okay, so I hard limit everything down to negative 12 decibels. Um, you'll see everything now is either at this negative 12 line or uh, below. Um, then again, what I do is I level, uh, normalize. Um, and then with audiobooks, you often normalize to minus three. Most stuff on the internet is normalized more to like zero, I feel like. Like that makes it more like easier to hear but when i was taking a course on like formatting stuff for odd um uh audible they told me to do negative three so it's what i do for audiobooks uh, zero is easier to hear just in general though so i'm anyway so i normalize to minus three and then i run a multi-band compressor this is this preset here is just the same as broadcast but gain is set to negative seven so i apply that and then finally, after I've done that, that sort of lowered the audio a little bit running that compressor. So finally, one more time, I run a hard limiter again, not a hard limiter, a um, normalize one more time to negative three again. And now we have our final audio. And so if I get rid of the temporary effects that I had going, we can listen to this. Was and still is, the guard nodded once, not relaxing in the slightest. What's your business here? Yep, so that's good. Hard to and focus with a wolf snapping at your knobblies. Ha! Leroy the guard laughed, visibly relaxed. So see, like here, I was like, ha! If we looked at this beforehand, this part right here was like super high, and this part right here was really low. But now everything's been sort of squished to the same part, so it's really easy to listen to for long periods of time. You do that for audiobooks, because 
you want to be able to have that acting dynamic range of being able to talk really quietly like this and then get really loud like this. But when you're listening to it as an audiobook, you want it to be a nice, pleasant, smooth experience. So we do that multiband compressor and that hard limiter and everything so that everything sort of plays at a similar enough level that it's not jarring on your ears at all. This isn't the kind of thing, like the kind of compression that you'd want to do for like music or even like necessarily the audio in a YouTube video at all, all the time. Sometimes in YouTube videos, I mean, for like a video essay, that kind of thing would be good. But if you want to be able to catch high emotions, really high highs, really low lows, telling secrets, and then getting angry, right? You might want to have that dynamic range still. But as far as audiobooks go, this is sort of industry standard. You want to do it. It makes it really easy to listen to. So right here where I was like quieter, and then he had a loud laugh. To focus with a wolf snapping at your knoblies. Ha! Leroy the right? God laughed. It all sort of plays at a similar level that's comfortable on your ears and you can listen to for hours on end. And so then I like to save this processed thing um, separately from my not processed thing because this is destructive. I can't undo this process I've done once this has been like saved out as a file. If I wanted to like undo the compression and everything like that, one, it would be really hard and two, it would never sound as good. So I like to have a separate file for the raw audio versus the processed audio. So we'll go ahead and save as. And I, I, I often just call it uh, processed when I'm saving these uh, for my own files. With, uh, when submitting stuff to ACX for uh, auditions, you'll generally title it uh, book name underscore your name, like audition. So I'm gonna do that later since I don't wanna just write out my full name on a stream. So I'm just gonna save this off as processed for now. And uh, I'll just add another folder in here called processed. There we go. Negative three seems to be industry standard. You always aim for zero. You think it's a holdover from when analog equipment would peak if you got too close to zero because it couldn't react fast enough. Oh, well, that would make sense. Yeah, it, it most stuff like YouTube, um, like their leveling, their default leveling, YouTube actually levels your, or uh, changes the levels of your audio a little bit when you upload it uh, to try to make everything kind of consistent. It doesn't like change it dramatically, but it will try to tend it towards the same area. And it, it aims for more like zero. And so if you're releasing this anywhere, if this is some, your own project, I recommend leveling to zero. Uh, but if you intend to release this on like ACX or anything like that, the standard there is negative three. So just do your leveling to negative three. Again, that's another reason why it's nice to have your raw file. Because let's say I'm just doing this for fun. I'm doing this with me and my friends. But then like I finish an entire book that I was having fun with and I decide to release it, right? Now you can go back and you can re-level that audio to whatever standards of the marketplace that you're putting it on. Negative three and zero is almost indiscernible, you average listener. Most people only pick up about five dBA. Um, it actually makes more of a difference when you have it leveled out like this. It's actually, it feels more considerable than it normally would be when all of your level is pretty close to the same. All right. You know, several YouTubers that upload at negative 10 to 15. God, that's so quiet. YouTube will try to level that a bit, but they'll only do it so much. Like YouTube doesn't want to affect your audio too badly. So you upload it there and they'll change it a bit but not a ton. And so you want to have it leveled as close to what it should be at the, from the start. 3DB is tub, is double the volume, is it? Well, let's listen to the difference here. Let's just do this. We'll listen to this little clip. I don't recommend it. Hard to focus with a wolf snapping at your knoblies. All right, and now we'll level normalize this to zero. Well, <laughs> Mostly naked, yes. I don't recommend it. Hard to focus with a wolf snapping at your knoblies. Versus? I don't recommend it. Hard to focus with a wolf snapping at your knoblies. One more time, just... I don't recommend it. Hard to focus with a wolf snapping at your knoblies. To my ear, that's considerably louder. And over the course of listening to like an audiobook for hours on end, it really helps not have a lot of air strain if this is at a listenable level. Um... So anyway, um, I'm going to undo that because, again, we want to be normalized to negative 3 for this. Um, yep. Not 0. What is... Oh, is that why Caleb City videos are so quiet? Yeah, whatever they upload at, it, it, it'll adjust a little bit, but not a ton. So you can end up with really quiet YouTube videos. Um, so yeah, that's probably... He's probably just got his stuff leveled really low. Industry standard, negative 3. I, I would recommend doing zero for personal projects. 
cool. So that's how we ended the chapter, guys. And uh, as far as submitting this, again, I don't want to like to submit it. I have to like put out some of my personal details, and I don't I don't want to do that on stream. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna submit all these afterwards. But all you do is you upload the file from your computer, you write a little message saying like, oh my gosh, this is the best book I've ever seen, exclamation marks with ones and mixed in there, yep. Please let me narrate for you, okay? <laughs> right? Not that. But you do write something like, hey, I'd love to narrate your book. I hope you choose me as your voice. Um, this is an exciting project. You know, you, you say something nice about them, about their book, so that they are more likely to consider you. <laughs> you know, that, that's just social. That's just how things are. You upload your file and you submit your audition. And then you wait. And you hope that they get back to you. And if they don't, eventually you'll get an email from Amazon that says... Um, you didn't get the part because it's no longer open for auditions and they didn't choose you. And you go, dang it. <laughs> and if you do get the part, then it says, hey, you're getting con you've got an offer from this seller. And the, the or not the seller, but the author. And then the author might ask you for like, hey, um, I really liked your audition. Would you redo it with like this change to this voice? Or can I hear you do this part of the book? And you might do like an additional audition or something like that if the author reaches out to you and liked your voice. So that's sort of how that looks. Audio is an interesting one because the actual volume of the listener hears is intensely uh, an intensity which varies considerably based on their settings. That's true. Um, I actually had to boost the audio on the uh, Perry and Lamb audiobook that I'm doing because I would upload it and I was normalizing to negative three, which is quiet for YouTube. And uh, I had a couple of people say, hey, this is really quiet. Can you boost it? I'm having a hard time. Like, I have it on max volume. And, to which I thought to myself, just turn up the volume on your computer? I, I don't know. But whatever. So I, I ended up boosting it. And now I, um, in Premiere, when you're exporting, you can actually, um, you can dial in your settings to have it level the audio to YouTube standards for you. So that's what I do with Pray and Alam is I, uh, I, I level it to negative three. I do everything that I showed you here in Audition, just exactly like this. And then with Premiere, when I export it, I actually have it leveled to YouTube standards. Don't quit my day job. Yeah, don't quit your day job um, as soon as you've hit submit. Like maybe wait until you've done a couple of books and you're getting like royalties coming in from books that are actually selling. Because starting out here, the kind of jobs you're going to get are going to be... Um, Uh, I, I opened this in the wrong tab. There are going to be these bottom of the bin, last page have been on here forever, you know, type of audiobooks. You know, they're going to be the uh, Red and Taris. This was, I, I, I don't know who all in chat was here for this one. This is a tough read. This is really bad. This, is, this really takes the cake for worst book we looked at today. So j just listen to this about, okay? By the way, the... Uh, the author is Ronald Bunch, so he's talking about himself here. For over 30 years of reading, Ronald has learned he's a talented writer. So this guy pats himself, opens up by patting himself on the back saying, I've been reading for 30 years and I'm a great author because of that. Like, I realized that I'm a good author because I've been reading books. That, okay. He studied sci-fi and he decided that he wanted one day to dream about writing a novel. Here it is. It's been nearly 11 years coming, and this is the final product. So first of all, he said, like, for 30 years of reading, he realized he's a great author. But also, it's only been 11 years coming that he's written his first book. Uh, you can find an action and adventure with a little romance and love. You should definitely, like, you should, comma, definitely, comma, think about purchasing this epic novel. One day, it'll be a classic story read in the throngs of many. Your, time, your reading time is precious. Half of this novel takes place in a dome on Mars called Red Antares, a city. That's it. That's all of it. What? what? That's terrible. Oh, my gosh. It's a horrible first impression. It is. This, like, again, we've read a lot of crap today. That really takes the cake. There's a reason that it's sitting here on the last page of the available books for audition. It has zero sales and was published, uh, what is that, like seven months ago? 
uh, no, like nine months ago. It looks like it was published. I wonder if you can actually buy it on Amazon right now. You can. So you can buy this. And as far as like, so normally it would sell like the sales rank. And if it had sold like one or two copies, this sales rank would be like two or three million, right? It's nothing. That means no one has ever bought this book. And obviously no ratings because nobody's ever bought the book. <sighs> and the way they want to pay you is a royalty share, which means that the only time you get money is after you've done all of the work, they release the audiobook, and then if somebody buys the audiobook, you get a percentage of the sale. So this guy that has never sold a copy of this thing in nine months with a description like that wants to pay you with a royalty share. And so it's not really a surprise why this has been sitting in ACX for months and months. Because, again, even, like, I wouldn't be against doing an audition for this. But I wouldn't want to spend my own time. One hour, well, like, one hour of finished audio is going to take me, like, at least four hours of work. Right? Like, roughly. It's going to take me around four hours of work. So 7.7 7 hours. That's, like, eight days of full-time work to make this book that will never, ever make me a dime. And so I feel, I feel a little bad bashing it because, obviously, this is, like, the passion project of the guy that wrote it. But it would be a massive waste of my time to narrate this book that's not good. We went, we went through and we read the audition script. It is incomprehensible. I can't tell if it's jumping back and forth between describing itself for me, the auditioner, or if it's just written that poorly. It is really bad. Uh, he decided to want to think about dreaming of writing a novel. Sounds like me with doing my dishes. Yeah. Please don't let those sit for 11. I mean 30. I mean 11 years. Ronald Bunch sounds like a made-up name. It kind of does. Ronald Bunch. Imagine thinking that reading qualifies you for writing. Honestly, I, I am the best writer because I narrate audiobooks. <laughs> no, I don't know. I feel, I don't know. I, I'm going to stop bashing it, but um, I don't, because I feel a little bad just bashing on somebody's passion project, but um, he's not going to get, he's not going to get somebody to narrate that audiobook because it would be a massive waste of their time. So I don't know. You never turn your computer over like 20 to 30. Mine's always really low too. Or at least it was. Now I use voice meter. Uh, but before I used voice meter, my volume was always like six on, you know, six of 100 on Windows. Um, again, so um, I could go through, I can edit all this audio. It, I, I don't think that's the most entertaining to watch. If any of you hop on ACX here, I could drop the link again. If there's any other books you want me to narrate, I'll do it. I, again, I'm not burnt out. I'm having a good time. Um, but right now, we've we've done nine books tonight, which is awesome. We've made awesome progress. Uh, some of them have been good. Some of them have been not so good. <laughs> it's been fun, though. They've all been fun. Drop a link. All right, I'll drop a link. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't really want to do all the uh, editing here on stream because it's way easy. I get very distracted very quickly. Uh, I, I, speaking of distracted, I've already forgotten to grab the link again. Anyway, I get distracted very easily. And when you're going through and like removing mistakes from an audio that you're planning on submitting as an audition, it wouldn't be good if I would like missed a mistake and it's not entertaining to watch anyway. So I'll, I'm happy to keep narrating, but I don't want to do the editing on stream because I'll do a worse job and it's not fun to watch anyway. All right. Uh, this is the link. I'm dropping it in the chats again. Again, you won't be able to read like the, uh, on here, unless you have an account, you won't be able to read like the actual audition text that I use, but that's fine. Just hop on here and judge the book by its cover and just have me do ones that you think are fun. Again, the stipulations. It's got to be English. It's got to be male slash or gender neutral. I don't have a feminine voice, so I can't do the female ones. And it can't be erotica. And uh, that kind of means none. So in here, if you go to genre, exclude erotica sexuality. But also, like, all of the romance ones are basically just erotica too. So don't do any of those, please. Because I can't do those on Twitch. So if you suggest it and I pull it up, I won't be able to do it. So I'm sorry. Um, yeah, these are, these are the filters I'm using right now. Uh, I didn't want to do children's audiobooks very bad. I don't know. I, I don't know. I feel, I don't, I don't, I don't like 
narrating children's audiobooks very much. I might do this later. And the rest of these I just have unchecked because I thought that would be kind of awkward topics for stream. So I didn't want to do those on stream. Uh, but a a any topics open if you think it'll actually be a good book. But just anything you think will be fun. Am I sorting by best selling? No, I am sorting by most recent. I could do best selling. That would be better for actually making money. I just did most recent because my goal today wasn't to make money on any of these books. It was just to have fun and narrate maybe bad, maybe okay-ish audiobooks. Can't do telepornication. What a tragedy. I, I don't want to get removed from YouTube and Twitch, guys. I want to be able to do this again in the future. <laughs> Um, but yeah, if you sort by best selling, that's actually, you'll probably find better books for one. And two, these are like way better profitability. Like I'll actually make more money. Like if this is a royalty share here. Yeah, royalty share. So I only make money if he makes money, right? And if he's actually already making money, like this is selling really well. 6,013, that's really high for like stuff you see on here. So that's great. This is actually one that'd be worth doing as a royalty share. Um where it's 25.8 hours, that's a ton of work to not be sure if you're going to make money, but that'd probably be a pretty good gig. What, Dwarven? Nobody would narrate the book for him. Is that a challenge? Dwarven, if you make an account on here, it's not like they're charging you. This is free. Just hop on here, make an ACX account. If you have an Amazon account, you can just use that to sign into ACX. You can go narrate that man's book for him. I'm sure he would be ecstatic. Do Endless Storm. Oh, that's the one I'm looking at. Oh, right. We looked at this one. And I, I looked at this. And this is just like a BuzzFeed article. Like, this this title is garbage. Endless Storm. Huge post-apocalyptic post disaster saga with 1,000 plus pages of an American family surviving a world-changing storm. That's why I didn't do this one earlier. I was just like, that is a horrible title. But you know what? This is number one if you sort by best-selling. So we might as well do it. Okay. Uh, let's see what their notes are. Um, excuse me. Oh, right. The other reason I didn't do this one is because the audition is two full chapters. Wait. What? Oh. Oh, I know what I did. I was confused. I was like, what is that? The other reason I didn't do this one is because it's 12... It's it's two full chapters apparently. <laughs> they want the, the, the and then they want you to do ten to five to ten minutes max of narration. They said, "Man, how long are the?" But that's good. That's a good question. We'll uh, we'll pull this up. Let's check this out. This one. I guess that's not terrible. Basically, they, they gave you this much. Um, what they're saying here, I didn't read it all out loud. But basically, they're saying, read these two chapters so you get a feel for the book. Then do your audition on whatever, five, ten minutes, including male and female characters. I don't, I, I don't, I, that would be boring to watch me sit there and go. For however long it takes me to read two chapters of a book. Um, yeah, I know that two chapters. I mean, it's a lot for an audition, like 12 pages, but that is two chapters. That is a very short chapter. Lamb's Prey would never write the short of a chapter. <laughs> Chapter 2. Zoe stood at the bathroom sink and let the cold tap run. The lukewarm tap. If you wanted to stickle. If you wanted to stickle? That's st if you wanted to stickle. Cold was a dream in here. Which was funny, right? That a snow shelter was boiling. Snow swelter, more like. And a snow day meant school. She scooped up warm water and splashed it on her face. It smelled strongly of chlorine and faintly of rust. Out in the hall, the intercom rattled on. The same canned announcement she had had memorized for months. She mouthed along out of habit, watching herself in the mirror. Second period begins promptly at 10.15. Please swipe your S-card at the classroom's card reader. For lost or stolen S-cards, see the front desk. 
Keep right in the halls and proceed to the, your classroom in a swift and orderly fashion. And don't forget, you know what? I heard. Anyway, I don't want to read through 12 pages. I think that would be boring because I wouldn't do it all out loud because we'd just be stuck on this for 12 pages. But um, I can re I'll, I'll, I'll read through this and I'll audition for this one on my own time. Because this is the bestseller. This is a good one to audition to it for. So PBN, I'll audition for it on my own time. But uh, for stream here, I think that'd be very boring to watch me sit there and read that many pages. And this is the same author. Hmm. The Reluctant Godfather. Wait, this was on page seven. This one's been sitting here forever. So either this guy has been very, very picky with auditions or... I don't know. Why Why has this been sitting here forever if it's a good seller? That's weird. Stickle, to contend stubbornly and especially on insufficient grounds. That's weird. Like, I've never heard it used to stickle. I've only heard it, like, if you want to be a stickler about it. Not if you wanted to stickle. That's weird, right? Like, I've never heard it used that way. Huh, I don't know. Strange. Very strange. Burn D is a young and cantankerous fairy godfather who would rather bake cakes and help humans. Oh, then hum help humans. A disgrace to the fairy order, Burn D has only two wards entrusted to his care, a cinder girl and a charming prince. A royal bar presents Burn D with the brilliant solution of how to make his wards happy with the least amount of effort. He'll arrange a meeting and hope the two fall in love. The steampunk... Oh, steampunk... This steampunk, this steampunk rom-com is perfect for fans of Disney, Studio Ghibli, and Cake. Is it Ghibli or Ghibli? It's Ghibli, right? March 7th submission? March 7th submission. What? I, I, I don't know what you mean, PBN. March 7th submission. What is... What? 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 I'm not sure what you mean, because it's April... Clarify, PBN. I don't understand. Unless that's one of the books on here. The previous book was submitted to ACX. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I see. okay. You're saying that uh You're saying that this one's been sitting here since March 7th. I see. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's been sitting here for a while. Like again, if we sort these by uh date uploaded, which is the default um most recent, it is at the very back uh or maybe it's page 6. Wait, is it not? I could have swore it was. Where is it? Did I not? Oh, I didn't change. Okay, now I feel stupid. Yeah, see this? It's on the very last page. Normally, they only sit here this long if it's like a really bad book or if it's like a royalty share with zero sales or something like that. So it's weird that one that's selling really well has been sitting here since March 7th, you know, uh, almost a month. Can't remember, but you think it's Ghibli. Okay. I can say Studio Ghibli. Yeah. That's really strange. Huh. A mystery to be sure. I'm actually getting a little tired. I'm sort of hitting a brick wall all at once here. Um, I might st I might call it. Unless somebody's dying for one in particular. Um, and don't and don't say endless storm because that's going to be homework. I'll do that one on my own time, but uh, I don't want to I don't want to sit here on stream and read 12 pages and <laughs> be boring the whole time. The fascinating world of snakes for kids ages five and up. I feel like if I was going to learn about snakes, I'd want the book with the pictures of snakes. You know, I don't want the book that is just a guy talking to your into your ear about snakes. I'd want the one that shows me the snakes. Oh. Ghibli. Studio Ghibli. Okay. I, I don't know these things. I don't think I've ever seen a Studio Ghibli movie, so. 
If you guys have a recommendation on one I should watch, I, I, I mean, I, I, I should watch one at this point. I've just never watched a Studio Ghibli movie. The Witch's Boodle. The Kelly Crony. How's Moving Castle? All right. I will take your suggestion, PBN, because you were the first one. I will watch Howl's Moving Castle. Let me write that down. Howl's Moving Castle. All right. That will be my first Studio Ghibli movie. Spirit Away is objectively the best one. That's the one with uh, the, the dude with the mask, right? You know what I'm talking about. Ah, this mustache. I gotta, I gotta trim my beard. When it's this length, it just sits there and tickles my nose and drives me insane. I, it needs to either be a little bit longer than this or a little bit shorter than this. It just, but right here, ah, it gets me. Ah. All right. Well, I think, I think this is as good of a spot to stop as any. I, I'm, I'm very happy. We got nine auditions recorded today. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, nine auditions. That's great. So I will, I'll go through and edit those tonight, get them all submitted. Uh, I really enjoyed this. Um, and we've actually had a, a higher viewership than normal. So I'm assuming you guys have been enjoying this as well. So we're going to do this. I might do this like weekly or bi-weekly. I'll just get on and we'll, we'll apply for like, you know, somewhere between like six and ten different audiobooks. So um, next time we do this stream, I'll let you know. Uh, we'll report back on which ones we got offers on, which ones we didn't. Um, I think that'll be fun. Uh, again, either next week or the week after. I'm not sure if I want to do this every week or like bi-weekly. We'll see. Um, but yeah. Let me, I, I, taking a look at chat, making sure I'm not missing any last minute comments here. Um, this, this worked well. I, uh, the audio actually turned out better than I thought it would in this room. I'm very happy that I got all these sound panels up. Those have, those have been more helpful than you might think, especially since they aren't like really nice sound panels. Uh, they're just the cheapest ones on Amazon. But it makes a big difference having something rather than just big, empty, open walls. Um, but I'm rambling. I don't know. I'm very rambly. But this was fun. I'm definitely going to do this again. We will see when I do it again. I think I'm behind on the stream here. I want to make sure that I'm not, like, way lagged behind or anything. Oh, well. Anyway, we're going to call it... Um, Next week, I'm planning, I'm probably, so, not, my last stream, I was planning for, uh, oh, hey, Jay Brat, have a good night. My last stream, I was planning for a bunch of 24-hour streams, and then after that stream, I decided I didn't love that idea anymore, so I'm probably not going to do that so much, but um, the one stream that I'm still going to end up probably being very long, I'm going to do next week, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to try to draw um, 50 pictures in as quickly as possible. And I'm going to use those as a training set for stable diffusion for an art style. I want to train my own art style to use with stable diffusion. So I can use that for like the uh, AI roto rotoscoped animation stuff. Um, because I just think it would be nice to do it with my own uh, style. So that's probably going to be next week. Um, probably Saturday. I'm in a competition on Friday unless that gets rescheduled. So yeah. Anyway, Next week, I'm going to be drawing a whole, whole, whole lot. There's going to be tons of drawing. And the week after that, we'll probably do more audiobook auditions because I really liked this. And, I mean, this has been very productive for me getting nine audiobook auditions out. So have a great night, everybody. And I will catch you all for the next stream.